Hi, welcome back guys. This is your sensei, back with another fanfiction. This is the first part of, What if God fighting Naruto got Harim? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. Never been one for blessings or gods. What's that me? Maidenless really. Ah oh, that's cute. Shed no grace on me. That is a big tree. Kirama's remark was certainly on point. Naruto mused a mighty oak grate and gilded like so much spun gold. It loomed large across the horizon easily the biggest thing he'd ever laid eye on and had seen more than a few giant monstrosities in his day. Yes, right, big golden tree. Very nice, very impressive, very bright. That much had never been in question. The next bit not so. Blue eyes swept left. Blue eyes swept right. He didn't see a single soul in sight. What he did see were rolling green hills dotted with piecemeal ruins, a sprawling landscape as open as it was vast. This was in every way a foreign land to him, a pace he'd never been before. Seeing was, as they say, believing, and he didn't believe for a single solitary second that he was anywhere near home. His pulse quickened in his veins as his thoughts began to race the drums of a great hunt out for blood. Where, in the blue hell, had they woken up this time? Why do we keep waking up in strange places like this? His breath hitched in his throat, heralding a surge of panic lest he hyperventilate. He bit down on it and stomped it into bloody oblivion. Stop don't panic. Arms check he glanced over at his right limb, thankful to find it still in one piece. The bandages were still holding at least, even if the fingers were a little stiff. Legs he glanced down and heaved a sigh. All right, not hurt or crippled in any way. Great, which brought him back to the matter at hand. Here where how? Did I eat some tainted ramen or something? Stop panicking. A low sigh pervaded the back of his mind. You're giving me a headache. Easy for him to say everything had been fine as last memory was of his head hitting the pillow. He'd been safe and warm in his bed, sleeping off that mission. He barely even remembered the details. Something about a scroll and a ring or something. You mean the ring on your finger? Blue eyes snapped to his left hand. On his fourth finger, all the color drained out of his face. It was a simple thing, a little golden band writ with symbols runes he didn't much understand. He tried to tug it free, only for it to cling tight to his finger much to his chagrin. The damn thing actually seemed to constrict around his flesh, biting down painfully. What the hell why won't it come off? Congratulations. He could hear the smile in his partner's voice. Looks like you got hitched when you weren't looking. To who he bleated back. Another tug, another failure. Oi guys raising his voice, he called out to the wilds. You got me, alright it can come out now get this thing off me. Silence reigned supreme. This ain't funny. Damn, look around. Kirama prodded him when he began to flounder. Maybe there's something we can use to get our bearings. There, in the distance. Movement. A giant knight clad in golden armor, astride an equally large horse. Who was at a man a woman distance and armor made it impossible to discern their identity. Huh, something was better than nothing. For lack of any other option, he started down the hill towards them. No need to use the cloak here. The rider cantered back and forth almost lazily, utterly unaware of his presence. Still he came closer. Only a stone's throw away now. Hey, he shouted, waving a hand. Any chance you know where I- Uh, hug. His words pitched into a yelp as the rider pivoted with frightful grace and brought a golden halberd crashing down. Into an equally golden palm. Blue eyes blazed red as the ground cratered underfoot. That, he hissed, wasn't very nice. Then he yanked. C-L-O-N-K. Clenched knuckles barreled upright in a rousing uppercut, ripping the halberd from the golden knight's grasp and striking them dead on the chin in the same instant. Their mount reared. Rider met ground. Even as it began to rise Naruto leaped onto its chest. A sandal-clad foot stomped down, eliciting a low groan from his wood killer as it drove them back into the dirt. Wrestling their shield down, he shoved a kunai up under the warrior's chin, point tickling the pale expanse of an exposed throat. Let's just calm down and reset our tempers, eh he hummed softly. I'm not your enemy. Don't make me use this. The knight went still beneath him. At length it made a tiny, awkward noise. Now, I'm going to let you go. Promise not to attack me. Another faint sound, almost like a sigh. All right. He stepped back, muscles tense, read to flee. The man was at man or not rose ponderously, sitting with legs folded beneath them. Their mount loosed an anxious whinny and pawed at the ground with a hoof, but made no move to attack. Seemed it had a brain after all, like its master. Good girl. He reached a hand up, offering it to the warhorse. I'm not gonna hurt you. A low snort told him just what the steed thought of that. Still, it nosed his hand. Its emotions were easy enough to read a simple lowering of his hands and loosening of his stance was all it took to calm the beast. Great. Now, he turned his attention back to the fallen knight. He'd he point me toward the nearest village or better yet, tell me where the hell I am I'd settle for that. The knight didn't speak. It only waved its hands, pantomiming something he didn't understand. Naruto blinked. Blinked again now, as the knight continued to perform what in Blaze was this, a puppet show or something couldn't make heads or tails of it. Can you talk? He couldn't see the face behind that helm, but he could feel the disdain within their gaze. The knight shook their head, slowly. Ouch. Naruto winced despite himself. My bad. 
You can only grunt, huh? H-R-R-N-G-H. As he looked on the knight made another gesture. Slowly, more deliberately now, it pointed toward the giant tree, then to him, now toward a castle in the distance. That, at least, he understood. Maybe he'd find someone actually capable of speech that way. Still, don't you dare. We have enough on our plate we don't need to tag along. Oh, a whim, he offered them a hand and helped them to their feet. Wanna be friends? Rather than offer anything in the way of an answer, the warrior turned away and began to retrieve its fallen weapons. Oi, here at last, the great sentinel paused, hefting their halberd and shield. Naruto tensed anew, ready to flee at the first sign of trouble. He didn't relish the idea of killing anyone, but he wasn't about to stand there and be killed himself. He stood his ground as it stalked back toward him. Only then did he realize how damnably tall it was. It stood tall, looming head and shoulders over him, brimming with unknowable intent. Well, he looked up. You're a big one, ain't ya? Tense as he was, he couldn't help but jump as that heavy halberd slammed into the soil, buried deep. The shield joined it a moment later, crashing down with such force that he felt his teeth rattle. And he wasn't even the intended target. Hey, what are you doing? Bereft of its weapons, the knight paid him no heed whatsoever instead removed its gauntlets, exposing pale hands. As he looked on a guest, the golden knight knelt before him and bowed its head low. Kneeling was this knight actually kneeling to him why slowly, almost ponderously, he reached up to its helm and began to undo the straps there. With only a minor grunt, the sentinel removed their helm. An ebony curtain cascaded down their back, spilling down broad shoulders. With reverent grace, they set their helm aside, raised their gaze, and looked him in the eye. Naruto's jaw clicked open. Oh, he managed less than eloquently. So that's what you look like. Bright green eyes blinked back at him, set within a stern visage and framed by those midnight tresses. Her face bore a jagged scar, hooking down from here forehead to well under her right ear, or what remained of it. An old wound by all accounts and healed, albeit poorly. Pink with age, younger than he expected. His tongue betrayed him in spectacular fashion. So you're a girl, oh, why didn't you say so? Her eyes narrowed, thin lips pursed into an angry line. She opened her mouth to retort, but rather than speak, jabbed a finger just shy of it. Jirama hissed in his head. Naruto winced himself when he beheld the mangled butt of flesh there. He'd been right on the money, and yet now, he sorely wished he'd been wrong. She didn't have a tongue. Someone had ripped it out. Huh. It had been a while since he felt anger. Who did that to you? She just stared. Fine. He'd fight that battle later. You got a name. A shake of the head. When she made an irritated noise, she stabbed her finger into the dirt and scrawled a rough message. I no longer have one. I was the tree sentinel. No more no less. Another pause. She wrote another line beneath it. I have failed in my duty and disgraced the earth tree. Slay me. When she made to write again, he caught her wrist. She stabbed a finger at the message. Nope. His brow furrowed. Hmm. Tree sentinel. That wouldn't do. Everyone deserved a name. Even a mute, wounded wretch like this. His temper stirred again, and he shoved it down. Who would wound someone like this, tear out their tongue, and leave them alive it, it just wasn't right. He couldn't imagine living a life without speech. It horrified him. The wound was old and healed, but maybe he could do something about it. Thoughts for later, he supposed. Lady, I gotta call you something. He flailed for a second, thinking. Tree Sentinel. Hmm. Gave up, and mashed the words together as only he could. I've got it I'll call you Trish, then. He snapped his fingers and stabbed one at her. How's that sound meshed the words together, a little? Amazing, right. The tree sentinel made a baffled noise and shook her head. Nope, he smacked his lips, I deny your denial that's your name now. She made a waffling movement with her right hand, telling him just what she thought of her new title. A faint smile creased his lips. Hey, I did the best I could, alright I'd like to see you come up with one, you cheeky brat. She glanced toward the message she'd left. Almost longingly. Sorry. He hummed. I'm not gonna kill you. Not gonna let you kill yourself, either. Why don't you come with me? She reared back eyes wide. A hand touched her chest. Her lips parted, mouthing a single word. Me. You see any other giant knight here? He batted her shoulder. Come on, it'll be fun. Well said. A new voice and tone behind them, cutting him short. I did not expect you to best the sentinel in such a manner. Perhaps you are the one I seek. Where did she come from? I didn't sense her. Naruto pivoted, just in time to watch a young woman appear out of the ether. The sentinel stood behind him, watching the newcomer intently. Greetings, her manner was smooth as silk, traveler from beyond the fog. Manifesting from a swirl of blue light and clad in black of cloak, this fresh stranger hid her face from Themer did, until she reached up and tugged down her hood. By contrast to the stoic warrior he'd only just befriended, here stood a young woman with chestnut hair, fair and fleet of foot. Her left eye was bound shut by a strange black mark, the like of which he didn't understand. As he looked on she knelt before him, almost gingerly, as if she were afraid of spooking him. A slow, ponderous silence pushed between them. At length, she broke it. I am Melina. Her lone eyes met his. I offer you an accord. Hey, and hello Melina. But where, oh where, did that ring come from? To be fair, our tarnished is still around what class would you like to see him? Hers because I've got some ideas. Naruto running around befriending, recruiting enemy NPCs and bosses. Seems like something he'd do. And there we have it. Tree Sentinel's identity is a bit of an original concept on my part seeing as we never see who or what's under that armor, only that they're very tall. Could be anyone, really. Leave it to Naruto to name her Trish. It's like an amalgamation of Tree Sentinel itself. 
Don't worry, I won't be making a habit out of naming NPCs that ventures into OC territory, and I know folks don't enjoy that. Well, did you like this story? Yes, no, maybe speak out, make yourselves heard, your voice matters. Once more, we're sticking with the Ember's rule for this story. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs during the holidays so I barely have time to write as such. I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up your voice matters, make yourself heard as ever. Reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review, would you kindly, and have some previews. Granted, some are far off, but still. Previews. Tarnished, are we? Nope, a Naruto. And maidenless do you not see the giant woman on the horse. That seemed to take the man aback by the time he managed to rally they were already past him. Let's see if we can't rekindle his warrior spirit. You can't heal him. He's rotted, inside and out. It won't work. Wouldn't know until he tried. Time to put on an act to end all acts, something he hadn't done since he was a boy. R-A-D-A-H and he spread his arms wide, voice echoing across the dunes. I came here to face a champion I am still waiting still grinning. He turned around, bent over, and slapped his flank. Come and get me. A moment of awful silence followed. And then, the world shook with an answering roar. Someone whistled behind him. Big brass balls on this one. Fall off your horse. What do you hope to gain from all this? Nothing, really. He stared into the campfire, heat smoldering in his eyes. I like helping people. As she looked on he drove a stick into it, sparking the dying embers to new heights. This place seems like it needs a lot of help. So that's what I'm gonna do. Fool of a boy. You cannot save everyone. He laughed at her. Actually dared to laugh. See, that sounds like a challenge and I've never backed down from one of those. Now, rut. No. Why don't you stop using that ridiculous form, come down here, and let's talk this out like a dolce. I am the witch, Rena. A pleasure to meet thee. That's not your real name, is it? She didn't answer. Aw, oh, come on, I wasn't trying to make you angry or cold. Right, there's plenty of space here at the fire. What does thou hope to gain? You're a tall guy. Blade chuckled. And you fight like a warrior. Well met. Would you take this message to my father? Nephili clapped his shoulder. Well fought. His gorge rose and he gagged. How many lives did you graft to yourself? I command thee, Neil, I am the lord of all that is golden. Boy, that's my SH dick. This world was absolutely broken. Naruto realized this fundamental truth just before the first night passed in what an ugly truth it was. He'd known this wasn't his world. He could accept that much now, albeit begrudgingly. Everyone and everything he'd encountered here with very few exceptions tried to kill him on sight. Well, good for them, but he wasn't about to go down without a fight. Again, that didn't bother him. What bothered him was death, or the apparent lack thereof in this world. Tonight, they'd taken refuge in the crumbling remains of a church with a rather curious merchant, well outside of Stormvale Castle. The man had been more than happy to offer a great many wares at discount and a hint about howling wolves in a place called Mistuat in exchange for tonight's protection. His leader, first watch fell to them, leaving him to tend a lonesome fire while his companions slumbered near a half-demolished wall. His gaze flicked their way, make certain no harm had come to them while he wasn't looking, then swiveled back to the darkness. A mute girl and a woman who could vanish into thin air made for strange bedfellows, he felt. Quite the merry little fellowship were forming. Hirama remarked. I'll say. He nudged the fire with a stick. Why do you think of him? The big one's easy to read, but the other. MMM. She's more than she seems. You all right. Just a little shaken. He had every right to be, given what he'd witnessed today. They'd stumbled into soldiers on the way here. Not the chatty sort, those. They hadn't been willing to back down, and an attempt to skirt them led to an attack in turn. Trish had beaten them to a pulp. No contest. He'd managed to drive the rest away, but the deed was done. A small shiver shook his shoulders. He'd recovered from that much, even forgiven her for attacking blindly. He couldn't find fault with that. Not so what came after. Said men had been alive and well after they rested at one of these grace sites. Alive and well. They even seemed to recognize them if only because they weren't quite so eager to engage a second time. For reasons he didn't understand, enemies seemed unable to die here and if they did, it didn't stick for long. Did that apply to everyone, or only certain persons did he even want to test it? Broken indeed. A fitting term, given all this talk of shattering and broken rings and whatnot. Melina had proven rather talkative in that manner. This realm, the lands between she called it, was in every way, screwed. Which begged the question, how to fix it did he even want to should he did he have that right? Of course you do. You're not the sort to let folks suffer. Yeah, I know, but I don't even know where. His senses tingled, warning him. Might I have a word? He pivoted in place. A woman in white robes awaited him, perched upon a rocky outcrop. Four hands folded in her lap. Blue hands. He tilted his head, trying to get a look beneath the wide-brimmed hat she wore, and succeeded at the last. A lone eye regarded him from a cherubic face, pale as can be. A pleasure to meet thee tarnished. Her voice was low, husky even. I am the witch, Rena. He knew a lie when he sensed one. That's not your real name, is it? She didn't answer. Aw, oh, come on, he winced a little, sensing her anger. I wasn't trying to make you angry or cold, right? There's plenty of space here at the fire. She didn't budge. A blonde brow rose. Really? Her brow furrowed. I do not require warmth. Be that way, would she fine? 
Then he'd come to her. I've heard tell of a warrior hurtling about these lands, making all manner of madness. Her lone eye drilled into him as he picked himself up and wandered her way. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. He crept up the back of his neck. He scratched at it. That'd be me? Yeah. As I thought. A thin smile was his reward. Then I must ask what do you hope to gain from all this? Nothing, really. He turned and stared back into the campfire, heat smoldering in his eyes. I like helping people. As she looked on he threw a stick into it, sparking the dying embers to new heights. This place seems like it needs a lot of help. His spirit warmed to the words, even as he said them. So that's what I'm gonna do. He didn't really know where to start, but he'd be damned if he didn't try. Fool of a boy. Her lips pursed into a thin line. You cannot save everyone. He laughed at her. Actually dared to laugh, as he hadn't in a long time. See, that sounds like a challenge and I've never backed down from one of those. I ask again, Rani pressed, what does thou hope to gain? Naruto smiled. He had his answer at last. Happiness. Zero, zero, zero. He'd spoken with the witch last night. Melina knew it was no business of hers. Indeed, anyone else would have been well asleep. She'd only noticed by chance and in noticing, her anxiety raced to new heights. It galled her. She was no true maiden, not really, but she had her purpose. Just as Rani likewise had hers. He need not concert with that one. And yet he had. They'd sat and talked for some time. Her tarnished was a curious sort it seemed. Such rankled, but she couldn't fault him for it. Perhaps he wasn't her tarnished at all he didn't act like one in the least. He had no destination in mind indeed, he wandered hither and yon without a care in the world. She'd already tried to nudge him in the direction of Stormvale Castle and the great room within, but he seemed immune to her machinations. He'd laughed when she offered to turn his runes to strength because you see, he didn't have any runes. Naruto had not slain a single soul. Not since he'd come to this land. Not a one. Even now she watched him lay out a soldier with a powerful punch to the head. He stooped to a knee, made certain the poor soul still lived, and kept walking. Baffling others parted for him, falling to fists and techniques she'd not seen the like of. None could touch him. None came close. And still, he remained in his base state. This man was a warrior, a fighter. He knew his way around the battlefield and fought with frightful speed. His techniques rent armor apart and his fists shattered weapons like so much kindling. Where he walked, enemies fell in trove. He could have torn his way through them in a tornado of blood, reaped their runes and left them to rot. Yet he didn't. Why? Why wouldn't he kill? He wasn't afraid to fight, but the injuries he inflicted were of a minor sort. Not so the tree sentinel, or Trish, as he called her. She'd seen her fight that one was a whirlwind of woe to any who came near her or her mount the wise fled at the sight of hearth foolhardy had their heads stoven by halberd and shield. But not her tarnished. She deferred to him wordlessly, as was her wont. He must be a soft sort. The realization alarmed her, and not in a good way. Her tarnished wanted to help others, to heal rather than hurt. Wait, her tarnished she'd only known him for a few days. When had she come think of him as such? Moreover, who did he think he was, sparing his foes? Well, that settled it, then. Her tarnished was bloody mad. Melina felt he must be insane if only because it explained his recent spate of actions. He did not seek out Godric the Grafted as his kin had before him, no, nay, never. He seemed intent on ranging about the wilds in search of every nook and cranny. Every chest, every bit of material, anything he could get his hands on. When his tall companion balked at such he simply pointed out that they'd need such things to survive. Melina felt he was just hoarding things. Would he be strong enough to face Godric in all his grisly glory? She could but hope twisted though he may be, he was a demigod. He'd been the end of many a tarnished before. Boy, do you have to do that Naruto turned suddenly, looking right at her, right through her hidden spectral form. If you're gonna travel with us, you could at least help shoulder some of our burdens. Carry some stuff, you know. Melina bridled. It was a bluff. He couldn't be aware of her presence in a, surely not. None could find her, or harm her, in her spectral form. Ignore him. Maybe if she remained silent, perfectly still, he'd let her be. I may not be able to see you when you're like that, but I can sense you pretty easily. Naruto planted a fist on his hip, tone almost chiding toward her, as an elder brother might speak unto a younger sibling. Now come down here, stop hiding, and quit wasting everyone's time. Damn him. She appeared with a huff. You need not be rude about it. Ain't trying to be. He drawled. But if you want to help us, you can at least do your part. Rather than relent, Melina steered the subject to safer waters. You would do well not to trust that witch. Nah, that dazzling smile flashed out again, stark as sunbeams. I think I'll be alright. She doesn't seem to like the dangerous sort, you know. How very little he knew. That one was dangerous. She knew full well, after all. Her name is. Rani, I know. His head bobbed. She told me. Melina balked. How did you? Well, she introduced herself as Rena at first, his lips quirked in a small smile as the walked, but she told me after I badgered her a bit. Ran away soon after that, though. Rani running away how unlike her. No, that wasn't her concern. Not anymore. Melina grit her teeth until she felt her jaw ache no, she couldn't break their pact. Alay, alas, the deed was done, the deal made, their accord sealed in both word and bond. It could not be undone so easily. He didn't seem to care. Fine. If he didn't care, then she cared not what he thought, not a jot. Which is aside, I suggest you take heed in other matters. And if her words were a tad clipped, she pretended not to notice. Lest you run afoul and find yourself grafted by Godric. 
You've said that word before. Grafting. His gaze snapped to hers. Tell me more about this grafting thing. A cold certainty settled in Melina's gut. Surely he knew he must. He couldn't be so ignorant. Do you truly not know? He squinted at her, rather reminding her of a fox. Know what? Perhaps it was remiss of her to manipulate him in such a manner his expression said he knew full well what she was doing but his love for life could be a boon here. If he knew the atrocities that thing committed every day, then he might yet hasten to stop him. Or die, a nasty little voice whispered in the back of her head. Nonsense. He wouldn't fall so easily. Surely, you truly are a stranger to these lands, aren't you? She tried to keep the scorn from her words, to no avail. He kills dozens of tarnished by the day and adds them to Hishost. His body, the silence that followed threatened to choke the very life from her lungs. Blue eyes glazed over, cold with anger. Does he? No. Melina let him go and vanished back into the ether. Not an hour later, they came upon the shack. Zero, zero, zero. Everyone's been grafted. Three little words, yet they set Naruto's blood to boiling. Everyone who came with me. The hooded woman at his feet continued to babble, heedless of his mounting rage. They crossed the sea for me. They fought, for me. She hugged herself, as though afraid her limbs would come flying off at any moment, only to have their arms take Nan their legs and their heads. She swallowed once, shivering a little. All of it, taken and stuck to the spider. He hadn't thought to find anyone here, let alone a tale of woe like this. Spider, he croaked out, remembering Melina's warning. Didn't you know she looked up at him, eyes damp. If you're stuck to the spider, you become a chrysalid. Quite the lark, when you think about it. A weak laugh tumbled out of her. You're headed to Stormvale Castle, aren't you hope you weren't enticed by that fellow with the strange mask? His brow furrowed. He hadn't met a man in a mask. You've come to be one with the spider, I presume he could feel the front she was putting up, even through her fear. That makes us two peas in a pod. But I don't have your courage. It's scary, you know. Her voice warbled a little now, tiny pitiful thing that she was. Having your arms cut off, or your legs or your head. She lowered her head in shame. I want to be like everyone else, but I'm just too scared. I'm nothing but a craven, you see. He knelt before her and didn't budge. If it's not too much trouble could you pass on a message for me? If you see the little chrysalids up in the castle, Ernest's eyes turned up to meet his once more. Tell them, tell them, I love them. And that despite my craven heart, I'm sure I'll be joining them soon enough. I'm finally getting the hang of this pain thing, you know. Pure arm absolutely hissed in his head. Maruto felt a strange sensation bloom in his chest. It felt that. Hate. Was this hate how long had it been since he experienced it not since pain, not this raw, primal level of anger? That settled it. He'd be having a word with this Godric fellow. Several words, loud words, involving fists, and quite possibly a racing ganner three. I suggest a racing shuriken. Can you perhaps take this little one along with you? She offered him a box of ashes, tugging him back to reality. The poor thing deserves someone braver than me, I think. There it was again, that shy tremulous smile, as if she half expected him to break her in half. And the spirits look rather fondly upon you. It'll be glad of your company, I think, the little one. Naruto made up his mind. His hands flew out and seized hers. So you can use summoning jutsu, then that's amazing. Zero, zero, zero. So you can use summoning jutsu, then that's amazing. Of all the words Rodrika had hoped to hear, these were not that. Jutsu what on earth was a jutsu and his hands were so very terribly warm her eyes flitted down to her fingers, clasped between his palms. Treacherous fingers betrayed her and squeezed a little tighter. You really think so the words babbled out of her in a rush. Then came her shame. I'm afraid you're mistaken, sir. I'm not amazing, no, not at all. None of that is cry slew her doubts before they could take root. It's tough at first, starting out as a summoner. Believe me, I know. His head bobbed before she could muster the nerve to speak. But you mustn't give up those strong arms thrashed hers up and down as he shook her hands. It gets easier after a while, trust me. She jolted beneath the force of his words. Who was he? He had stumbled upon her by purest chance, and now he seemed hellbent on lifting her spirits. Hell. Spirits. A poor joke. Even so, the man before her burned so bright in her sixth sense of sun in all its gleaming glory. Even the earth tree itself seemed dim by comparison. No, no, such thoughts were blasphemy. Speaking of which, he had a bloody tree sentinel right there behind him. Couldn't they read minds she'd heard the stories? And really, what was he doing with a sentinel? Anyway, that brute had nearly felled more than a few of her friends before before Godric's men came. Would the giant knight lop off her head? You should come with us. Rodrika's neck nearly suffered whiplash. Me the word emerged as a tiny squeak. I couldn't possibly I'd only slow you down, and it's not safe out there. A blonde brow quirked. Ain't much safer here. He was right about that much a strong breeze could knock these walls down. Look, he raised a thumb to his mouth, just shy of his lips. Let's compromise. If I beat this Godric guy. The tree sentinel made a disbelieving noise behind their helm. Then would you come with us Naruto finished. Could he this particular tarnish did not lack for confidence, if nothing else. But did he possess the ability could a mere mortal ever hope to best a demigod she'd never laid eye on Godric the grafted. Not herself, but she'd heard tell of him all the same. Legends had it he was terribly strong, even in his waning age. Powerful enough to still be Lord of Stormvale, even after all this time. The roads would certainly be safer. Rodrika shook her head a moment later, refusing to dwell on such. But you can't he's much too powerful, even for someone like you. Great his smile told her she'd fallen right into his trap. Till then, I'll leave you with a guard. 
Just in case, before she could think to stop him, he bit down on his thumb. Blood sprayed forth. Rodorka jerked back, hands flailing to protect her face. What are you doing? Miss, he grinned, took three long strides backward for safety, and slapped his hand against the ground. Summoning Jutsu, smoke sprayed forth as runic script burst forth from his palm. A dark shape emerged from within, looming large over the shack, larger now, largest still. Rodorka looked up, squinting against the haze. What was that an enemy dragon perhaps it was so terribly large? A sudden gust of wind swept the smoke away. The tree sentinel made a terrified noise. Rodorka stood in agreement. Not a dragon. Nay, not at all. She felt her jaw click open all the same. That is a very large frog. Toad, actually. Naruto corrected. They're touchy about that. Why bloody blasted thing was bigger than a house. Yo, Naruto the beast bade the blonde greeting, because, apparently it could speak oh gods, she felt faint. Long time no see. Hey, Gamakichi her fellow blonde waved up at the monstrosity. I need a favor would you mind? Rodorka barely heard the enthusiastic exchange that followed between the unlikely do. She retreated inward, withdrawing to a tiny inlet of calm within her mind. Even then her world swam anew and she felt faint. Not only did he have a spirit inside him, but he could summon them how paltry that made her seem. He hadn't even summoned something from the ashes this was a living, breathing creature and oh how had she gotten into this mess. Aye. The summoner blinked, drawn back to reality by the tugging of her sleeve. Just stay put with my buddy, here the blonde man offered her his hand. I promise he'll protect you. I'll be right back. Bold, this one did he even realize what he was saying. Her fingers curled around his, ever so gently. Might I have your name, sir? Zero, zero, zero. Nephili knelt before the dead man and paid her respects. Be proud. She touched a hand to the chest of the sundered knight shivering at her feet. You were a fine warrior. Your only mistake was your choice of master. Her hand eased the dented visor shut, obscuring the bloody ruin of the man's face from sight alongside his last gappers. Rest, now. Let the winds lift you to a higher place. The warrior expired beneath her with a rasping gurgle. It almost sounded like a sigh. She straightened with one of her own. Such a pity. Though their lord was rotten and their bodies twisted within, these were fine fighters. It shamed her to slay such. But it was her duty. They could not be suffered to live, not as they mindless monsters they'd become in the wake of the shattering. Now for Godric. She would face him and slay him, or die in the offing. The door slammed open. Nephili jerked back, reaching for an axe, prepared for an attack. She had time enough to take in bright blue eyes, whiskered cheeks dimpled in a scowl, and sunny blonde hair. Then he was upon her, all but flinging himself into the room. You the word burst out of the intruder in a shout that shook her bones. He both looked and sounded fed up beyond measure. Don't you dare. Nephili found herself standing at attention despite it. Me, you then attack us like everyone else. She shook her head slowly. Nay, not on her best day. Not when he was covered in that much blood, none of it his own. And he waded through the castle to get here and who was that giant of a woman after him she couldn't even fit through the doorway. Such was her height she had to physically crouch down just to look in after him. Closer inspection revealed golden armor, a familiar halberd ando. Oh shit, Nephili's blood ran cold. Tree Sentinel. What was a spirit stand sentinel doing her? Tarnished, are you? She took the initiative for what it was and made curt introductions. I am Nephili Lu, tarnished, and warrior, here by decree of my father. She cast a glance to the knight at her feet. How utterly repellent this is. This grafting of Godric's ill befits a lord. He's tainted the very winds. He was just staring at her. Did he even hear what she was saying? If you intend to challenge Godric, I ask that you call upon me to fight by your side. She could only assume he was, with a look like that about him. The winds run cold with his deeds. And so did she at the thought of facing him alone. I'm certain father would permit me to aid you in the coming battle. Did I hear right? Just now the man stormed forward, claiming her attention once more. You after Godric. Her brain fizzled under his direct gaze. Yes. Blue eyes sparked with wild fury. That sounds grand. Eh. Hey, and edit there's a reason we didn't see Marget, Morgoth in this chapter. Next one will reveal why. Better run Godricuo, too late. Fight next chapter. Well did you like this story? Yes, no, maybe speak out, make yourselves heard, your voice matters. Once more, we're sticking with the Ember's rule for this story. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs during the holidays so I barely have time to write as such. I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up your voice matters, make yourself heard as ever. Reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review, would you kindly, and have some previews. Granted, some are far off, but still. Previews. Naruto cracked his knuckles. Showtime. No one understood. Fools and fops, the lot of them, unable to understand his greatness. Mighty dragon, thou it a trueborn heir. He touched a six-fingered hand to its mangled throat. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Deliver me unto greater heights. The door stirred behind him. Well, now, a lowly tarnished. He gripped the haft of his axe, blood warming to battle. Playing as a lord, are we? He paused. Not just one tarnished. Another. And behind them, the man gagged. How many lives did you graft to yourself? As many as needed and many more to come I command thee, Neil I am the lord of all that is golden. Ground. Wait. Ground. 
Why ground? No. Dazed, blinking, his thoughts came back to him. Distantly, he registered an awful ache in his jaw, his face level with the dirt in a way no self-respecting lord desired. Struck. Had someone dared to strike him, Goddard the golden the gall of it all. His rage blazed, hotter than a dragon's flame. And still that filthy tarnish stalked his way. Get up. The words were a growl, righteous fury made manifest. Take your lumps like a man. Goddard tried to rise, only for another impossibly fast blow to catch his face. Blood fountained forth from his split lip. Two in the lord of. You are the lord of nothing. Hey, young woman in robes waved a hand, flailed it really, from over the next rise. Then louder, no. Hey. Naruto looked left. Naruto looked right. Who, me? He touched it, that little speck of light, and the world shifted. Whoa. He kicked back out of habit and realized too late where he'd landed. Gone were the rolling green hills and giant golden tree in its place he found not but dead wastes, and... That is a big dragon. He looked up. The dragon looked down, rooted where it lay. Its great scaly snout somehow managing to convey surprise despite its girth. It was trapped, just laying there in the rot. Absolutely massive too, large enough to give Kirama a run for his money. And then it roared. Arg my ears. He had an awful moment to see the flames building in the back of its throat flames that guttered out with a dull whine as a rather put out Kirama reared up around him and stomped a golden paw upon its head. The moment of sheer realization made his brush with death all the more with it. Bad lizard calm down I ain't here to fight ya. A lord's kinda like a hawkage when you think about it. He stands up for his people, speaks for them, you know. He gives them a shoulder to lean on when they're tired, and another to cry on when they weep. He bears their burdens with them, laughs with them, shares in both their joy and their sorrow, their pain all of it. He doesn't hurt them. He does not take advantage of them. He certainly doesn't take and take and take until they have nothing left to give. If your precious lord would do such things, then your lord is evil that's right you heard me you are no lord, Godric. Bear witness. So we're all in agreement Godric needs to pay. With his life. That is my only demand. On that much we agree. Great Naruto clapped his hands and leaned back against the ruined corridor wall, regarding the trio before with a merry smile. I'm so glad we're finally on the same page as peace said, he turned and fixed Nephili with a glare. But not death. I'll wait a sec a hand came up when she scowled and made to speak. Let me finish. When I say no death, I meant not yet. The barbarian warrior opened her mouth. Closed it. Considered. Are you going to torture him? No, nay, and never. Not this style. Nope. He shook his head, denying her. Death is quick. Final. A release, even. His fingers snapped, cutting her short. Just like that. Your life snuffed out and you're gone. I've seen death. You'd kill Gordic, and he'll be away, off to the afterlife, or whatever passes for that in this world. No justice for all those he's wronged. Is that what you want? Her piercing gaze met his, and Naruto lifted his chin to meet it. Adorable. If she meant to intimidate him, she had a long way to go. Cute. We've grappled grappled with a goddess already. She'll need a bit more divinity to make us cower. You intend to take his great rune, then something dawned in her eyes. To leave him powerless. Meh. He waffled a hand before her. I intend to ask him what the hell he's doing and then kick his sorry hide if I don't like the answer, but sure, that works. No idea what a rune is, though. At length, she backed down. As you say, warrior. Warrior. Not Shinobi. Nor a tarnished. Neither. Heat flared in his face. He wasn't sure why. Stop calling me that. He grumbled, looking away. He's not getting away from his massacres that easily. Trish made a disbelieving noise and folded both arms before her armored bosom. Naruto rounded on her, feeling somewhat bemused. She donned her helmet and knew the silly girl doubtless to try and hide her face from him once more. Clever but next to useless where he was involved. Even now he could sense her emotions roiling like a frothing cauldron. Well you don't think I can do it. The mute tree sentinel granted him a grave nod. Once, such a lack of confidence would have stung rankled him in the worst of ways. Now he simply smiled. Everyone always underestimated him. Some of his greatest foes had thought him little more than a harmless breeze until this breeze kicked up an almighty hurricane and thrashed them within an inch of their lives. She'd been no different, and there would likely be many more in this wild warped world who though the same. Fine. Let them. He'd been doubted before, ages ago, considered the underdog, the worthless, the wretched. If everyone in the lands between would doubt him every step of the way, well. Seeing the looks on their faces when he pulled this off it would be all the sweeter. I ain't gonna die. Cursing his lack of height why did she have to be so damn tall he stepped to her and patted her hip. Don't worry. I've got this. Trish pivoted away. This time, the sound she made sounded nothing short of petulant. A polite cough echoed behind him. Ahem. Now he came to the third and final member of his merry little band. So he planted both hands in his pockets and squared up. Got something to say. Melina reared back a little, alarmed and not liking the look on his face. Tarnished, are you angry? Nope, maybe his reply was a bit too quick because her good eye narrowed upon him. I'm not. Whatever gave you that idea? She was watching him like a hawk. Not her fault, he supposed. If his face looked anything like what he felt right no well. It might be more than a little terrifying. There was no need to be afraid, really. He was hardly looking to lash out and hurt someone. No, just Godric. He'd never met the man, never lay eye on him, but something told him he wouldn't like what he found here today. Really, anyone holding the surname of Grafted wasn't going to be a good person. 
No matter what he said, what he did, it wouldn't bring back the hundreds of lives lost here. Nor could he. For all his strength and skill and speed, Naruto knew he couldn't raise the dead. And that made him angry. In all fairness, Naruto wasn't trying to be scary, truly. He just couldn't recall the last time he'd been this furious. This was a different sort of anger than he was used to righteous and pure, burning white hot in his chest like the sun itself. He held it close to his heart, that molten core, and kept it warm. He'd seen the horrors of Stormvale Castle, the carnage hanging from the ceiling, the ghastly grafting of the spider a beast he'd had no choice but to put down. All those people, all those lives, molded together, fused in a ghastly amalgamation that made his guts growl just thinking about. All the while, the band on his ring finger burned, as though it too were affronted by the horrors here. Naruto spared it a black look. Blasted things still wouldn't come off. He was beginning to think it was more than some mere wedding ring. But he had more pressing concerns. The chrysalid's memento was a heavy weight in the sealed pouch set against his thigh, an ugly reminder of Roderick's words. Everyone's been grafted. She might want to see what was left of her men. He would give her that much. His patted it, just to make sure it was there. Initially his optimism had nagged at his thoughts, arguing against him, wanting to believe there was a reason for such horror but now none could argue against this. He'd seen too much. The death. The festering piles of flesh, feasted upon by rabid dogs. No matter what some might say, there was no good reason to rip apart people and hang them from your ceiling. Those he hadn't beaten down or driven off had been slain by Trish and Nephili. Like that creepy Castellan. They might come back to life in time, made wiser for the experience. They might not. In truth he no longer cared for this place. He just wanted to fix it and put the horror of Stormvale behind him. Anyone who delighted in this was wrong. If your lord would do such, your lord is evil. Godric had to go. No two ways about it. Others had tried to stop him before if Melina was to be believed. They'd failed. Still a little voice in him argued against what he was about to do. Everyone deserved a chancino. Not this time. That was the anger talking. But he knew he couldn't just let him be. Not even Madara would have sunk this low but Kaguya had. This reminded him eerily of her deeds with the White Zetsu, only a far, far more horrific scale. Few would have sunk this low, grafting other people together to make these abominations. There was no saving them. Any of them. He'd had to put them down. And the knights defending them. You will triumph, tarnished. Melina's voice tugged him out of the fog. That is my belief. Naruto quirked a brow, half expecting a lie in her words. He found none. Huh. A crooked smile touched his lips. You actually do. She stood a little bit taller not preening before his gaze, yet proud nevertheless. Her open eye regarded him intently and not for the first time he found himself wondering just who she was. For all her claims at playing the part of a maiden, he couldn't help but feel she was more than that. There was a purpose in her, a power held back, leashed by her will alone. For all he knew, Melina might just be the most powerful person here. Tis a lord you're about to face. Her next words proved his suspicions. Do you require my aid in the coming battle? Kirama offered a low whistle. Well, aren't you easy to read? Not this time. He held up a hand to forestall another argument. Stand back and let us handle this. Her brow grew stormy. I am quite capable of defending myself. I don't doubt that. His voice cut in, a bit sharper than intended as he took her by the shoulders. But I don't want to see you stuck to that thing. The color drained to her face, her good eye seeking the fog door. I understand. I shall abstain, just this once. Naruto let her go, watching only absently as she retreated to her ethereal form. Only then did he exhale. Crisis averted. Tarnish could die over and over, that had been made quite clear to him, but he wasn't keen to throw his companions into the fire. Nephili was probably safe in that regard, but Trish and Melina might well be mortal for all he knew. Trish was probably going to fight whether he wanted her to or not, but she was tall, armored, armed, and had her spectral steed. Against someone no for fusing people to himself well, he wanted to spare Melina that, if only for a time. All right, then. That was settled no for the matter of their unseen watcher. He'd felt it for the last hour, an unseen presence gazing upon them from afar, stalking them, observing their efforts. It loomed close now, closer than ever before. Why hadn't it attacked was it waiting for them to face Godric? The better to stab them in the back the thought soured his mood even further. Kurama's warning did little to help it. He's over there. I can sense him. Restraining a grimace, he craned his neck past one of the ramparts, over the fallen corpse of a troll, down the deserted corridor. Blue eyes narrowed. There, a mounting sense of peril loomed large only yards away. He took a stance, preparing himself for the attack he was sure would come. Any moment now, they were exposed here. A proper ambush would do lasting damage. It never came. Instead he saw glimpsed a faint shimmer of dying golden light shuffling around the corner in the opposite direction. As if something or someone were disappearing, returning from whence they came. A trick of the light perhaps an overactive imagination unbidden, he found himself stepping forward, out of the corridor and into the night. Hey he raised his voice. Stop stalking us and attack already. Nay. A low, throaty voice called out an omen incarnate. I am not so craven as to strike when your back is turned. The air quivered before his words. For a moment, just a sliver of a second, he beheld someone else fading into the ether. Someone large indeed, larger than Trish, even. A horned head turned to regard him now, exposing weathered gray skin, a looming body bound in a ruined cloak. And yet for all that, he moved with deceptive grace. Leaning upon a worn gnarled staff, they pivoted, facing him fully. 
Come. The invader beckoned. I would speak with you. Bugger. Nephili swore under her breath. Is that who I think it is? Naruto heard Trish absolutely hiss behind him. She tried to drag him back toward the door. Naruto didn't budge. He stood his ground in turn, refusing to move. His senses took the horned man in an instant, struggling to untangle the complicated knot of emotions that bound up his being. Duty. Resolve. Resignation. Tired, so very tired, and full of bitterness. He wasn't sure if this was an enemy. Instinct said yes, but his heart said no. He dared a step forward. Still, the stranger made no move to approach nor retreat. What is thy business with Godric that ominous staff tapped once against the ground, an eerie bell tolling for them? Choose thine words carefully. You already know, don't you? Naruto stalked up to him, forcing a swearing Nephili to follow or be left behind, and Trish in her wake. You've been hounding us since we set foot in this castle. He stopped a stone's throw away, well within reach of that cane, then crossed both arms before his chest. A name would be nice. Margit will suffice. The man loomed large over him now, casting him in his shadow. Another tap of the staff. I need not yours, tarnished. He gave it anyway. Naruto. Ain't much, I know. Trish whined and dragged at Naruto's arm again. The horned man's gaze snapped to her, taking in her armor at once. He tamed a tree sentinel his bushy brow rose, considering her as one might a cracked gem. Curious. Is she perhaps no? He made up his mind a moment later. Disgraced, then. Fallen from grace. Your betrayal sullies your order. Trish wilted. Boy, she's not a failure, you. And here I see the daughter of Lou. His all-seeing gaze swept over Nephili next, causing the dusky-skinned woman to bridle in turn. Pitiable. That gray face twisted in a sneer. A motley band, if ever I have seen one. His gaze swept over Melina's spectral form, lingered there to let her know he saw her, then moved on. Your answer, tarnished. I would hear it said from your own mouth. Do you not seek his great rune? Anger sparked. Naruto felt himself convulse in a full-body shudder. This again it was too much the whiskered warrior flung up his arms with a cry bordering on explosive. Runes, runes, runes what is it with you people and runes? Hey I don't even know what a rune is, yet they're all everyone and anyone wants to talk about here listen stepping forth. He stabbed a finger against Margit's chest. I'm here to stop him from hurting anyone else that's all. Truly. And what about you another jab, heedless of the absolute behemoth before him? Are you working with him, to a third stab upwards now, seeking the heart beneath his bony ribs? Well answer me what do you have to say for yourself huh? Margit did not gape. His jaw did not click open, and he certainly didn't balk like some flustered fool. He was too refined for that. But he did blink. Three seconds passed. Three full seconds in which no one moved, or even dared to breathe. Bitter laughter filled the air. Naruto jerked back, startled by it. Margie wasn't laughing at him. It sounded like he was laughing at himself. Not even a full-blown cackle, merely more than a chortle, those broad shoulders nevertheless shivered with caustic mirth. Leaning upon his cane, he bent his head low, rumbling deeply. Thou art a curious sort. One hand shifted behind his back. More's the pity, I suppose. That same hand blurred, slamming a massive spectral hammer down on Naruto's head with impossible speed. A single backstep defeated what would have been a death blow. It crashed down on his feet, sending Trish and Nephili flying, even as he stood firm. A sandal-clad foot stomped down on the golden edifice and shattered it in a shower of light, leaving the omen grasping naught but empty air. Tan fingers snaked out, snatching at his wrist, reeling him in with ease. Foreheads collided with an awful crunch. Blood spattered. Horns flew through the air. While Margit clutched at his face and stumbled away, sounding mildly impressed for the first time since he'd met the man. Thou art of passing skill. Warrior blood must truly run in thy veins, tarnished. Are you done golden sage eyes blazed up at him, heedless of the blood sluicing down his own visage? Because you will be if you try something like that again. Margit flicked his cane forward. Less than an inch from Naruto's face the cane came, close enough to catch the curse scent coming from within. He slapped it aside in a parry and lashed out in a critical hit. Clenched knuckles found a new home within Margit's gut, folding the larger man over him with a dull wheeze. He was still there, gasping for air, when those furled fingers opened to reveal a racing gun. Margit tried to draw back. Too little. Too late. Wild blue light keened in the air, rising in a roar of defiance both borne by Jetsu and man alike. And then he was away. Naruto didn't see the moment the Jetsu launched him, but he heard it all the same. It left the towering demigod sprawled on his back, one hand reaching out in vain. Kitty stirred in his heart. He'd warned him. He really had. Why did no one listen to him in this blasted world? How many times did he have to prove himself even now he'd beaten a man just because he wouldn't back down? Even if he sensed that said man had held back the lion's share of his strength. Your heart ain't in this, huh? Margit struggled to rise once more and failed. Blast you. His duty done, the man slumped his body began to dissolve into motes of golden light, though his voice yet remained. I shall remember thee, tarnish heads moldering with a meager flame. Cower in fear of the night. The hands of the fellow men shall brook thee no quarter. And then they were gone, vanished once more. Wait I ain't done with you. Naruto lunged after them, intending to pursue, but Trish held him back. He looked up to find her shaking her head. Leave the coward. Nephili hefted an axe, eyes burning. It's time. Godric awaits. She was right. Enough stalling. Time to face the music. Naruto cracked his knuckles. Showtime. Zero zero zero. Morgat was no fool. 
One did not live to be the last of kings by being foolish after all. Even far from the capital he saw much of what transpired in the lands between just as he'd seen the look in this one the gleam in his eye, the steel in his soul. And so he'd chosen to investigate. Under the guise of Marget, he'd sent a projection of himself to test this tarnish suddenly to learn that thighs was no mere tarnished. He'd felt it during their clash. This was something else. More. Still, he'd had to be sure. He'd learned much during their encounter. And yet more questions remained. What was that thing bound to his finger that ring on his hand was undoubtedly a rune. He recognized the sense of one, although he knew not whose. One of hers perhaps Merica might craft such. Or perhaps another. It might even be hers. What the devil was she thinking? Could this one be no? The thorns of the earth tree would brook no passage. Even for this one. Nothing had changed. Nothing would change. To believe otherwise, to hope, was foolish. He sensed him even now he was aware of him, a coiled spring, ready to leap if he appeared again. T would be a simple matter to unleash his true strength and strike him down, surely. But why should he exert himself overmuch now for that fop the death of Godric would trouble him not indeed, the realm would be better off without that madman. Next time. He'd try harder next time. On a whim, Morgoth made his decision. Just this once. Just this once, he let them by. There would be no second time. Miracles only occurred once. Zero, zero, zero. Naruto was going to die. Trish knew it, no two ways about it. If she let him fight alone like that again, he would undoubtedly lose his life. Because this was a bad place. She'd lost her tongue in a castle not unlike this own. Hadn't she the memory was foggy. She could not slay herself, for honor prevented it. But still she did not wish to see this twig of a boy throw his life away. If it came to that, she would take the blow for him. It was the least she could do. He, who had bested Morgoth masquerading as weak Marget, might just be the one to sit the throne. If only if only he could get past Godric. To that end, she would gladly sacrifice all. Naruto was kind to her, even with her maimed face, her silent voice, and ghastly disfigurements. He had stood for her, even when the fell omen disparaged all her failures. She had pledged herself to him. But would that oath end in death? Time would tell. Zero, zero, zero. Weak, they called him. Useless. Runt of the litter. Godric the coward, Godric the grafted. Oh, how those words burned, how they rankled and seethed and stung his very spirit shrieked it wasn't fair, none of it, not at all. Not one bit of it this rotten world had conspired against him from the moment of his birth even before the shattering born sickly. Weaker than all those who shared his blood, forced to hide, grovel, scrape and scrounge just to survive ill while his kindred looked down on him. And for what his earliest memories were of their laughter, cringing aside. He strong impossible. He'd wanted to be just like them. Was that so wrong? Little Godric, they'd called him. They turned up their noses, sneering at him. Only a few would show him even the tiniest scraps of kindness, the merest morsels thrown to him as one might feed a dog scraps from their table. Those few were gone now. Mild Nequella, gentle Godwin and rebellious Ranny. Dear, dear Godwin and Ranny. Felled by the night of black knives. Nequella gone, vanished to parts unknown. And still the laughter continued, the mocking, the jeering. Fools and fops, the lot of them, unable to understand his greatness. No one understood. Melenia had made that clear among others things, when she brought him low that fateful day. Why, just think of it made him tremble with rage. Well, no more things were about to change all the grafting he had ever done had led him here to this moment small things at first, enough to give him an edge. Then a troll's body to make himself stronger. More arms, more weapons, more strength. Now, here at last, he had it. This would be his magnum opus. Soon they would see. They would all see. He would have his revenge upon them all. This was but the first step. Mighty dragon, thou a trueborn heir. Humming to himself, he reached out and touched a six-fingered hand to the manged beast before him, six fingers tracing its mangled snout. He could only imagine what manner of power lay beneath. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. He crooned, stroking its mantle. Deliver me unto greater heights. With this, he would have power yet greater than before. First one dragon, yes, then more. More. Once he was secure in his power he would seek out his kin and even graft there to himself. Melenia would save that rotten bitch for last. He was the lord of all that was golden and one day, he would return to the capital, cast down that fool Morgoth, and take his rightful place as Elden Lord. He just needed more time, more strength. The fog door stirred behind him. He heard it first, a faint rippling noise as the barrier he'd erected was breached. Indignant, he turned, cloak rippling from his back. Who dared disturb his solitude who had the gall? Soon enough, he saw. A young man clad in tattered orangey and black rags stalked down the steps, taking them two at a time. His hair shone in the moonlight, blue eyes burned, whiskered cheeks dimpling now in a scowl. By any anxiety he might have felt withered away in the face of such a lowly wretch. Another fool come to take what was his. There could only be one fate for such. Well, now, a lowly tarnished. He scoffed and gripped the haft of his axe, blood warming to battle as the host of arms bridled upon his back. Playing as a lord, are we? He paused as the fog rippled anew behind him. Not just one tarnished. Another. Some fool of a woman wielding tea axes. And behind them, looming over the rest goodness a tree sentinel here excellent. And without one of those bothersome steeds, she, at least, would make for grand grafting material. Today must be his lucky day. He salivated at the thought. With their might added to his own, his grand design would advance further yet, perhaps even enough to seek out that Ophraedon. 
The blonde man gagged suddenly and stepped back, face gone pale as he beheld his glory. How many lives did you graft to yourself? As many as needed Godric preened, reveling in his fear. And many more to come I command thee, kneel his axe he slammed down, brandishing the leonine crest upon it for all to see with a merry cackle. I am the lord of all that is golden and you are. Ground. Wait. Ground. Why ground? Now. Dazed. Blinking. Godric's thoughts came back to him. Why was he lying down distantly? He registered an awful ache in his jaw and drool training from his chin. Realization dawned and he found his face made level with the dirt in a way no self-respecting lord desired. Had someone dared to strike him, him, Godric the golden the gall of it all. His rage blazed, hotter than a dragon's flame. Change of plans. Dizzily, he heard the man's voice. He's mine. This thighs was madness, yes, this thighs was a trick some sinister spell. Get up. He turned his prone form to see that filthy blonde tarnish stalking his way. I set up his words where a growl, righteous fury made manifest. Take your lumps like a man. Goddard tried to rise, only for another impossibly fast blow to catch his chin in the interim. Star's entire galaxies flashed before his eyes as he reeled. He was still reeling in fact, when another blow dented his forehead to send him sprawling. Gravity betrayed him like everything else in this world his body struck the ground and bounced once, skidding a deep furrow into the ground. What sorcery was this he hadn't seen either attack and yet here he was, a demigod, bleeding by a mere tarnished. Up he had to get up, blood fountain forth from his split lip as he stumbled to a knee. Two in the Lord of. Lord through blurry eyes he beheld the blonde, stalking forward, eyes glowing gold. Yui shook his head, blonde bangs swaying from side to side. A lord's kinda like a hawkage, when you think about it. He stands up for his people, speaks for them, you know. Cease your prattling Godric whirled down at him, axes blurring, seeking his head. Be gone from my sight. He gives him a shoulder to lean on when they're tired, a hand slapped it away, snapping his arm out of position. And another to cry on when they weep. A second parry knocked him clear onto his back and a foot came hammering down after it, forcing him to tumble away lest his face be crushed. Rather than pursue, the blonde waited for him to rise. Only then did he continue. He bears their burdens with them, laughs with them, shares in both their joy and their sorrow, their pain all of it. What do you know about any of that? His words stirred old memories. Foul memories. It is the duty of the weak to yield to the strong. He closed on him, wind wailing around him, the storm itself answering his call. His weapons closed on empty air. You're wrong, a guest, and knowing full well what he would find, Godric nevertheless couldn't quell his instincts. He whirled up, alarmed to find the blonde perched atop his golden uplifted axe like some kind of fell carrion bird, glaring down at him. He doesn't hurt them. Those ice blue orbs burned into him, judged him, found him wanting, and damned him all in the same instant. He does not take advantage of them. He certainly doesn't take and take and take until they have nothing left to give. His heel whipped out, cracking him across the jaw. Teeth whistled free. Godric greeted the ground again, caught himself, and tumbled to his feet. You missed your chance to take my head. Fool a miracle can only occur once frothing, he slashed out at him. You shan't catch me by surprise again. Then what do you call the second time? An open palm touched Godric's back. Something slammed into his spine. Wind kind. He pitched forward, bearing an awful hole in his torso. But his body remained strong. It would not fall to a wound such as this. He clambered upright, eyes stinging, teeth aching. Ears ringing, he crawled forward. The dragon's corpse. An awful idea dawned in his heart. If he could just get to it. If you, a so-called lord would do such things, then that makes you evil a hand closed around the back of his head, grabbing a fistful of scraggly gray hair to hiss in his ear. I'll give you one chance. Tell me you had a good reason for this. He was begging with him, pleading almost. Tell me you didn't kill all these people to satisfy your own lust for power. A groan. Everything I have done. Yes, the blonde leaned in. I'm listening. It's for my own sake Godric grit his teeth and bucked, tearing a portion of his scalp to get away. The oaf let him go, more fool he. I will stand above them all I will strive I will triumph. All right. Those eyes. Those damn eyes. They scoured his very soul. Just like Melenia had. Then you are no lord. Red fell over his vision. You dare. That's right the invader spread his arms out at either side, and the storm itself seemed to hearken to him. You heard me or no lord, you big. Bastard his voice boomed out with a thunderous cry, crackling alongside a bolt of lightning from on high. Look what you've done all these people all those lives it ends here now today. Never. A faint click of the tongue was his only warning. The blonde slid through his legs and slashed upward with a knife, rending his thigh and something else. Pain howling his rage, Godric brought an axe down, but his target was already away, skipping away in the face of his fury. One leap, no more. Then he was upon him. Godric learned another ugly truth, then. He couldn't hit him. Left and right his prey swayed, rooted to the same spot, evading his axes with ease until the counterattack finally came. One punch, weakened him. Another brought him to a knee. A third sprawled him out, forcing him to flail in a frenzy just to buy breathing room. This could not be it must not be a moment. He only needed a moment. Now, when the blonde bragger hopped away to avoid a slam, Godric was ready. In a fit, hacked down on his arm, severing it with a scream. The moment of horror it caused his adversary gave him all the time he needed and yet more. Cackling, he rounded on the dragon's corpse. Here at last his moment of crowning glory. Ah, truest of dragons. He slammed his mangled arm into the beast's throat, thrusting it deep. Lend me thy strength. 
The blonde squawked at him. The hell are you doing? Godric only laughed all the louder. Fool he could have finished him then, while he was vulnerable. Instead he recoiled as he ripped. A beast free and bound its severed head to his will. Such strength within moments it was his puppet to do with as he pleased. Now the boy would burn all of them burn them, then the world. Forefathers. One and all he thrust his new toy high, forcing it to belch napalm into the air. Bear witness. Movement flickered in his lower peripherals. A sneer twisted across his face. One of those wretched women no doubt. Fearing for their friend, they struck at his flank while he was occupied. He barely felt the bite of an axe as it sank deep into his thigh. Her end was nigh. Godric rounded on her and brought his impromptu flamethrower to bear. For a singular, wonderful moment, he watched fear dawn in the eyes of Nephili Lu. Unfit to graft, this one. She would burn. But it was not to be. The blonde one barged in from the right and shouldered her aside at the last instant. He saved her, at the cost of himself, vanishing into the roaring inferno, swallowed without a sound. Godric crowed in triumph. At last victory his emotions led to his death a throaty cackle fled from his lips in a rush of dark glee as he heard the fool's companions cry out. Burn all of them would burn first him, then those fool maidens, then everyone this would be the birthplace of his dynasty his reign began now. Enough. Naruto emerged through the fire and flames unharmed, burning brighter than the earth tree itself. Clad in a cloak of black and gold did he stride forth, uncaring as the heat kissed his skin. Blue eyes gazed up at him, red as blood. Steam boiled from his shoulders before his unhurried advance a stately, leisurely walk while the inferno roiled over him, a pace that brought him well abreast of his new weapon. Godric could have retreated, could have pulled back, tried a new tactic, something, anything, and yet the look in those eyes rooted him where he stood. He saw something in them, something terribly, horribly familiar. An expression he'd never seen himself, yet heard tell of many a time and tales spoke hence. Here at last, the Lord's heart quailed in the face of that fearsome glare. They looked nothing alike, and yet, he saw him all the same. Great Godfrey. Without so much as a word, golden hands closed around the dragon's jaw, tearing it and the head clean off at the base. Still grasping the dragon's severed visage, Naruto reared back with a snarl. So too did his impromptu flail, arcing over and up with savage intent. Godric had time enough to blink as its shadow fell over him. Oh, he managed. And then pain. Naruto's arms blurred, and the dragon's head, heavy as it was, could not defy his momentum. It crashed down, slamming him into the floor. Dazed, Godric couldn't even think to rise. By the time he did, another slam hit, stunning him. Bones cracked, followed by a fourth. The strength bled from his body. A fifth now. Miraculously, his mind kept track of them all, even as he was beaten to a pulp. Six. Now he could feel himself slipping, and still, the beating continued as his mind slipped further and further away. All the while, his foe howled at him. This, bam, is not, wham, acceptable, t-h-r-u-c-k. The ninth blow did Godric and his world spiraled down into darkness. Hey, and did he just beat that guy with another guy? Yup, beaten down with his own weapon. Ironic and painful. Time will tell if Godric lives or dies though I suppose that depends on you, the readers. But hey, a new lord rises. All hail the coming age of orange or is the age of the stars something else entirely him? Decisions, decisions. Had to cut the gray roll bit until next chapter, would have felt forced here. Well did you like this story yes no maybe speak out make yourselves heard your voice matters. Once more, we're sticking with the embers rule for this story. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular poof gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs during the holidays so I barely have time to write as such. I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up your voice matters make yourself heard as ever. Reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review, would you kindly, and have some previews. Granted, some are quite off, but still. Previews. Have you come for rebirth what are you doing? You seem saucid. Renala blinked as the baffling blonde sat down before her and patted the space beside him. Want to talk about it? Rodrika wept softly. Thank you. The girl will burn. It is her fate. No. I beg your pardon. No. It means a no. Is it not happening? Not allowed denied, denied, denied. You cannot simply. No I deny your denial. Hatch is gulped. Nice fox. Nee is fox. Let's not do anything hasty. The man stood. Warrior stand and face me. Naruto's head whipped around. Oh, come on. Yao you knave. Huh. He snickered. So dragon girls are a thing here. Nidak. Clenched knuckles crashed into his chin. He was still laughing when he hit a tree. My body rides with scarlet rot. You would be wise to leave. He did just that for all of an instant. Then he spun around, swept both arms under her and Millicent squeaked. Cease why are you carrying me like some princess you'll be infected with the rot. Oh, is that what it is? His smile shone down at her, brighter than the earth tree itself. The rot in her tried to touch him and was summarily repelled. Hey, tickles. Call me a tarnished again see what happens. You will stay away from my mother. Naruto's eyes snapped toward her and Randy knew it once she'd been had. He'd played her, the clever fool. Ah, he crooned, the low sound of a man who'd finally put all the pieces together at long last. I was wondering about that. She thinks you're dead, you know. Of course she did. Her face twisted with shame at the reminder. It is necessary. His brow grew stormy. Is it, though is it really she was crying? You will hold thy tongue. 
Blue eyes blazed red. No, I will not. Why is it always ghost? Nope, nope, nope. Take off that ridiculous mask, will you? When I talk to someone, I want to see their face. Behind her crown, Selen's brow shot into her hair. If you insist, my apprentice. Apprentice me much to her chagrin, he crossed both arms behind his head and grinned, the baffling boy. Strange thing to call me. Lord of blood, was it you know? I've heard about you. Can't say it's been good things. Now, then. Moog faltered for an instant. Just a moment. Nary a second. Oh, oh, dear. Weapons rose into the air. Get him. Oi, Miquela, wake the hell up your sister's waiting for you. Such a stalwart champion. Please go me. I believe in freedom. The freedom to change, to become a better person than you were. And the freedom to kick someone's ass to kingdom come if they won't. I don't want to be a lord but I won't let this world rot. Guided by grace. So this was a great rune. Naruto turned it end over end in his hands, regarding the ethereal construct with no small amount of confusion. Smaller than expected perhaps, but rather light all things considered. He supposed that made sense after all, it was made off well, light. Blasted thing had come flying out Godric's chest after that last blow, practically landing right in his hands. All this chaos, all this death, over something so tiny. Had everyone really gone mad for these simple shards? He wasn't sure whether he wanted to laugh or cry. Godric's mangled corpse lay sprawled at his feet, body crumbling into dust. Or was it runes he wasn't sure? How he should feel about this, any of it. He'd beaten the man to death in a fit of pique. He shouldn't have he knew that. But he'd gone after Nephili. There hadn't been any time for anything other than a lethal response. More than that, he was so very tired of everything trying to kill him and his. Was it so wrong to fight back for once in his life? To have been felled by a lowly tarnished a low rasp at his feet sparked his temper anew. Such shame I cannot bear. Blue eyes snapped down. You're still alive. You must be joking. How durable is this bastard? Not very enough for long, judging by the way his body was falling apart. These were Godric's last gasps. Rani Rikard raid on a hand with too many fingers grasped at Naruto's ankle, drawing a shudder from the blonde. Wild eyes glowered up at him, through him, gazing past to something he couldn't see. Melania McQuella Godwin those ugly bloodshot orbs fixed upon him, and yet for all that, they still didn't see him. Greatest Godfrey I only wanted to stand among your kin to be like them to be strong was that so wrong. Here at last, pity hit the whiskered warrior's heart he blinked, finding himself somewhat taken aback. Who in blazes was Godfrey, and why did this lunatic think he was him was he truly that far gone still, it wasn't in him to disrespect the dying nor the dead. On a whim, he knelt down. A tan hand touched the demigod's dented forehead. Godric's crown had long since fallen to the wayside in their battle, leaving a tangled mat of hair behind. Now that looked at him, he realized just how old the so-called Lord of Stormvale truly was. Frail, even. With his grafts crumbling, he was already a shell of his former self soon he wouldn't even be that. It would be wise to kill him now. Safe, even. But he'd never been one for wisdom. Maybe not, he drawled, still the way you went about it was wrong. Plonking down beside him, he heaved a sigh. If you wanted others to respect you, it should have worked with them. Proved yourself to them. Not by sewing pieces of other people to yourself. His gaze swept past him, to the buckling stormy sky above. If you crush everyone who disagrees with you, if you steal the lives of others rather than build your own it's a sad, lonely little world you'll live in. I knew a guy like that, once. Didn't end well for him. Glassy eyes met his, already dimming over, still not truly seeing him in his final moments. Such wisdom in the face of a fallen foe who truly art great Godfrey. I'm really not. Cutting softly, he closed his eyes. A hand rose behind his back. May you find peace in the next life, whatever it may be. Firm fingers gripped a kunai, just in case. He wouldn't be caught unawares by a sneak attack. Not again. Be reborn as a better person. I hope you have a proper family in your next life. One who doesn't mock you, hurt you, or torment you. The grafted made a pitiful noise. He never thought to hear the like from someone like him. Thou art too kind. A low rasp cut into his words. Far, far too kind thy's world doesn't deserve someone like thee. In the end there was no need to finish Godric off for he accepted his death willingly. His crumbling sagged with a rasp of a gasp, eyes rolling in his head as he slumped into the dirt. I am the lord off all that is golden he croaked out his final words as the clouds parted, fingers reaching for a single ray of sunlight in the sky. And one day, we'll return together all of us, to our home, bathed in rays of gold. He expired with a low rattle and dissolved, leaving a bevy of runes behind. They hit Naruto and he staggered, falling to a knee, but only for a moment. Sense reasserted itself as he stumbled upright, eyes stinging. Every cell in his body bristled with power, strength added to his own. It was alarming. Intoxicating. Terrifying. So these are the runes everyone's been on about. Not bad. Think I can see the appeal. Not now, Kurama. Silence swept over the ruined courtyard. Here and now, a small, shuddering sigh escaped Naruto at the last. He knelt and hung his head. He'd done the right thing, hadn't he willfully taking a life, made his heart feel heavy, even if it was necessary. Godric had undoubtedly been evil, but he'd not always been this way. Something must have happened to him, to make him the twisted wreck of a man he'd fought. Yet he couldn't stop to mourn. Had to keep moving. The faintest gleam of burnished metal caught his eye. In hindsight, he wasn't sure why his eyes alighted upon Godric's fallen axe, only that they did. On a whim, he reached down and grabbed it. Much to his surprise the towering armament shrank to fit his grasp. 
a cursory swing confirmed its weight and lacking a holster for it, he sealed it away in a scroll. Remembrance acquired. He would remember the man Godric should have been, not the monster he'd become. Forgive me. Melina shimmered into existence at his side, jolting him out of his reverie. I've been testing you, to see whether or not Grace does truly guide thee. There was something more to her words now a hint of respect perhaps, curiosity even, but he willfully ignored it to meet her gaze, whether you were fit to face the challenge that entails. And what do you think now he quirked a brow, not liking the look in her eyes. Don't leave me in suspense. It seems my worries were unfounded. A faint smile bloomed on her grave face as she regarded. Torrent had your measure from the start, whereas I merely pretended for a time. Naruto frowned. Was that a roundabout way of saying she believed in him now felt like a bit of a backhanded compliment, but he'd take it. Anything to put this awful place behind him once and for all. Surely the rest of the lands between couldn't be so twisted as this. Surely not. Right, right. What do I do with this thing he hefted Godric's rune her way? You need but take it to a divine tower to empower it. Sure, great. He mumbled, not relishing the idea of more wandering. I'll get right on that. Naruto turned his gaze back to the rune shimmering in his palm. Thought it felt weak. Are people really fighting over these? Alas, they are. The shards of the Elden Ring are not something to be trifled with lightly. Naruto turned his gaze back to the rune. It shone dully in his palms, alive, devoid of any benediction. He could sense it, feel it pulsing in his hands like the beating of a heart, almost as if it recognized him as though it were aware. Perhaps some tiny fragment of its old owner lingered therein. People were fighting over these things, dying for them. Someone should take these runes, keep them safe. He could only think of one way to do that, mad though it was. Hirama realized what was about to happen a heartbeat before he acted. Don't you dare. Bolden hands moved of their own accord to clench tight round Godric's rune. Then he reared back and slammed it into his chest. Melina cried out in surprise her cry went ignored. No sooner had she done so than the sigil flared to life, regaining its lost luster. His body bent double again, but with it came strength. Pain flared in his palms and he pushed through, refusing to lose his grip. As he grit his teeth the great rune carved itself into him, shimmering just above his flesh. Bright and vibrant it burned, brimming with the life it had lacked a moment ago. That's not possible. Through ringing ears, he distantly became aware of Melina's hoarse whisper. You didn't even take it to the tower. Oh, and... Naruto turned to find everyone balking at him. He blinked. Well, why are you looking at me like that? Zero, zero, zero. What was he? Try though she might, Nephili Lu didn't know what to make of this boy now, this man before her. At first she'd taken him for a tarnished like her, though him to be little more than a warrior, but she'd never seen one of her kind perform half the feats she'd witnessed here today, let alone that ghastly stunt just now. Her second assumption had been to label him as a mage, but no, their kind were decidedly squishy. They couldn't kick a demigod around as he had. She had thought they would fight Godric together. Honor demanded. And yet she'd broken that code. Rushed in. And such shame she felt. As she looked on the tree sentinel woman barged forward and picked the blonde up, hoisting him into the air as one might a child. Hey he failed his legs in the air, to no avail. Why do you think you're doing put me down that tickles? Trish most certainly did not. Instead she gave him a once over, craning her neck this way and that to get a better look at him. Realization dawned. She was searching for injuries. Nephili couldn't much blame her they'd all seen him walk through the fire, and though it was easy to ignore pain in the head of battle, who knew what manner of wounds might lay beneath those singed clothes. I'm fine Naruto kicked out, wriggling loose to land lightly upon the floor. He didn't touch me. It was too much. Yes, he did incredulity burst forth from Nephili in a stricken shout. He set you ablaze how are you not a lump of charcoal. They got a baffled blink from the blonde braggart. I heal awful fast. She grabbed him by the collar. Not an excuse are you one of them, then a demigod in disguise. Me no I'm not his face darkened. Oh, for the love of I'm fine I'll prove it. As she looked on aghast, Naruto broke her grip with ease, reached down to his chest, and seized a fistful of singed fabric there. Realization dawned like a coming storm, but it was too late. Surely he wouldn't of course he would. With a triumphant cry, the blonde tore it off, followed by the mesh wire shirt beneath. Revealed was lean muscle beneath, not a hint of flame or scorched flesh to be seen. Well, a distant part of her mused. Rather fit, this one. See he bared his teeth at her in a smile fit for Hora Lu himself, am fine. And so are you. So don't. Worry. It's about it. Nephili opened her mouth to refute him. No, you don't as your eyes narrowed, rooting her where she stood. If the next words out of your mouth aren't I and understand I'm going to spank you. Nephili's face went white. He would, too, she knew. He was that done with Stormvale. The horrors of this place had clearly disturbed him more than he let on, and he was clearly keen to be done with the castle and move on to greener pastures. As was she, Godric might be gone, but the winds were still tainted with his deeds here. Still, to threaten to spank her she'd not been threatened with such before. I shall return to my father and tell him of your success. She managed a stiff bow, not trusting herself to be anything less than perfectly polite in this moment. She was furious with him, absolutely seething really, but to display that here would be a sign of weakness, and she was not weak. I wish you good fortune in the wars to come. Come on it's fine. He tried to wave her down. Nobody got hurt. Not it isn't. She stalked back the way she'd come, eyes stinging with her shame. I must report to my father. May we meet again on the battlefield. Zero, zero, zero. 
such a strange girl, Nephili Lu, that one would bear watching. Still, with the wild warrior gone, Melina felt her path was clear. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. The maiden piped up to claim her tarnished attention, then paused, weighing her words. I can take you to the round table hold, gathering place of tarnished champions, guided by grace. No, her world shuddered to a halt. No, he had to go to the round table. He must, if things were to progress. An audience with the two fingers was needed to grant him direction, if not one with the all-knowing. Not yet. Her champion patted his pocket, and the prize therein. I've got a promise to keep. Ah, uh, the girl. An odd, sour taste welled up in her mouth. Yet more distractions. Would it never end? You wish to be Elden Lord, do you not? When he didn't answer she bowled on, grasping his sleeve. Leave these distractions behind. She could well be dead by now. You cannot hope to save everyone. Her gaze strayed to where Godric lay, the real Godric, his mutilated corpse divested of all his once mighty grafts. Some are too far gone to save. It's almost funny, you know? The whiskered warrior growled at her. Someone told me the same thing. I'll tell her what I told you. His head butted against hers, giving her a glimpse of the resolve gleaming in those bright blue eyes. That sounds like a challenge. As Peace said, he made for the exit. The tree sentinel Trish followed him, ever his silent shadow. Come on, let's go see if that merchant came fashion me a holster for this axe. Melina bridled, full of a tarnish she'd known his kind before. Bright and hopeful, optimistic. The lands between sometimes receive such visitors from beyond the fog those unwilling to harden their hearts for the fire ahead, determined to save everyone they came across. This world would swallow him whole, just as it had them. But until such a day came, she had a duty to fulfill no matter the cost. Their paths aligned for the time being. Nothing more, nothing less. In the end, she followed him, just as before. Zero, zero, zero. He returns triumphant. In truth, Rodrika thought he wouldn't fear had festered in her heart like scarlet rot, tainting her every hope, her every dream, dashing any and all belief that he would return unharmed. Godric was a lord, after all, a demigod, no matter how diluted his bloody might be. Surely a small party such as theirs wouldn't triumph against such a creature. Still, the blonde's familiar had lived up to its promise the once desolate yard outside the shack El now I spattered with the remains of those who would have done her harm. Monsters and wolves, soldiers of Godric alike, none had survived the trampling delivered upon them by the toad. Her ward had held throughout, but against so many hands, it would have surely shattered. And now there he was that was undoubtedly her tarnished coming up the road. Wait, her no, no, no. She mustn't think such things. Surely he had no need of one as weak as she. One look was all it took to recognize him. And yet for all that, he was different. There, jutting between his shoulders that was new. He'd not had an axe before. His chest shone faintly with a rune she did not recognize, a low light shining through the cloth best he wore. And weight was that a dragon's corpse on his companion's steed it was lesser than its greater cousins perhaps. But a dragon was still very much a dragon did he intend to fashion a bit of armor out of it there was nothing quite so sturdy as dragon hide. The tree sentinel granted her a grave nod, and she flinched in the face of that stern helm. Hey, Gamakichi his voice drew her back to reality with a jolt. Sorry to keep you waiting. Everything. Killed a few idiots. The giant amphibian rumbled in return. You thought about reverse summoning might be able to get you home. Rodrika felt her heart hitch. H-E-H-E -E was going to leave after all this. No. Much to her relief, Naruto waved him off. Don't think it'll work. You can try later, but I've got work to do here. Mind giving him a message for me? The toad rumbled an affirmative. Tell him well. He looked away, scratching his cheek. Tell them I'm fine. I've got a world to fix. I'll try to come back if I can. But I can't right now, you know. Ma and Pa will be angry. Not much I can do about that. The blonde shrugged. I can't leave this place alone. Both master and familiar shared a long, lingering look. Eventually, the latter nodded. The subsequent plume of smoke burst forth, heralding his departure. Rodrika squinted into it, to no avail. All that remained was a faint indent in the ground. She didn't have time to ponder it for long because now the baffling blonde was making right for her. A tan hand stabbed forth, fishing into his pocket for something. Here, he knelt and pressed it into her hands before she could so much as think to blink. I found this. What's this a keepsake? Her fingers curled around it furtively, realized what it was and clenched down, almost afraid he'd take it away. For my men, oh, goodness me I can't. Sorrow welled up in her, threatening to drown her all over again. These were the last remnants of her men, her friends, all she had left of her homeland regis to this. It was too much. Her breath failed her. Her eyes began to sting. A faint warbling noise fled from her lips as the misery welled up again. They all believed in me. She doubled over, swallowing a sob. They all thought I'd make something of myself. Me who can't do anything. And where did that belief get them gone and grafted by Godric? Some of them had been strong. They could have done great things, wonderful things, if only they hadn't been shackled to her. And yet she was the one to live little useless Rodarkia, her only gift a useless one. How was that fair the gods were cruel? Something shattered deep inside her. It would have been better if I died the words escaped her in a wail. I should be dead I should be. Naruto moved. She was only vaguely aware of it in her peripherals one moment he knelt before her and the next his arms were wrapped tight around her back. 
His chin came down over her shoulder. Even as he tucked her head into his chest by Merica, he cradled her like a child, like a brother would his sister. Roderica sobbed in his arms, an awful, ugly sound she was sure he hated. I know it hurts. His voice was a low, soothing hum in her ear. I know you want to scream. But those men and women went for you knowing full well what might happen to them. Don't dishonor their sacrifice by throwing your life away. Those arms were gentle bands around her now, rocking her to and fro as she wept. Don't cry. Remember them. Let those memories give you the strength to take action. Easy for him to say he was strong she was weak. She tried to struggle, to no avail. His arms held tight. I'm useless what can I do? Plenty of things. He didn't release her, not for a moment. I'm sure there's something in this world that only you can do. She wasn't sure how long he held her. Minutes, hours, it felt like the former but it could well have been the latter for all she knew. Eventually her tears ran dry, as all things do. Once they did he nudged her faintly. Right, mustn't despair. It wouldn't be fair to them, or herself. A tiny, tremulous resolve hardened in her heart. Then I think I'll head to the round table hold. Perhaps I'll find my purpose there. Great he leaned back, holding her by the shoulders, smiling bright as ever. That's where I'm headed next we can go together. Rodrika sniffled a little. He truly was too kind. Much, much too kind to someone as frail as she. A woman materialized beside him, looking most put out. Rodrika squeaked, only to find herself summarily ignored as the one-eyed maiden rounded upon Naruto. Are you ready now? Her champion nodded, but once. Very well. Let my hand rest upon you, for but a moment. Zero, zero, zero. There was much of note in the round table. Too much, one might say. An endless series of quests to be taken, and requests needed fulfilled, to say nothing of its more eccentric guests. In truth, Naruto wasn't keen on any of it from that wizened old crone to those giant two fingers for which she served as a mouthpiece. He cared even less for the other denizens a blind man of faith who wouldn't stop talking about the Urtree, a foppish knight who puffed himself up at the sight of him, and this all-knowing fellow who refused to even meet with him. Busy, he said. No time for upstarts, he'd said. To hell with that one. If he wanted to talk, he could come back begging. In the end, only three individuals truly stood out. The first was, of course, Rodrika. She settled in nicely. Then came the strange case of a man named Hugh and a woman known only as Fia. Zero, zero, zero. Hugh looked up as a shadow fell over his forge. You're a new face. He squinted at the newcomer with bleary eyes, this sorry sort clad in singed rags, with nothing but a head bent to his name. No matter, it's all the same to me. Lay out your arms. Hefting his hammer and ignoring the spasm of pain it brought him he set to himself to his dauntless task once more. Let's get smithing. But the blonde tarnished offered him no weapons, nor ashes of war. Nay, his eyes traveled elsewhere. Didn't take much to guess what. Even a half mid smith like him could tell. I see you've noticed the chains. His hammer fell anew, producing a hollow clank as it struck the sword set upon the anvil. They're nothing special. I'm a prisoner, and these are my chains. The newcomer might have made a face at that, but he wasn't looking at him, so focused was he upon his task. I'm trapped by the hold, undying, smithing for you fools. That's all there is to it. Did you choose this? Hugh nearly missed a hammer stroke. Still, a grim smile settled over his scarred face. He'd thought this one mute. Seemed he could speak after all. Nah, don't read too much into it. Rise and fall. I've no grudge against you. Rise and fall. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. To forge a weapon that would surpass them all. Besides, I don't mind smithing. To craft a blade that would make gods fall. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. Strong enough to finally bring an end to things. Given time, he grunted when he struck the wrong angle, then corrected himself. Technique never fails. Besides, it helps me forget. Even now, he still couldn't quite suppress the sudden surge of dread he felt when he relived that awful memory. The sheer terror of her. A blonde brow quirked. Forget who. It's nothing. Let's get smithing. Credit where it was due, the boy knew when to let things be. I've got a dragon carcass with me. Any chance you could make armor out of that? Hugh paused. Could be. I'll have to see first and to know. I'll have Trish bring it up. They chatted for a time after that. Speaking of small things, the girl, Rodrika, and the state of the round table. Against all odds, the boy he still didn't know his name, not that it mattered actually managed to wring a promise out of him to look after the lass, to help nourish her gift, for what it was worth. But in the end words dried up, as they often do, and they went their separate ways. Hugh watched him go, shook his head, and returned. HRMPH. Just another tarnished. He'd seen a few with fire like that they all burned themselves out sooner or later. This one would be no different. He'd seen the rune in his chest. So what if he grappled with Godric in all his grisly glory everyone knew that one was the runt of the litter. No, there were monsters out there, warriors and witches who made the grafted seem a child by comparison. Lunar Princess Rani, Preta Reichard, General Radon, the twin prodigies, Mequella and Melania, to say nothing of Morgoth and Moog. There were others out there, too, monsters even more dangerous than the demigods. Abominations that would turn a man's stomach and render resolve such as theirs so much jelly. Weapons would be needed to fell such horrors. And so he would smith them, until he fulfilled his promise at his curse. Perhaps then, he would finally make an end of things. Zero, zero, zero. Naruto stumbled into her room by sheer happenstance. He'd been touring the rooms, trying to find one for himself and Trish, when he found the open door. Oops, he withdrew just as quickly when he saw the dark-robed woman within. 
Sorry, didn't know anyone was in here, I'll just be going. Wait, a soft, almost ethereal voice called to him. Might I have a moment of your time? Reluctantly, he stepped back in. Greetings great champion called by Grace, the hooded woman inclined her head in a polite nod. I am Fia. As he looked on she tugged down her hood, exposing a pale face and bright eyes, framed by a gentle curtain of flaxen gold hair. A pleasure to meet thee. Same. He waved. I'm guessing you live here, same as the others. In a sense, she favored him with a rueful smile. Circumstances have compelled my stay at the round table hold. He recalled the baleful look Melina had given him before she'd all but dragged him here. Circumstances? Right. I know that feeling. Great champion, would you allow me to hold you? But briefly when he didn't answer, she hastened to explain, perhaps fearing his wrath. Perhaps you could share some of your lively vigor and stout-heartedness. Doing so will grant me the warmth of a champion, and you, I'm sure, will receive a Baldachin's blessing. Confusion flared in him. Another word he didn't understand. Bald ahead now. Do you think it vulgar? Perhaps the maiden in black tilted her head. Where I come from, it is a sacred act. Let me be clear, here. You, he pointed to her, want to give me, to himself now, a hug just like that. After all he'd been through since finding himself here, it sounded kinda nice actually. What the hell? Fine. My thanks, great champion. A rare seed of anxiety bloomed in him. So do I come to you, or? Fia opened her arms wide and somehow managed to beckon him with her expression alone. Flickering firelight sent shadows dancing across her face, even as his own burned in embarrassment. It was just a hug. Nothing to get excited about. After all, it wasn't as if they were doing that or anything. Nope. Not a chance. Warily, he crouched forward. Gentle arms enfolded him tenderly as a lover's might and pulled him into her bosom. Her breath was a thread in his ear. You are very warm. Huh. Felt pretty nice, this. Is there anything you wish to unburden yourself of while I hold you? A rueful smile touched whiskered cheeks. What are you, a therapist or something? I do not know what that word means. She didn't flinch at his tone. I merely wish to see you comfortable. He felt a faint tug on his chakra as she spoke. Barely perceptible. For him it was a drop in the ocean. In the same instant he heard Fia gasp. Something flickered in his chest, near the great rune he'd taken into himself. A faint feeling, a spark of fleeting strength, finite, yet waiting for him to call on at his leisure. Such strength she coughed once, then continued. What you felt light up inside of you was a Baldachin's blessing. Though it is but a fleeting thing, I'm afraid. Come back to me, should you require another. I will take you in my arms as often as you need. He stood quickly. She smiled after him. Then good day to you, my dear. Naruto beat a hasty retreat as only a shinobi could. Zero, zero, zero. There was something about the table. He saw it as he left Fia's room behind him. That large shard of grace hanging above its surface he called to his eyes. His senses. Tarnished distantly, he heard Melina call out to him. Trish made a noise of confusion. He paid them no heed. Without thought Naruto vaulted the edge, skirted the many weapons lying there and reached out for it. He wasn't sure what he was expecting the moment his fingers brushed it, everything went awry. The ring on his hand pulsed he couldn't think of any other word for it his very fingers fell the fire, as though it were burning from the inside out. Nay, a tiny, faint whisper hissed in the back of his head. Not yet. Not here. There's work to be done. He touched it, that little speck of light, and the world shifted. Whoa. Naruto kicked back out of habit and realized too late where he'd landed. Gone were the rolling green hills and giant golden tree in its place he found not but dead wastes, lashing wing, and... That is a big dragon. Naruto looked up. The dragon looked down, rooted where it lay by strange growth seeping from the ground. Its great scaly snout somehow managed to convey surprise despite its great girth. It was trapped, just laying there in the rot. Absolutely massive too, large enough to give Kirama a run for his money. Neither man nor beast moved, for fear of breaking the impasse. Naruto sneezed and the tableau shattered with a roar. Arg my ears. He clamped both hands over his head as such. He had an awful moment to see the flames building in the back of the beast's throat flames that guttered out with a dull whine as a rather put out Kirama reared up around him and stomped a golden paw upon its head. The moment of sheer realization made his brush with death all the more with it. Bad lizard calmed down he pinned it with a hiss. I ain't here to fight ya. It glowered at him, with eyes larger than his head. Keddy bloomed anew. I get it. You're stuck, ain't ya? The great dragon made a discontented noise akin to a growl. Boy he swatted it on the snout with Kurama's arm, drawing an angry cry. Stay put. Not that you have much choice in the matter. It snarled and made to bite him. Kidding I'm kidding sheesh, no one has a sense of humor here. Withdrawing the cloak, he moved to regard one of the core-like growth near the beast's claws and considered it. Whatever this foul gunk was, it had well and truly entrapped the dragon, then calcified over his beleaguered body. Poor beast probably got caught while it was sleeping didn't look like it had moved in an age. How weak it must be. Still, that was no excuse to leave it here, trapped. It might even appreciate its freedom. Were those smaller dragons in the distance lumbering his way, drawn by the dragon's scream best deal with this quickly then. Clenched knuckles swung down and bounced off. His fist stung, leaving him to recoil with a hiss. He swung down again. On the second strike, it cracked if only just. The third shattered it completely, leaving his hand screaming. Right, screw this. Using the clones. With a plume of smoke his one-man army set to their task with a will. Fist swung. Jutsu flashed out. From there it was the work of several minutes to extricate the trapped worm. 
even then he and his clones were forced to crawl all over its scales and chisel through some less than pleasant places to free it fully, much to the beast's manifest displeasure. Tata he stepped back, arms spread wide. You're free. The beast glared at him, struggled to rise, faltered. Oh, you haven't moved for a while, have you guess you're pretty weak. It shimmered into fog and light, light that shrunk down, assuming a smaller form. Compact. Humanoid. Wait, what human what no? As the light dimmed, he found himself gazing upon a woman. Couldn't be anything less. Stark silver eyes shone out of a scarred face framed by a curtain of gray hair gone nearly white, through which two horns jutted. Yet for all that, this new form of hers appeared to be rather young, barely thirty at a stretch. Clad in little more than a tattered white shift, she swayed on her heels, yet when he went to her, she bared her teeth, human teeth at him, in a feral hiss. Mind body, quivering arms hugged close to herself, and he glimpsed the shimmer of scales upon them. Mind limbs, another shiver, not of weakness, but rage. You touched all of it. Heat is his face as he scratched the back of his head. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. But it was the only way to get you out. He got a name. She absolutely hissed a thim. My name is Grey Liao Nave. Huh. He snickered. So dragon girls are a thing here. Me duck. Clenched knuckles crashed into his chin at speed. He was still laughing when he hit a tree. Such was his introduction to Caleb. Hey, and Millicent next chapter. Well, did you like this story? Yes, no, maybe speak out, make yourselves heard, your voice matters. Once more, we're sticking with the Ember's rule for this story. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs during the holidays so I barely have time to write as such. I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up your voice matters, make yourself heard as ever. Reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review, would you kindly, and have some previews. Granted, some are quite off, but still. Previews. Millicent shook her head. She'd seen him, running about trying to help everyone. It was admirable and unbearably naive. You cannot help me. Who decided that hold still and let me fix your everything? Naruto swore softly as Radon shuddered to a stop atop his tiny, aging mount. A low growl seemed to rattle the dunes, no, the very air itself. Radon was still snarling when he leaped into the air. Wait, where did highs that a meteor? Who comes into mine tower? Hey, if it isn't Rani didn't know you were up here. Rani choked on her words. You egg in we dust thou want. How could you do such a thing? Eh, <sighs> nothing beat flying on the back of a dragon. She grabbed him by the face and kissed, hard enough to jar his teeth. Raya tilted her head. You're a bit of an odd one, aren't you still? Thank you, for your aid. Dung eater, was it I've got one word for you. Hirama, heed my words. No, you heed mine. Much to her annoyance, the young man actually had the gall to interrupt her. Again I ain't here to fight you. As she looked on he crossed both arms before his chest. Hell, I didn't even know you were here. I'm tired of fighting. Let's just put the sword arm down and talk, hey. Malinia didn't believe him. Rather, she could not. Where had belief led her here, her brother missing, her body rotted, her world in tatters. To trust the words of a stranger, a man she'd never met nay. She could not. It would be the very height of folly. He was no different than all the rest. I am Melenia, Blade of Miquela. Her blade swept out, rending the air before her. And I have never known defeat. His smile was strangely sad. Everyone does, sooner or later. She lunged at him without a word. He mirrored her. Their world dissolved into wordless violence. Why would you show such kindness to me? Let me answer your question with another question. Why not? You are very kind. Would you perhaps grant me the honor of your name? Blondes and broken things. Fool of a tarnished. Melina kicked out at a nearby table with a shriek and sent it flying, books and candles all. Near the door, Hanshi rewarded her with a flat look for her tantrum. He went summarily ignored. As well he should Gideon's man could glare at her all day for all she cared. His ire would avail him not a jot for you see her anger was not directed his way. She almost wished it were things would be so much simpler. My lady Corin dared to peek round the corner. Are you all right? I heard a crash. Melina glared bloody red daggers at the prophet and he withdrew. Good man. Wise man. He knew not to mess with an angry woman. Unlike some, never in her short life had she been so singularly frustrated by a single being nay utterly confounded by one man, a single soul such as this yet here she stood, seething like some churlish child. It galled her to no end. Bad enough that Naruto paid little heed to suggestion or such. Bad enough that he seemed content to wander without a worry in the world. Bad enough that he'd proven himself wholly incapable of doing anything the easy way. But this, this was too far. Even for her, Atrish was positively aggrieved at his abrupt disappearance and Rodrika feared him dead. He was not of course. Even now their pact persisted she could sense him. Which was precisely what alarmed her so. By the Urtree, what was he doing in Kaled? At first she'd thought he was off seek General Radon but no. He was puttering about the wilds with with the dragon of all things it rankled her to no end. T would be a simple matter to decorporealize herself and go herring after him. But even that would take time. Days perhaps, to track him down. She could hardly teleport to his side at such a distance after all. Even if she could, she would not be able to drag that tree sentinel after her so easily, let alone the spirit tuner. Their place was at the round table hold she reasoned, out of sight, out of mind. Wasn't it? Her tarnish did not want for distractions, and as such she would endeavor to keep him on track. 
She had been created with a singular task in mind. Nothing more. She knew her purpose, her goal. Clearly this Tarnish did not know his. Someone would have to beat it into his head, and T would not be her. He could not save everyone and everything. He'd merely been lucky thus far. One could only hope Caleb would teach him that lesson. Melina prayed it would. She shuddered to think what his plans might be. Who knew what manner of depravity he was getting up to without her guidance? Zero, zero, zero. Letch. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Grayrol pursed her lips and glared at his back. Thou art a knave. That's nice. All she received was a half-hearted wave for her efforts. You're pretty, too. She hissed. Do not ignore me, you fiend. He still didn't answer her, of course, the absolute fiend. Instead he kept right on marching forcing her to follow him or risk being left behind left to fend for herself in her weakened state. As she was no, she knew such would be a death sentence. She was the mother of dragons, and yet in this current fleshy form, her own children scarcely knew her. They did not recognize their matriarch. To linger in her barrow now would surely spell her doom. They would have to fend for themselves for a time until she regained her strength. Her true form was large and powerful indeed, but she'd not moved for how long. Grayrol missed a step. The answer escaped her and the dragoness realized with a bleed of panic that she didn't couldn't recall how long. Many moons had passed since she first found herself entrapped by that wicked witch's rot. A very long time indeed, then. A cursed demigod. Her barrow had been both bountiful and peaceful before she came along. How many children did she lose when that foul flower first bloomed? How many eggs had perished and clutches hence more than she cared to count? Wretched Melania. She would suffer when they met again. In the meantime, she would follow this one. Like her kin Lanseeks before her, she would wear this human guise for a time, but only that. A short while, little more. She would stay with this one until her strength was recovered, and not a moment more. She would not be tricked. She would not be beguiled into falling for a mere mortal as her daughter had with that fool Vike. Feelings had led Lanseeks astray, as all humans oft did. Where had love led her nowhere? To madness and despair. She would not succumb to such. You know, if you keep glaring at me like that, you're gonna go blind. GRRRRT wasn't her fault she could not feel free without her wings and tail she dare not conjure them in this fleshy guise for fear of falling over outright. Merely holding this form at all threatened to exhaust her, but she would not consent to ride the fiend's horse. She was a proud warrior. She had no need of a some simple steed not she. Come on, now. Again his voice rose to mock her for her failure. You're falling behind. Keep up he clapped his hands. Chop, chop. A trickle of fire escaped her clenched teeth. Whose fault is that thy legs are too long thou walketh too fast. And you complain too much. Came the answering titter. Try smilling a little. Grayrol huffed. Who was he to talk to her as such she was the mother of dragons? He was just a squishy mortal. A mere tarnished. T was his fault she was in this mess and really, where was he leading her he didn't seem to know himself down. Down, down they went, deeper into the Caled wilds pausing at odd intervals, but never lingering in one place for long. More than once they stumbled upon embattled soldiers facing horrid abominations. The latter he put to the torch, the former he spared. Still he did not stop, even to bask in air thanks. After some time, his goal became apparent to her eyes, if only partially. He was in search of something, or perhaps someone though she knew neither what nor who. Why are we wandering, Lech eventually, she asked him. This pointless posturing avails you not. All right, I tried. Here at last, Naruto finally looked over his shoulder, betraying some irritation. Would you stop calling me a Lech I ain't done a thing to you? He squinted back at her, briefly resembling the mighty beast he housed within. If anything been perfectly pleasant. Grayrol's face flamed, even as her horns twitched. You saw every inch of mine body you touched. Lady, he countered, with all the exasperation of a parent explaining something to a small child, I got you out that rot. If not for me you'd still be lying there, wasting away. Cut me some slack. HMMPH slack, he said she crossed both arms before her bosom. I would have freed myself eventually. Oh is that so his tone told her she'd had blundered into an altogether trap, but she for the life of her, she couldn't see where. Well, if you say so. Was that his angle did he think to impress her with his prowess as dragons had before? I will not mate with thee, if that is thine desire. Wasn't asking you to his right eye began to twitch. You know, I thought a dragon turning into a human would be pretty cool and all, but you're starting to kill the appeal. Then seek Lanseeks if I offend you so. She bared her fangs in a sneer. But be warned, mine daughter is far less kind than I. It was not her kin's fault. Vike's descent into madness after touching the frenzied flame had left little Lanseeks quite distraught. Even now she sought a way to cure her beloved dragon knight. Silly girl. The only cure for the three fingers touch was death. Still a better fate than that of poor Fortisax. Naruto scoffed. If this is kind, I'd hate to see a pissed off dragon. He paused suddenly, touching a hand to his head. She frowned. Does something ail thee? Not you. He waved a hand half-heartedly her way. At this place. There's so much pain in this place. He touched a hand to his temple, gritting his teeth. So many emotions. Negativity in spaces. Those eyes drifted shut, paying her little head. Gotta fix this place. Have to fix it. Something twitched in the worm's heart. It felt like pity. You are but one man. You can only do so much. Have you not seen the clones I've been sending out? Mere copies. She'd seen one vanish with a single hit. They will avail thee not where are you looking now? Because his eyes had snapped open suddenly and his head whipped around, startling her terribly. 
but those wild blue orbs weren't fixed on her. They pivoted, regarding the distant spire of a crumbling church. Narrowed, then he was off, shooting forth like an arrow loosed from a bow. All that remained was a fading plume of dust. Grey Earl balked. Wait. She stumbled after him, cursing her human legs all the while. I say, wait. He kept running. Wait at once, blast thee. Zero, zero, zero. There was so much to fix here in the Kaled Wilds. Too much for one man, certainly. It would take in an army to undo the damage here. The longer Naruto wandered, the more certain he became of this immutable thought, and in time, thought became fact. And the more he wandered, the more clones he'd sent out, desperate to stem the sight of rot and all the pain he felt here. Kill the monsters, save the soldiers, fix what he could, smack down those who wouldn't listen. Unfortunately in doing so, he'd made a bit of a blunder one he'd realized too late to correct. With so many perspectives dozens, easily taking in so much as once, his mind was beginning to fray. He experienced it all, every moment of pain, every death, every twisted sight. Creating more to compensate for the deaths of the first wave only made it worse. Yet still he persisted. He had to. He must. If don't, who will? You need to stop. It's only been a day, and already you're reaching your limit. If you don't rest soon, you'll break. Oddly enough, he felt the ring on his finger pulse in agreement. Him fine. He slurred. Just a little longer. Lingrave might have had a rotten ruler in the form of Godric, but at least the landscape itself wasn't actively rotting. Not like this place. How could he rest when everything around him was suffering? His senses twisted again, pinpointing another pulse of pain. Numbly, he followed it. There, to the east, coming from that crumbling church on the hill. He sensed life, harmless human life, not mindless or mad like those wild beasts, nor those twisted knights shambling through the swamps, to cut him down like those soldiers, faint, flickering, fading, like a dying flame. Really, the wilds were the worst. Everything bar a certain surly dragon girl wanted to kill him. As he crept closer to the ruined stone edifice, he realized it wasn't quite as abandoned as he'd first surmised. Closer inspection revealed a pair of ghastly guards manning the entrance, spears in hand. They were even more monstrous than those giant hounds. A small sigh escaped him as he rolled up his sleeves. Blue eyes flashed gold. Well, he grumbled, at least they ain't ghosts. The pests did not die well. Zero, zero, zero. The rot burned. It vibrated in Millicent's veins, seethed in her soul, fouled her very flesh. Every breath was an agony, the very act of keeping her eyes open threatened to drain what little life she had left. Even her mind her last bastion of refuge was not spared. Whispers hunted her every waking moment like so many buzzing flies, stealing away even the petty semblance of peace that madness might offer. Truly, if there was suffering worse than this, she did not wish to experience it. Worse, she couldn't die, not truly. Not as she wished. The rot prevented even her own demise for now. It would not grant her the destined death she sought, no matter how much she wished for it. She could only lay and waste away. With each passing hour she felt herself slip further into the abyss. How it burned. How it stung. It would be so easy to give in to the whispers. To simply let the rot out and bloom and bloom until nothing remained. The cursed rot. Why did it have to be her what had she done to deserve this fate denied her even the memory of it? Was it not enough that she'd severed her own arm how much more would this foul taint take from her and why was it dark all of a sudden? Against her better judgment, Millicent looked up. Bright blue eyes beamed back at her, set within a whiskered face framed by unruly blonde hair. Those same cheeks dimpled in a sunny smile one that was decidedly offset by his haggard appearance. He I the young man chirruped happily. You all right, there. All right, her temper stirred and the rot in her rose with hit. All right, of course she wasn't. No, 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 don't take the bait. No doubt this was another figment of her adult imagination, another specter come to torment her for failures she could no longer remember. Had it chosen the guise of hope this time, she knew not this stranger. Millicent hung her head, lacking the energy to even shoo him away. Please, she croaked. Leave me me. You're just another hallucination. I shan't be tempted. She would not give in to the rot. She knew not why, only that she shouldn't. She mustn't. The tiny core that was her soul, which had forgotten so much, still remembered the warning she had given her, even now. Sweet though the whispers were, she knew she must never heed them. Do not bloom, little Millicent. You mustn't bloom. Nay, never bloom. Huh. A low chortle reached her ears, cutting into the memory. Hallucination that's a new one. Never been called that before. A spark of irritation seethed within the rot. With it, came a tiny surge of strength. What? Still here a weak growl tore free from her. Begone with you. You know, you're being pretty rude. Much to her chagrin, the hallucination knelt before her. I'm just trying to help. Did he not understand her lips curled in a pained grimace? I cannot be helped. He leaned back on his haunches. I disagree. Still he persisted she was not having this conversation. She would not speak to this golden ghost and yet he seemed determined to drag it from her regardless. Had she control of her legs, she would have simply walked away from him. As she was now, she could only turn her head to the side and sulk. Was this to be her end, then tormented by the madness? There you are. Now what? Millicent could no longer raise her head. That brief burst of strength had faded, taking what little she had left. But she heard the voice, saw the pair of pale, almost gray feet pad into her field of vision. Yet another figment of her imagination come home to roost he was a woman. And this one had left her ankles exposed. How unseemly. Oh, hey. Distantly, she heard the blonde specter speak. You caught up. 
Good. Think you can help me with this. The woman scoffed, sniffed, then recoiled with a yelp. Impossible. Her lower lip curled with disgust. She's infected by the rot. I would not touch her for all the gold in the lands between. I shan't be entrapped again. Millicent heard the man sigh. Gray. I shall not, she snapped. And neither should you keep away from her. Remarkably sensible, for a figment of her imagination, this. She's right. Leave me be. Nope. Two fingers flitted out to flick her forehead. Little more than a poke. And yet, Millicent jolted upright, gasping in surprise. Her body screamed in protest at the sudden movement, but she forced her eyes open once more, if only to regard the baffling blonde looming over her. A trembling hand rose to touch her forehead. Chesh felt that pain minor perhaps, but she'd felt him touch her. Hallucinations could not do such. You're real. No, it matters. Her foggy vision cleared, if only for a moment, to see them. If you are wise, you will leave immediately. The stump of her right arm pulsed painfully and she gripped it with a gasp, strangling a whimper of pain in her throat. My flesh rides with scarlet rot. It is more than a simple disease, it is a curse. Not to be meddled with by man. There, she'd set her peace. Real or not, this one would wish nothing to do with her now. To touch her would put him at risk of infection, agonizing sickness and finally, certain death. She tried to quell the tiny pang of sorrow that followed. It'd be nice to speak with someone, if only in passing. But it could never be. Only those putrid pests loved the rot. All else should give her a wide berth. She closed her eyes and let herself drift, certain that boorish blonde braggart would be well and truly gone when she opened them again. The woman gave an annoyed in response to a question Millicent hadn't heard. Do what you will. I'll have no part in this. The blonde laughed. Such a grumpy dragon. Mortal, I will bite thee. Promises, promises. Wait. Slim arms encircled Millicent's waist. Why was she moving rising into the air? Pushing away the cobwebs from her thoughts she forced her eyes open once more. The stranger had indeed walked away for all of an instant. With her eyes closed, she'd not seen him spin around, swept both arms under her ando, oh, dear. Millicent realized what must have transpired and squeaked a sharp and loudly like sound she had made only once before. See, she cried out why are you carrying me like some princess you'll be infected with the rot. Oh, is that what this is? His smile shone down at her, brighter than the earth tree itself. The rot in her tried to touch him and was summarily repelled. Eh, tickles, tickles. Did he have resistance to it no matter? It wouldn't last. It never did. Sometimes the rot took one swiftly. At other times, slowly. As it had her. In the end, his fate would be no different than those of the clean rot knights who had served Melania. Who was Melania? No, no focus. Leave go of me. She kicked out feebly against his chest, feeling ever bit a child. What are thou doing? This is no place to die. He looked down at her, heedless of the veins scrawling against his flesh. I'm taking you somewhere safe. A tiny, bitter laugh burst out of her. This is Caled. Tis not safe anywhere. She was not prepared for the growl that followed. Then I'll make it safe. Something in those words, nay, the noble presence behind them, stirred her spirit. A seed of something sprouted in her. Almost felt like hope. Even now she could feel the rot writhing in her, potent as ever. It wanted him to corrode and infect the stubborn young man who even now held her. It sought him as it had sought all others around, seeking another victim, a second means of infection. Tethers of death and dismay tried to coil around him as they had all before dot dot and yet still he stood tall. Don't worry. Mistaking her silence for confusion, the whiskered warrior touched her forehead with his chin. If I can grow back an eye, I'm pretty sure I can do the same for an arm maybe. Hope flowered in Millicent's heart and withered thrice as fast. What madness did he speak of? One could not simply restore an arm, not even the sorcerers of the academy. Maybe he was a hallucination after all this could merely be a mad fever dream brought on by the rot. Growing back an arm only a fool would say such. A fool among fools indeed, the greatest fool of them all. The dragon woman snorted behind him. Foolish boy. Naruto clicked his tongue at her. Angsty dragon. Though stand in the corner if you're gonna keep bitching at me. The ghost of a smile touched Millicent's lips despite herself. So he had a bit of spine after all. You dare. Dare he did indeed because he laughed and laid Millicent down against a nearby headstone. She scarcely had the strength to squint when his body blazed gold. A pitiful noise escaped her lips as she averted her eyes. So bright if he'd shimmered before, then now he was well and truly the sun. Merely laying in his presence made her aching body feel warm. As she squinted on, the blonde rubbed his palms together. Might want to clench your teeth, miss. Millicent. She whimpered, dreading what was to come. My name is Millicent. Naruto. Nice to meet you. Think happy thoughts. She bridled but a little as the whiskered one laid his right hand on her shoulder, lacking the strength to do anything else. Her spirit stilled as he reached out with the other to grip her remaining hand. Rough fingers worn by war threaded against hers, bringing a faint flush to her pale face. My, to touch her twice now without even commencing courtship. How very vulgar. He'd not even written her a single letter. Terribly forward. I do not see the point in the he eyes. Her words peeked into a wild bleed of pain as the mangled stump of her shoulder burned with unseen heat. Something flowed down her ruined arm, burning hotter than the rot ever had. Her back arched, lips parting in a wordless scream. Every cell in her body burned in moments she found herself doubling over, weeping, wailing, eyes burning with tears. Stop, she gasped out. It hurts, I beg of thee, cease, please. 
He listened at once, bless his simple soul, leaving her wasted and gasping for air. Something's resisting me. That tan face stood creased in a scowl. Probably that rough thing you're talking about. Still, it worked a little. Millicent looked down and balked. There was a stub there, half her arm jutting out through her tied and tattered sleeve, just short of her elbow. Her eyes bulged. What are you? Someone who wants to help you. His smile was telling. Does it matter? She opened her mouth to argue, then deferred. No, I suppose not. On a whim, she made a reckless decision. Her days were numbered. She would rather die a warrior than a worthless wretch. She had been a warrior once. She was certain of that. She remembered the grief she'd felt as she severed her sword arm, that vain attempt to stop the rot in its early days, before her sisters cast her aside. This was a chance she would not let slip by. Finish it. She rasped. His brow shot up. You sure it's gonna hurt? Please, I beg of thee. Let me die as I lived. She raised her gaze, hoping to convey her intent with a steady look as much as words. With both arms, all right, but nobody's gonna die on my watch. She watched him like a hawk as he rubbed his palms together. That odd mark on his right hand seemed to shimmer softly in the low light. This time she thought herself ready for it. She was not. He laid both hands on her, exhaled softly, spoke something under his breath and then. Pain, Millicent cried out, gritting her teeth as bone and sinew erupted from the fouled flesh of her arm. A far cry from before perhaps, but pain nevertheless. She gripped at him with her good hand. Sorry she heard him mutter over her cries. Just hang on a little longer I've almost got it there. Sobbing, hiccuping, she pushed against him, instinctively seeking comfort. He held her, patted her head, hummed a little, and finally it was done. Naruto laid her down to rest upon a softer patch of ground, and it was then that she saw it, felt it, sensed it. Bleary eyes blinked, gazing upon the pale expanse of her new limb. It twitched and trembled, fitfully at first as she exerted her will upon it. Move. It had to move. This would all be for nothing if she couldn't make it move. Tremulous fingers curled into a fist. Millicent released a breath she hadn't realized she'd been holding. Just like that, he'd regrown her lost limb. A healthy arm, free of the rigorous rot that had once pervaded it but not for long. Even now it ached and itched as the foul disease sought to eat away at it once again. Her spirits fell at the sensation. She'd feared as much. The reprieve he'd granted her was temporary at best. You have my thanks, but the rot still rides within me. I beg you, keep your distance. I ain't done yet. What I beg your pardon, good sir. Blinking through teary eyes her gaze fixed on his chest, noting the faint shimmer beneath his ratted jacket. Her mouth went dry as she sensed the faint pulse of power within. The ghost of an old memory stirred within her indistinct, faded by time, but prevalent nonetheless. She'd seen such a thing once before. But where? Hissed that a great rune. Yup. He smacked his lips and made her comfortable once more. Got it from a guy named Godric. Godric the Grafed. Memories came rushing back. He'd slain him, them. No mere tarnish was this. Perhaps this was the one. The one to be accepted by the Ur tree Destined to restore the broken Elden Ring, to make what was once fractured whole again. She looked up at him, and for a moment, she saw something in him. A glimpse of the future that might yet come to pass. Long live the new Elden Lord. All right, her savior hummed, now that we've got your arm sorted, let me try a different approach this time. Millicent betrayed herself with a whimper. I'm not ready. The knight, for Millicent could see this proud, stubborn sod as nothing less, seemed to take offense at that. Don't worry, it won't hurt this time. He hooked a finger in hers. Promise. Truly her voice hitched. The look he gave her was pure steel. I'm gonna fix your everything. Millicent shook her head. She could just imagine him, running about trying to help everyone. It was admirable and unbearably naive. She would appreciate the return of her arm, short-lived though her life was. T was a boon she'd not thought to hope for, but he'd granted it to her. To hope for anything else would surely be folly. Wouldn't it? You've done enough. He scoffed. Who decided that? No, wait I haven't prepared my alpha she bit her fist to stifle a gasp. Oh, rather than set to work on her arm and regrow the severed stump as he'd tried before, he went to do the work on the rest of her. Starting with her chest, she tensed at once, expecting pain. There was none. By contrast this was warm. It felt quite nice actually. Very nice. Her body bucked and her arms betrayed her, hooking behind his neck. As if she'd been placed in a warm bath and left to simmer, so too did she feel the aches and pains of her body melt away. Little mewling gasps fled from her lips as she buckled against him, head buried into his shoulder holding on for fear life. Warm. So very warm. She could feel that strange energy of his working its way through her, flowing like a warm river. To let go now was to drown. Little fireworks burst beneath her skin, ripping the rot asunder faster than it regenerate. Beating it back, tamping it down, containing it, sealing it. You have to make those sounds she looked up to find his face gone red, red as her hair. It's kinda distracting. Forgive me I or another moan escaped her as her head tilted back. I can't stop. It was as if he were bringing back every sensation she'd ever lost all at once every feeling that had been dulled and blunted by the rot. In her fevered state, it proved too much. Far, far too much. She tried to endure, to keep her self-consciousness as that strange red energy hammered its way into her, but she just couldn't. She hit her breaking point and plummeted over the edge with a sharp cry. Utter sensory overload, complete and total. Millicent couldn't take it any longer. Shamefully, she passed out before Naruto could finish mending her body. And everything changed. Hey, and then there we be. Have we rediscovered best girl I'll let you decide. 
Well, did you like this story? Yes, no, maybe speak out, make yourselves heard, your voice matters. Once more, we're sticking with the Ember's rule for this story. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs during the holidays so I barely have time to write as such. I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up your voice matters, make yourself heard as ever. Reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review, wouldst thou kindly, and have some previews. Some are quite off, but still. Previews. Thank you. A thousand times, thank you. Arena squeaked. My eyes. Leitna raised her head where she lay, scarcely able to move. Who are you have you come to kill me? Her wolf growled. Even on death's door, it shifted its great bulk to defend its mistress. Naruto kept his hands up. Hey I come in peace. You truly are mad how I think I might like you. He took one look at the massacre in the courtyard. So many bodies. And those beasts. Nope. High axe swung out, bisecting a cruel creature like wheat from so much chaff. No mercy. Killing you all with fire. Maybe oaths don't mean much to you, but where I'm from, we keep our promises. Grumbling to himself, he stomped forward into the marsh. Can't fix this world she says we'll see about that. Huh. Neat little thing. And you call this a talisman here you go. Why give this to me? Don't need it. Fire splashed harmlessly off him. Huh. He blinked, gazing at his golden hands. Apparently, I'm fireproof. Lucky me, unlucky you. He blurred. You. A golden finger stabbed up into Gideon's helm. I don't like your methods. Explain yourself. Give me a good smack from behind with something heavy. Then I'll pop right out. A bead of confused sweat ran down Naruto's brow. Oi, oi, oi. Hey, oi, big guy down here. The fire giant leaned down, squinting at the golden speck. Imagine his surprise then, when said. Speck waved a hand up at him. Wanna be friends? You are a good man, Rockweller. I do not deny this. But this land has been the ruin of many good men. Godwin the Golden. General Radon. Nequella the Unalloyed. Know you these names demigods all they were, each fair of heart and kind of soul. Each of them thought to change the world. Each of them raged against what they saw as injustice. Now they all suffer a fate worse than destined death. What will yours be, I wonder? A dragon, looking to the future. Though she still slumber. Looks like it. Let me check. At Grayrol's prodding, Naruto crept over to Millicent where she lay against Torrent's saddlebags. She dozed on, blissfully unaware of his presence. He pressed a finger into the slumbering woman's pale cheek. The redhead made a tiny noise of protest and batted ineffectually at his hand to no avail. On a whim he jabbed her again, to which she wrinkled her nose, with a whine, but didn't wake. Adorable. The thought didn't feel odd to him in the least. She looked more at peace now than she'd ever been. Good for her. She deserved some rest. If Torrent at all minded the extra weight, he wasn't complaining. Quite the contrary. He seemed rather content to canter about at a leisurely peace behind them, well away from the monsters of Caled. A few sweet raisins had done wonders to settle his nerves amidst the giant beasts, and he'd been sure to ply Melina's friend with them since. It was the least he could do. He didn't know the first thing about horseback riding, but that was no reason not to make use of Torrent, no. Good boy, he murmured, stroking the horned horse's head. You're doing great. Let me know if she wakes up, eh? His faithful steed nosed his hand and snorted once. Naruto beamed. I'll take that as a yes. Grayrol made an irritated noise. She'd been sullen ever since he put her in the corner. Do all humans sleep this long? They do when they're exhausted. He glanced. Her way with a quelling look. Be nice. She's been out. An entire day now, the poor thing. Probably gonna be starving when she wakes up. That was putting it lightly. He'd managed to burn most of the rot as Millicent called it, out her system. What traces remained wouldn't do her any lasting harm so long as he kept an eye on her. If her condition worsened again, he'd just have to repeat the process. Right, a cheeky little voice muttered in the back of his head, the process. Let's call it that. Definitely didn't do anything lewd. Her flushed face as she writhed in his lap, back arching, tiny cries escaping her lips could don't go there. Unbidden, his gaze sought Grayrol once more. You've been awfully quiet since yesterday. She looked away, folding both arms before her bosom. I have nothing to say. Not gonna call me a lech again. Her shoulders twitched. No, not even a knave. Nay, you really that afraid of me he wriggled his fingers. At her as Juria had once done to him long ago. Or maybe it's my hands. She bared her fangs in turn. Keep thy plams to thine self I need no healing. Oh, that was it. He bit down on the laughter that threatened to bubble youp. It was a just a joke, oi. An uncomfortable silence stretched between the two of them as they trudged deeper into the depths. No soldiers barred their path. No monsters emerged to devour them whole. It was almost enough to make a man hope it was. But he knew better. He hadn't cleared out Caled, he'd only beaten back the tide. The rot would return and birth more abominations. He'd fight them all with his clones. But how did one cure the land for all his strength and skill? Naruto didn't know how. Healing a person was one thing, but this was half a continent. Millicent's rot had fought him every step of the way, doing the same with the land itself. Why did you do it? And he blinked, nonplussed at Grayroll's sudden inquiry. Didn't quite catch that. You went to such lengths to help her, a perfect stranger. Those cat-like eyes glared at him beneath her bangs. You even risked infection with her rot. Naruto stood his ground and set his jaw, not liking her tone. What of it? Her eyes flashed. 
I would know why, Rockweller. They got a blink out of him. Rot what no, Rockweller, the mother of dragons repeated plainly. In my tongue it would mean, he who quells the rot. Once I could have dismissed as a fluke, but twice she sniffed. You have a gift. That girl didn't have much time left. Her organs were breaking down. If not for thee, she'd be a puddle of scarlet rot by now. A shiver stole over him. Had he really cut it that close? I don't need a reason to help people. Her slitted eyes narrowed. You have no ulterior motives, none at all you could leverage your aid over the female, make her your concubine. Your slave. She seems the sort to honor her debts, to the exclusion of all else. Most would use it against her. Why would? I do that. Slim shoulders rose and fell in a shrug. It is the way of these lands. Always has been. Naruto clicked his tongue and swallowed his gorge. If you need a reason to help someone who's hurting, there's something wrong with you. You're a noble sort. Like the general. Admirable but misguided. Her gaze flitted out to a castle in the distance, and the dunes of sand beyond. This world will eat you alive if you let it. Best harden yourself while you can, before it's too late. He grinned right back, all steely determination. It can try. It will not try. It will succeed. She yanked on Torrent's reins and the somberness of her tone stuck with him. The lands between has seen the death of many men like you. As he looked on she began to count off the fingers of a pale. Hand. Godwin the Golden. General Radon. Miquel of the Unalloyed. Demigods all, greater than thee to be sure, and where did they end up she? Snapped her fingers. Dead. Ruined. Vanished to parts unknown. But you. Her eyes held his over the fire. Paused. Considered. Who are you really? Naruto didn't like those eyes. They saw too much. Just a normal guy. Nay, I think not, because you are not. She tilted her head to regard him further. Sniffed once. Frowned. You aren't from these lands. Another quick inhalation. Tasting the air, or perhaps his scent. Naruto wasn't sure he liked either notion. There. I thought as much. Her lips pursed into a thin line. Thou art a demigod, then. I should have known. The arrogance of thy kind knows no bounds. Those words stung from some reason, like the buzzing of a dozen flies. Him a god just the thought of it made him feel sour. He wasn't a god. Not by a long shot, no, anything but that. He had scraped and spat and snarled for everything he had. His strength was the product of hard work and little else. Besides, what kind of god let people like Neji and Abido die if he were truly a god? He could have saved everyone in the fourth Shinobi War. But hadn't, had he? No. He shook his head slowly, bang swaying. I'm no god. You are a demigod. Grayrol's level gaze met his own across the flames. No hint of that flustered dragon here, her calm was ice cold, colder than one of Haku's jetsu. Not one of Marika's or Radigan's whelps, but a demigod nonetheless. I can see it now. Thou art descended from one, thy blood diluted perhaps, but no less potent. You hold the spark of divinity within you. Thy kind comes from greatness. Is she talking about Asura or old man sage? Could be. Hirama creaked on eye open within his mind. We know you're a distant descendant of them. Technically speaking, given your feats. No, no, no don't you dare. You could be considered a demigod, too. Sorry, kid. Truth's the truth. Truth, he said. Naruto scoffed. Truth was in the eye of the beholder. He was no demigod. In his mind, he never would be. Yet for all your strength, Grayroll went on in spite of his sulking, you cannot save everyone. Let alone this rotten land. The rot you see before you hails from a goddess, not unlike Marika. She will not be so easily bested. Doesn't mean I won't try. Somebody's gotta stop it. Queen Marika, perhaps. Another shrug was his reward. She hasn't been seen for an age. She's likely dead. Her mouth curled in a bit of draconic derision. Or perhaps she fled these lands once they fell to ruin. Those of the Newman line have ever been cowards and cravens. She and her children with few exceptions had proven themselves the same. The ring on Naruto's finger pricked him most painfully. Oh blasted thing. You say that like you know, you know. Come, let us speak of the past a while. Folding both legs beneath her, Grayrol did just that, forcing him to do the same or leave her behind. What do you know of this land's history? His brow furrowed. Less than I should. Understandable. A pale hand pushed a ringlet of pear hair from her eyes. You are not from this realm. She turned head toward the ruined remnants of a tree and spat, setting it ablaze to provide them some meager warmth. Allow me to summarize for your sake, then. Those bewitching orbs swung back to him, held him, as her voice dipped lower. In the time before the Elden Ring and the Ur tree, T was a different age. An age of giants, of beasts, of dragons. He listened, wrapped with attention as Grayrol wove her tale. Then came Marika and in her precious golden order. Venom crept into the story, tainting it. The usurped Lord Placidusex drove the dragons away and slew the giants. And for what she turned her head and spat. Look what has become of them now such as the folly of mankind. Right, because she wasn't biased about this at all. You feel strongly about this, huh? Placidusex was as akin to my ancestor. She pulled a face. In your terms, he would be my great-great-great-grandfather. Under his reign, the age of dragons was a blessed one. I remember it well. A time where strength ruled, where death was not fettered by small-minded souls. A rare bite of longing gnawed at her words, her gaze gone wistful as she turned an eye to the sky. Might made right in those days. None of this endless dickering about that thy kind seemed to favor so. You would have fared well in such an age. Maybe. Naruto found he disagreed. You're saying the strong ruled. But what happened to the weak? The silence proved telling. Almost damnably so. Doesn't sound like an ear I'd enjoy. Fair. 
Concern flashed across her face as she mistook his tone for something else. You are tired. I did not intend to keep you. She stood sharply, stiffly, stretching her limbs. Enough of my strength has returned, and he knew the lie at once. We shall go our separate ways tomorrow. So soon, indeed, was that a flicker of hesitation he felt just now surely it was his imagination. I have responsibilities to which I must attend. Naruto blew out a sigh. He thought he would have been happy to be rid of this grumpy dragon girl. Not long ago, he might have, but he'd seen a different side of her. It was starting to grow on him. She might be wild and flighty, but there was wisdom beneath the anger and arrogance, a tired soul that he couldn't help but empathize with. Now if only she'd stop being so damn grumpy. His sixth sense shrilled a warning as something approached their campfire. Hey, ah, boss a familiar voice one of his clones called out to him as the figure stepped into view. We may yet have a problem. Scree. A piercing screech split the air from the main road. The Roto craned his neck back. Do I want to know what that was? Grey Earl's head whipped around, eyes wide as dinner plates. That can't be. Millicent whimpered wordlessly in her deep sleep. It almost sounded like an apology. Zero, zero, zero. Rot. His wings ached. His scales screamed. Even his very breath was fouled. He had only one recourse for his torment. And so he screamed. Zero, zero, zero. My baby. How is that a child? It was another dragon, of course. Naruto nearly did a double take as he beheld the braying beast in the distance. Even from here he could see the dragon wasn't well. Patches of ghastly white limbed its already pale body, further blighting what he could only assume was scarlet rot. Far smaller than Grey Rolls to be sure, but no less dangerous. As he looked on it shrieked at a twisted dog that had come too close to its hideaway. The hound vanished in a cloud of rot and succumbed instantly. What remained was snapped up by the dragon's jaws and devoured post-haste. Hirama made a squelching noise. Well, that's unsanitary. Naruto's clone scratched the back of its head. We kinda stumbled onto him and woke him up. He's been rampaging ever since. Rampage was a tame word. The dragon was biting rocks, now. Grey Roll had a far less pleasant reaction. That is Ekus. She explained hastily as they gazed upon the rotten creature. One of mine children. The youngest. A naked longing lurked in her voice. I did not know he suffered so her eyes all but snapped to his. Phew, she swallowed on her pride, nearly choked on it, then mastered herself. You will help him, won't you, Rockweller, that's what you do. Help people. Naruto's brow rocketed. Into his hair. My, my. How quickly the tables had turned. Was it wrong that he felt just a little smug, now just a bit. Thought you didn't want me doing that. He planted his feet. You just said so. I grey Earl whined and took a moment to comport herself. He is my kin. He suffers. Surely you won't leave him like this. A golden eyebrow climbed higher. She squirmed like a naughty child under his gaze. You sure that's it? He leave it to the clone to speak his mind. Don't think the boss can handle many more dragon girls, not if they're anything like you. Grey Earl smacked the clone in the stomach and dispelled it. He cannot change his shape she slashed clawed fingers through the smoke as the has faded. Such as a skill gained over a great many years, years he doesn't have, will not have, if you don't do something. Kirama, don't look at me. If you want to wrestle with a dragon, that's your business. Help my son, I beg of thee. Before he cold think to stop her, Grey Earl prostrated herself before him, physically kneeling and all but pressing her face into the rot rewind earth. I'll give you whatever you want mine mine my body please I'll bear your children whatever you desire. Oi you're taking this way too far get up come on, up stand up damn it you're embarrassing me. Grey Earl didn't budge, not an inch, she only made a pitiful noise, it sounded like a sob. How could he ignore emotions like that she was just too damn honest. I was already gonna help, jeez don't beg. Naruto stalked down the rise. Zero zero zero. Ekis swirled as a shadow fell over his bulk. Rotted though he was, the dragon's instincts remained. Intruder trespass a rip and tear bit and scream kill and kill and. Maddened eyes looked up, gazed into the peerless golden slits of a furious fox. Be a good boy and hold still or else. The dragon whimpered. Zero, zero, zero. Melina found them the next morning. Naruto sensed the maiden before he saw her, felt her coming as he picked at the dying embers of their campsite. In truth, he was amazed it had taken her this long at all. He'd half expected Melina to hunt him down like a stag, drag his sorry hide back to the round table, and give him a telling off besides. But Nathai's time her arrival proved a silent one, wholly absent of the previous pomp and circumstance she'd used to get his attention that fateful day. Hey. He pushed himself up off his haunches, dusted off his tattered trousers, and turned to face her. Long time no see. A suit of armor smacked into his chest. Naruto caught it with both hands, then frowned once he realized exactly what he was holding. He, recognizing the draconic scales at once, they were the same color as the carcass he'd hauled to the round table only a few days ago. Light armor, drake scale, a bright burgundy shade fitted with amber pauldrons and greaves tapering off into intricate metalwork he had no hope of describing. And so he didn't bother. Never in his life had he worn armor, but Thiesh didn't have words. Master Hug finished it just this morning. He knew at once by her words that Melina was terribly cross with him, or maybe that was her index finger currently digging into his ribcage. I'll not have you wandering about the lands between looking like some wastrel. Kurama offered a low whistle. If this is what he can do with subpar materials well, I wonder what else he's capable of. Naruto cradled his prize close to his chest. 
that your way of saying you missed me. Melina's face closed down at once. No, her emotions said otherwise. Awa, you did miss Mao Awa's laughter peeked into a yelp when she kicked his shin. All right, all right, thanks for the armor. I'll give Hugh my regards when I get back. Naruto let it be, but paused just short of donning it. A quick glance confirmed no one save Melina was looking his way. Not yet. That could soon change. Rayrol might not appreciate him wearing armor like this. Could be one of her kids. She might even take offense. It wouldn't stop him of course, but still. Tis all one and the same to me. He heard her voice rise near the fire. That armor is yours by right of conquest. Besides, that's not one of mine. The blonde released a breath he hadn't realized he was holding. Great I'll put it on right away looks easy enough. Melina made a garbled noise and looked away as he doffed his ruined clothing. Naruto kept an eye on her all the while. Her gaze traveled to Millicent's prone form, sprawled sleepily atop a crude bed fashioned from Torrent's saddlebags. Her eyes traveled yet further and alighted upon the restored Ekisks, slumbering peacefully not a yard away from the spectral steed itself. Her right eye began to twitch. By the time it settled upon Greyroll, gnawing happily on a haunch of meat, Melina looked like she was about to have a stroke. No shortage of companions, as ever. She clicked her tongue. I don't know why I'm surprised. You truly are an odd sort. To be fair, I kinda stumbled into them. Truly she almost looked back, flushed, then thought better of it. You have the devil's own luck, tarnished. No. Nah. He stumbled, then stomped his way into a boot. The fit was perfect. Hugh knew his stuff. I'm just a simple man, making my way in the world. That, or a fool. Rayrol had held her tongue for the last minute or so, staring over long at Melina. No longer. You overreach yourself, kindling maiden. Now she granted her a small, subtle smile. Whatever would your mother say? Melina's face drained of all color. How do you? My eyes see much. The mother of dragons made a show of digging a bit of dirt out her nails. It is allowed to me by Lord Placidusex. Naruto quirked a brow. There was something about that word. Kindling. Melina pivoted so quickly she damn near blurred. And nothing to concern yourself with. Why was she panicking something had her spooked? But what dunno? Sounds pretty important to me. Forget what's thou heard her good eye flashed. Forget. Had he heard those words somewhere before she spoke just a bit took quickly for his liking, her voice breaking on the last word. He could have pressed her for details, pushed the envelope further. He was well within his rights, easily within his power, too. Melina could hardly stop him if he tried to wring answers out of her. And yet something in her pleading expression held him back. Pressing her now might lead to something he wouldn't be able to take back. Fine. With a weary sigh relented. Look, if I worried, yeah, I'm sorry. He laid a hand on his shoulder. But I've got work to do here. I am aware. Tis why I have come. She pounced on his words, setting another alarm wailing in the back of his head. There is a great rune nearby, a powerful one at that. Stepping back but a little, she tugged herself from his grasp, but her eye never left his. Not once. I thought you might wish to seek it. Clever girl. Naruto perked up regardless. Is that so? Indeed. The maiden managed a smile. T would be better to have it in your possession, would it not? All right. Even he could see through Melina's machinations here. She was clearly trying to push him after this raid on fellow, urging him onto another great rune. But why what interest did she have in collecting them it didn't make a lick if she intend to use them no, there wasn't event the slightest hint of greed or avarice about her. She didn't seem to have any desire for such. So why? Does it matter our goals align for now? Rayro clicked her tongue, drawing him back to the present. Do not try to manipulate him, kindling woman. It won't end well for you. I have no desire to manipulate him. Melina drew herself upright with a huff. We have an accord. Nothing more. Enough. Speak plainly, or I will plainly separate thine head from thy shoulders. Naruto coughed into a fist. Well, that's one way to motivate her. Melina ducked her head, swallowed once, then nodded. When next she spoke her voice was terribly soft. The rune is held by General Radon. A. N. Here comes Radon or should I say the Radon Battle Royale. One of the best damn boss battles of my life. Wish I could relive it for the first time again. Time, and the next chapter will tell his fate. A massive chunk of it's gonna be dedicated to him. After all, he's by far my favorite demigod. Well did you like this story? Yes, no, maybe speak out, make yourselves heard, your voice matters. Once more, we're sticking with the Ember's rule for this story. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs during the holiday so I barely have time to write. As such, I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up your voice matters, make yourself heard as ever. Reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. So in the immortal words of Atlas. Review, wouldst thou kindly. And have some previews. Some are quite off, but still. Previews. Millicent climbed to her feet. I will aid you. You sure you just woke up and all? I will. Aid you. Don't discard me, her expression seemed to say. Don't cast me aside. Let me be of use to you. Please. I can't bear it. Bushy redheads. Fine, fine but stay close. I mean it. Millicent ducked her head a lit and nodded. As my lord wills. Hey lord he poked himself in the chest. 
Me. Champions welcome, the stars have aligned, the festival is nigh General Radon, mightiest demigod of the Shattering. Awaits you champions, prepare for battle, defeat the general, claim glory, and grab that great rune a celebration of war, the Radon Festival. Naruto blinked. That is a big dog. Half wolf, actually. He talks. A familiar grunt was his only warning. Then she was upon him. Trish don't even think about. The tree sentinel picked him up again, checking him for wounds. Hey not in front of my friends. Stop spamming those arrows. You cannot heal him. Melina appeared at his side in a shower of blue light as he dusted himself off. He's rotted, inside and out. It won't work. Wouldn't know until he tried. Time to put on an act to end all acts, something he hadn't done since he was a boy. She saw the look in his eye. Tarnished? No. Don't you dare. I will be terribly cross with you if... Too late. R.A.D.A.H. and Naruto stepped forward spread his arms wide, voice echoing across the wailing dunes. I came here to face a champion I am still waiting still grinning. He turned around, bent over, and slapped his flank. Come and get me unless you're afraid. A moment of awful silence followed. And then, the world shook with an answering roar. Someone whistled behind him. Big brass balls on this one. Trish ducked behind her shield, ready to weather the storm. Radon rounded on her with a roaringly for his blade to smack into an open palm. The mad demigod made a noise of confusion. Grayrel grinned, exposing rows of razor-sharp teeth in a wild leer. Come, scales sprouted from her flesh. Face a dragon. Naruto swore softly as Radon shuddered to a stop atop his tiny, aging mount. What's he doing? A low growl seemed to rattle the dunes, no, the very air itself. Radon was still snarling when he leaped into the air. Wait, where did highs that a meteor? Right, that settles it. I need a break from Caled. Too much rot I've got no idea how to deal with it will have to come back here later. A hand rose. I believe Lingrave's nice this time of year. Works for me still got some business there. Melina flung up her arms. Foolish tarnished. Still he was her tarnished. Where he went, she would follow for now. I don't think I can do it. It's such a long way to jump. Always is. When it matters, it always will be. You just need a running start. A wise being. Festival of War. Millicent was awake. Naruto noticed at once, if only because he'd been keeping an eye on her as they neared the castle. It wasn't out of distrust, but rather, concern. For reasons he couldn't quite comprehend, Melina didn't seem much fond of the Anseratan girl. Indeed, she went well out of her way to avoid any and all mention of their resident redhead. Almost as if she knew her. Wouldn't even walk near her at that. He sensed a story lurking there, but now wasn't the time for such things. Please, water. Definitely thoughts for later, because once Millicent stirred atop torrents and began begging for a drink, he couldn't help himself. He hastened to her side, canteen in hand, even gave her what remained of his field rations to chase down the lukewarm liquid as best he could. She ate sparingly, not once protesting, even when he helped her out the saddle and lowered her to the dirt. No surprise there. Poor thing must have been exhausted. Not so exhausted to ignore him however, the second he set her down she raised her gaze, golden eyes pinning him. He quelled the scarlet rot. More or less, Naruto quirked a brow. Good afternoon to you, too. When the recovering redhead sputtered to that effect, he craned his neck back, searching for another maiden. Hey, Melina, any chance you could get me a... She was already gone, vanishing back into the ether from whence she'd come. He clicked his tongue and glared at the fading motes of light. Sheesh, who put a bee in her bonnet. She's awake, then Grayrol made a tutting noise behind him. Good, I shall scout ahead and inspect this fortress while she gets her bearings. A rueful chuckle escaped him. Pretty sure Melina called it a castle. She shrugged. Tis all one and the same to me. And if the gate ain't open. Her eyes flashed, cat-like slits narrowing in draconic glee. Then I shall knock it down. Come exikes, let them have their moment. Having said her piece, the mother of dragons sashayed off, leaving her looming son to lumber after her apace. Hexyx paused a moment to regard Millicent with a giant eye. Abruptly it leaned forward and gave her a soft nudge with its snout. Soft for a dragon, that is. Millicent squeaked and nearly fell over. Naruto barked a laugh and kept her upright. Don't mind him. He's a friendly fellow once you get to know him. This is friendly. Sure is. He ran a hand over the young dragon's mending scales then gave it a nudging, sending the massive beast stomping after its mother. See he's a good boy. I beg you forgiveness. Millicent's face flushed at the last as it plodded away. My apologies for fainting before I could thank you. It's just as you said. The rotita has ceased to writhe. She reached up to grip her restored arm, seemed shocked to remember it was still there, then comported herself enough to continue. I may not understand it, but all the voices in my head are silent. Even the nightmares have abated. A fresh spot of color hit her cheeks and S.H. ducked her head anew. I slept like a babe. I'll say a laugh burst from his lips. You were out for a while. Once again, her pale visage darkened with color. A thousand apologies. Don't be embarrassed, it's fine. He patted her head without thinking, heedless of the curious noise she made. How are you feeling? Better. She frowned but a little when his palm pulled away. Though I can scarcely believe it, I can move as I please. She rubbed her wrist again, doubtless to make certain it was still there. It is all thanks to you. With that adoration in her eyes Naruto wasn't sure how to feel about that. The young warrior clearly respected his efforts, but he still couldn't bring himself to look her in the eye and meet the awe there. It wasn't as if he'd done anything particularly noteworthy. Anybody would have done the same. No. She shook her head, red locks swaying. You saved me. I will not forget that, so long as I live. 
She frowned when several strands of hair tickled her nose. Could you perhaps? Sure. With deft movements and a bit of cord, he held her bind her hair back into a loose bun. My thanks. With her crimson locks out of the way, she looked even more human than before. I'll never be able to repay you at this rate. No problem. Just be careful and try to avoid any sudden moves. He almost didn't want to say it, but he had to warn her all the same. I'm not sure if I got all that crap out. Millicent gasped and glared at her arm as though it had betrayed her. For a wild moment she looked as though she might cut it off again. The rot still remains within me even now. Only a little. He made a pinching motion with his thumb and forefinger to reassure her. If it comes back, I'll wipe it out, same as before. Her face lit up, and not for the reasons one might expect. Oh, she squirmed beneath his gaze, knees twisting in thinly veiled agitation. I see so you'll do that again. Naruto sputtered at the memory. If I have to, Millicent didn't make a sound. Her flustered expression spoke for her. Silence reigned anew. Surprisingly, it was the redhead who finally usurped it. There is no way I could ever truly repay you, but, a hand dipped into the pouch at her side, I would like you to have this, by way of thanks. Out came her hand, clutching a golden medallion in her palm. A mere trifle it might be but it would mean the world to me if you were to take it. Trembling fingers pushed it into his own. Consider it a token of my appreciation. On a whim, Naruto reached for it. Just holding it made him feel stronger. Strength he didn't necessarily need. What was the point in having more power? Without so much as a second thought, he pushed it back into her hands. You keep it. Millicent flinched. I beg your pardon. You need it more than me. His fingers closed around hers, forcing her to hold fast to the medallion. I'm tough enough without it. She tried to give it to him still, but he wouldn't have. It, I really don't need. Yes, you, do. He stepped back and crossed both arms before his armored chest to rebuff her attempts entirely. You're still recovering, and I ain't gonna take away something that will help you. A grimace stole over his face as he remembered just where they were headed today. You'll probably need it in the days ahead. That spurred a different reaction in the recovering redhead. You sound as if you're marching to your death. Her lips pursed into a thin line when he didn't deny the possibility. Just who do you intend to face here? Naruto told her in no uncertain terms. Why not he gained nothing from refraining and everything for being honest? Unfortunately, said honesty immediately sent Millicent spiraling down into a right and proper panic. You wish to fight General Raid on something sparked in those rotten golden eyes. Alone. Probably not if Greyroll has anything to say about it, but I will if I gotta. Millicent climbed unsteadily to her feet. Allow me to aid you, then. Yeah, no. He shook his head. You just woke up in all. Her eyes met his. I will. Aid you. Don't discard me, her expression seemed to say. Don't cast me aside. Let me be of use to you. Please. I can't bear it. Naruto pinched the bridge of his nose. Pushy redheads. Hirama was of no help at all whatsoever here. He wanted nothing to do with this and thus chose to stay silent. Which in turn left the onus of choice with him. He could hardly afford to turn Millicent out into the wilds as she was now. She might catch the rod a second time and then where would he be? No, he couldn't turn her away. She'd probably follow him in any case. She seemed the sort for it. He stepped to her and grabbed her by the shoulder, sending another pulse of chakra through her body to strengthen her further. Millicent jumped with a yelp, one that was overshadowed by his words. Fine, you win but stay close. I mean it. She ducked her head a touch and nodded. As my lord wills. Hey Lord Naruto poked himself in the chest. Me. That is what you are. The fervent belief in her words, the gleam in her eyes, startled him more than anything else he'd seen in this world. Only a lord would go so far as to help a perfect stranger, let alone convince an eclectic band of such as this to work together in pursuit of a common goal. And you bear a great rune, do you not? He touched a hand to his chest, where Godric's rune even now pulsed with life. Well, you're not wrong on that front. Do you perhaps have a weapon I could use? She pressed her advantage before he could think to challenge her other account. I would prefer a longsword or a katana, if you have such. Didn't he have one of those Naruto turned, regarding the bundle on Torrent's bag? He'd scrounged through a few of the battlefields they'd passed, leaving his steed's saddlebags full to bursting. She didn't seem the sort for a great sword, and a short sword probably wouldn't be enough for someone like her. Give me a sec. It was the work of moments to find something that would suit her. He'd stumbled upon it by chance when some maniac attacked him near a cave. If it had a name, he didn't know it. He pressed a slender katana into her hands. Millicent accepted it, unsheathed the blade, and cut a quick slice through the air. A blade of light burst forth to annihilate a nearby boulder with ease, leaving its severed halves to slide apart and crash down into the rot-ridden dirt. Naruto blinked. Furious, she sheathed it again and repeated the process twice more, producing an arc of blue transience each time. Thissi's moon veil. She whispered quietly, sheathing it for the final time, an ancient glinstone blade forged by a Selian sorcerer in times long past. Where did you find this? Naruto shrugged. By chance, her gaze met his. No one's that lucky. Maybe I am he offered a self-same smile. Dunno what to tell you. This is a fine blade. I gladly accept it. Only, abruptly, she flushed anew. Would you mind averting your eyes for a moment? Now what was she up to still, he sensed no ill intent and complied, presenting his left side to her as he looked away. All right, there. Why do you want me to do this? Something warm, soft, and infinitely yielding touched his right cheek. Little more than a feather's brush, a lingering touch, it nevertheless startled him all the same. 
When he looked back, he found Millicent kneeling hastily before him, head bowed, one fist pressed against her bosom, eyes fixed firmly on the road underfoot. Kirama perked up. Would you look at that? I've decided that I would rather trust you than simply continuing to spoil from within. Millicent's words were faint, almost a whisper, cheeks burning brighter than her hair. I had expected to die, to simply rot away, to be little more than a footnote in history. You changed that. And yet, though it shames me, I fear I must ask another boon of you. Her eyes met his, damp with unshed tears. Please, I beg of thee, take me into your service. Naruto's brow shot into his hair. Wanna run that by me again? I wish to aid you in your quest to become Elden Lord. The former amputee spoke quickly, hastily, even nearly tripping over herself in her haste to explain for fear of him denying her. Let me be your sword, your shield, your shadow and all things. As he looked on aghast, Millicent planted that fist into the dirt and bowed her head anew. I would protect you from all those that would do thee harm. Sullied though I am, I promise to uphold your vows, your morals, all that you are. And someday, this she added in a voice so faint even he had to strain to hear it, those that come after you. Oh, oh, oh Naruto's brain fizzled out when she didn't finish that sentence. How did one respond to a proposition like this? No, how could you respond? Help, please. Not a chance. Hirama snickered, grinning from ear to ear. You're on your own here. Have fun. His right eye began to twitch. Stop that and so he spat out the first thing that came to mind. You're not sullied at all. Stand up. You can help me. If you want, but don't go throwing yourself in the dirt. Her head rose tentatively. Will you accept my into your service? She wasn't going to get up until he said yes. Naruto just knew it. What did Shikamaru always say such a drag? Yes, sure. Fine, he looked away, palming his face to hide burning cheeks. Now get up, come on, you're embarrassing me. He felt a fierce flare of joy from the redhead as she climbed to her feet, one so powerful it threatened to take his breath away. For a singular moment she shone to his senses because of that singular emotion. She caught it and tamped it down quickly, composing herself, but he couldn't forget what he'd seen. Pure girl. His mind bleated. Must protect. Then my sword is yours. Millicent straightened with a smile, all but glowing with pride. I promise, you shan't regret this. Although, she took a small, shy step toward him, into his personal space, and touched a hand to one breast. I wonder what this feeling is. I feel oddly warm. Naruto's heart leaped into his throat. She was close. Too close, bring with her the scent of herbs. It was not an unpleasant armor. A triumphant shout shook the world, followed by a distant plume of dust. Millicent blinked. Once, twice, thrice now. Whatever was that. He heaved a sigh, almost disappointed by the distraction. Huh. Yes, Grayrol found a troll. Zero, zero, zero. Champions welcome. Of all the greetings Naruto had expected in the courtyard, those were not among them. Grayrol had been true to her word, by the time they'd caught up, the gate guard lay dead and the castle gates were ripped asunder to grant them passage. Well, most of them. Lacking a human form, XX was forced to wait outside while they conducted their business within. He'd make a fine guard if anyone tried to creep up on their flank. Even so, no such ambush was forthcoming, for none barred their entry. The stars have a line now they knew why, as a man's voice boomed out as they entered the plaza. The festival is nice sure enough, his keen eyes spotted a masked man hoisting a flamberge high atop one of the ramparts well above them. His very voice brimmed with gusto. General Radon, mightiest demigod of the Shattering, awaits you. Millicent tilted her head to regard the bevy of warriors awaiting them within, some spectral, others mercifully solid. Seems a strange place to hold a festival. Tis a human right. Grayrol groused, lips pursed in a thin line as she glared at a giant jar. Thy kind has always been known for such foppery and finery. We dragons celebrate in a different fashion. Naruto couldn't help but quirk a brow at that. How so? Her hip brushed his in a telling fashion. Perhaps I shall show thee sometime. Millicent bridled in the corner of his eye, but said nothing. He knew she'd have words for her later. Mercifully, Melina manifested between them they could snap at one another. You should see the festivals in the capital, dragon. The bite in her words had him drawing back. They would put your petty rituals to shame. Rayrol glared golden daggers at her, but with her ire thus diverted, Millicent took her chance and stuck to his side. Champions prepare for battle once more, the castellan's voice rang out above them, diverting their attention for the umpteenth time. Defeat the general claimed glory and grab that great rune his words peaked low with fervor bordering on mania now as he addressed the scattered souls standing before them. Such is our celebration of War the Radon Festival. Naruto scratched the back of his head, feeling more than a little chagrined. Yes we've got competition. Understatement of the century, there. He counted nearly a dozen stalwart men and women assembled in the plaza. A man wearing what he thought was a wolf's mask, a giant jar, a big brute in armor, a maiden clad in thin cloth, the list went on and on. He could have sworn he saw a samurai among them too, but surely that wasn't possible we would one of Mifune's people be here never mind that, how many people were after this great rune. The low whinny of a horse cut through his thoughts. Naruto pivoted toward it, only to find himself somewhat caught out when he failed to find the source. That noise hadn't come from Torrent, the spectral steed was enjoying a well-earned rest outside with Exix. And besides, this sounded bigger. Much bigger. Now who did he know that rode a giant horse? An answer smacked him upside the head. In the same instant, a long shadow fell over him from on high. A familiar shadow, one he knew all too well. Melina manifested not a stone's throw away, head tilted a fraction of an inch. Uh, was her sole exclamation. 
T. Wowed seemed she caught up. That was Naruto's only warning. Someone crashed down into the plaza directly behind him, startling every champion in the plaza. Dust kicked up and he flung up an arm against it as his hood was blasted back. Squinting into the haze, he beheld a mighty steed, and a mightier shape even now clamoring off its back. Dull gold armor glimmered in the light of the ur tree, contrasting harshly against the crimson sky of Caled. A familiar grunt had his hackles rising. Then she was upon him. He barked out a laugh, knowing what was coming. Trish, don't you dare. Too little, too late. The last word was only just leaving his mouth when a golden arm got hold of his ankle. Not a heartbeat later, he found hoisted himself into the air, all but dangled upside down like a child's toy. Blue eyes fluttered in a brief blink, gazing into that wrathful helm and the scowling face within. Hey, he managed a Cheshire grin. Mind putting me down. The tree sentinel poked him again, checking him over for wounds. Hey, he laughed. Not in front of my friends, oh I missed you, too. Did you really ride all the way out here? She must have. Melina confirmed his suspicions as she reappeared only a stone's throw away, looking faintly bemused by his plight. I lacked the strength to bring her with me. The tree sentinel made a decidedly unimpressed noise at that and waffled a golden hand in the Madian's general vicinity. For her part, she paid her little heed. Naruto winced at the fire there. Look, I really am sorry, but I didn't think I'd get yoinked back in the round table, you know. Rayrol tilted her head. T would seem you don't lack for interest in company. However, did you tame her? Bit of a long story there, and I didn't tame anyone. Then how did she and tear in your service Millicent was giving the sentinel a rather odd look as well, all the while gripping her restored wrist. Leave it to her to focus on that. Another thought occurred to him as he dangled there. Her arm. Hey, that's right I can heal you now almost forgot slipping out of the Trisha's grasp. He caught himself in a crouch and took a step forward, moving well into her personal space. Just take your helmet off and I can fix you right up. And then NGH. The tree sentinel made a noise that couldn't be anything other than a denial. A golden gauntlet slapped his chest, forcing him back a piece. What the heck when she shook her head, setting the plume atop her helm swaying, understanding dawned. You don't want me to she made a less than pleasant gesture across her throat, prompting a frown from him. Oi I still can't understand you. With a long suffering sigh the sentinel snatched a stray dagger off a nearby table. Dragging its rusty edge, she used it to carve words into the dirt at their feet. My penance, don't waste your strength on me. Not worthy. Indignation sparked in his soul. Screw that I've got plenty of chakra left. Now off with your helmet. Trish shook her head anew, for all that good it did her. A quick step and a hop and he had hold of her helm, a twist of his wrists tore it free, revealing her wide eyes to the world. More than a few champions winced when they beheld her ruined visage. Millicent hissed. Grayrol actually made a rare noise of sympathy as she saw her scars. Even as she did, the tree sentinel slammed back, furiously shaking her head. It's not gonna hurt, I swear. Naruto stepped after her. Here, just hold still. Melina laid a hand on his wrist. Now is not the time. Surely she has a reason for resisting you so. Perhaps you should wait until after the battle. Naruto nearly protested until he saw the look on Trisha's face. Although she loomed over the lot of them, she suddenly looked fit to bolt now, she was afraid. Terrified. Not of him, but something else. What, then what had her so spooked that she wouldn't accept healing in the end, he chose to heed Melina's advice. Just this once. He'd seek the Sentinel's secrets after Radon was dealt with. Here. He tossed her helm back and stalked up the steps. I'll be having words with you when this is over. Stay put, you know. I'll be right back. Without pausing to see her reaction, he left a lot of them behind to have words with the Castellan. It was as much an excuse to get away from the look in her eyes as anything else. He couldn't bear to see Trish wearing an expression like that. Imagine his surprise then, when he found the man waiting for him atop the rampart. Aha, it seems we have a godlesayer among us. Despite his aged mask, the man beneath it all sounded heartened as he turned to meet him. Come to grab another great rune have you, young chum. There was something almost merry in that affable voice that both made him lower his guard and tense in the same instant. You know me. I know of you, rather. The castellan cackled merrily. I didn't think the Slayer of Godric would grace us with his presence. Ah, uh, seemed word had gotten out after all. Why does everyone know about that? Lad, you're the first tarnished to hold a great rune since Vike. May the stars smile upon his sorry soul. The aging warrior made a strange sign before his own chest, nodded, then jerked a gloved thumb toward Naruto and the pulsing golden green shard even now beating near his heart. But I'm afraid you'll find no easy prey here. Godric was. The runt of the litter, I know. He felt an old anger overtake him. Why speak ill of the dead whatever he'd once been, he was gone now. The others will be stronger, yada yada yada, I've heard it all f for. And you are. Call me Jaren, lad. Quick bow of that bearded mask. I imagine you have questions about the good general. I do. He certainly did. It was why he'd come up here in the first place. Who is Radon what's he like? Was he another Godric another monster to be put down he hoped not. Allow me to paint you the full picture. Jaren swung an arm out past him, towards the wailing dunes below, where monuments of blades and banners stood etched within. General Radon was, and still is a mighty warrior, strongest demigod of his generation. Now, he is cursed ever to wander. Eaten from the inside, by Melenia's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. His voice dipped in rare melancholy, head hanging just a touch before he recovered himself. Now he gathers the corpses of former friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog howling at the sky. 
A baleful roar echoed from the dunes. Naruto swallowed despite himself, so he's lost his mind. Long ago, Jaren didn't even sound sad to say it anymore, just resigned. But now we must make merry, he righted himself as he looked on, for the time has come to give him his rest. Quick as a flash the castellan pivoted back to Melina and the others below, hoisting his flamberge high once more. O oh, gathering of champions, the revels begin our celebration of war his sword crashed down, splintering the wood beneath him with a sonorous crack. The raid on festival, color me surprised, didn't think the old coot would be that honorable. Go now, said old soul straightened up. Speak with the others. Make your preparations. It will take a great man of you to stand even a slim chance against our commander. Naruto pivoted, stifling a second sigh of his own. Don't have to tell me me twice. Jaren called out to him before he could take a single step. Boy, he stilled. Yeah, give him a good battle, won't you? Naruto reached up and tugged at his headband. I'll do my best. Zero, zero, zero. Alexander perked up the moment he saw them. How could he not this was to be a festival of champions after all? And these were a sterling sword indeed. Nor was he the only one to take notice of them. Zero, zero, zero. Thurlina was but a humble finger maiden. She didn't consider herself particularly strong compared to some of the heroes here, but she was well versed with incantations of the Golden Order and quick on her feet. Such was was expected of her naturally, for she served the will of the two fingers, bringing their grace and guidance to all whom cared to listen. And one day someday soon she would share that strength with her tarnished. She still hadn't found him or her yet, but Thurlina was certain she would eventually encounter her destined one. The two fingers had promised her, after all. Such was the guidance of Grace. She just hadn't searched in the right places. Yes, that was it. Long had she scoured high and low, following rumors all about the lands between, hoping in vain. Until finally, finally, she stumbled upon an odd man known as Silovis. Such a strange wizard that one, but he'd proven himself a relatively trustworthy sort thus far. Tiwazi who took her in when she was starving. Tiwazi who first told her about this festival. Tiwazi who even offered her a potion to help her on her quest. She would have gladly taken him up on the ladder, but she did not wish to be indebted to him any further than she already was. And so she had kindly refused the tonic he offered and taken her leave with great thanks, promising to return if she failed to find her intended here. She must succeed here. She did not wish to impugn upon his generosity any longer. Surely she would find her tarnished in these grounds. T was a tournament of champions, after all, sure to attract tarnished far and wide. Doubtless some already had maidens of their own, but surely, surely there was at least one here without, one person who could fulfill her purpose, make her feel complete. Come on, Melina the voice of a young man plucked her from her misery as surely as a bird would a worm. It'll be fine. T will not be fine a woman snapped back. I'll not see you herring off again without a plan. Drawn by these words the young finger maiden pivoted, seeking their source. Imagine her surprise then, when her eye fell upon a strapping young blonde being fussed over by not one, not two, but four women. Clad in amber drake scale armor, he stood apart from the rest not solely for that, but for his aura alone. Fair of face was he, with striking blue eyes and whiskered cheeks even now dimpled in a sunny smile. But what truly drew her attention was the great rune pulsing in his chest. As a finger maiden the Alina recognized its make at once, for the wisdom of the fingers was always with her. T was the rune of Godric. There could be no doubt. Uh, she understood now. Like so many others, this one sought the rune of Radon. The Alina couldn't abide that. She needed that great rune. With one such as that, she could find her destined tarnished. The other shard bearers were out of reach, or otherwise beyond her meager means to find. But here, if she had help, here, with numbers on her side, she had her chance. Her best chance. Her last chance. Her only chance. The blonde blinked suddenly, regarding another competitor. That is a big dog. Half wolf, actually. The being retorted. He talks. The Relina almost found herself smiling despite herself as the two struck up a rapport. Was that the half-wolf blade, Shadow to Rani the two fingers might be pleased to learn of his location when next she visited the round table. Still, her eyes strayed to the woman near the blonde as the duo conversed. A dragonkin woman bickered with a redhead, while a towering woman in golden armor glared bloody daggers at a lass bearing one eye. Oddly enough, the other looked to have been sealed by something. The other was fixed firmly on the blonde. That last thought tore at her heartstrings. She had the look of a maiden, which meat blonde wasn't the one. He'd no need of her. If he already had a maiden tending to his every need, he would not take a second. Rare was the sort who did such, and rarer still the blonde that persisted as two maidens fought over a single tarnished. And yet, Thurlina turned her gaze inward. She could feel the strength of runes lingering about him, a great many of them. Hundreds, no, hundreds of thousands, untapped power jet waiting to be unleashed at the right moment. Surely if he had a maiden, all those runes would have been turned to strength long ago. But he hadn't used any of them. Not a one. What, then, did that mean? A tiny, timid hope bloomed in Thurlina's heart. Did he not have a maiden after all? He looked her way suddenly, no doubt sensing her gaze. The moment their eyes, Thralina averted her own and managed a polite bow. He returned it with an awkward wave. By the time she looked up, he was distracted yet again. Thank the fingers for small mercies. She couldn't bring herself to speak to him. No, nay, not yet. She dare not approach. Not now, not when he was surrounded by so any, certainly not with that giant jar trundling their way. 
To approach him now would only see her swept up with the others, one voice lost among many. But perhaps ice. After the battle she would try. If she lived. If Radon didn't slay her. So many ifs. She just had to survive. Zero, zero, zero. There he is. Naruto saw a giant shape across the dunes, a great hulking warrior that dwarfed them all. A distant figure of Radon moved with impossible speed. An arrow hurtled their way. Millicent yelped. Zero, zero, zero. Radon feasted. He bent low to the ground and gorged himself on another wood champion, tearing great strips from their flesh with his teeth alone. His teeth scoured rotten flesh, managing little more than a few middling bites before he had his full. His meal secured, he reared back and howled at the sky. Kill and eat. Eat and kill. He killed and he ate. He ripped and tore. It was all he was. All he knew. All that he could do. Sometimes there were moments in which he despaired, brief seconds of sanity that surfaced once every decade or so. Even now in his mad state, his body falling apart, his organs rotted, his instincts yet remained. His addled mind still clung to three precious tenets, even now. They anchored him. Must not eat Leonard. Leonard was horse. Horse was good boy, all he had left of his family. Hold back the stars. Do not let them fall. Never let them fall. And above all fight. Fight, so that he might end. So long as he held the stars back, the world would be safe. Someone had told him that once. A man with red hair. He no longer remembered who. There were monsters in the stars. Beasts that came from the void. Cruel creatures who loved not and knew only destruction. So long as he held the cosmos in check, all was well. But there was another Ryasin, wasn't there. And Rani Rani would be safe. Rani who was Rani he no longer knew. There, movement in the dunes. The moment fizzled out and Radon riding himself, reaching for his great bow. A giant hand ripped three spears from his skewered back and took aim. T was a simple action. Gravity magic flared, forming a distant nebulae at the tip of his arrow as he drew the string back back, back yet further. His eyes saw much, even at this distance, chief among them a woman with stark red hair. The rod in him stirred at the sight, seething like the frenzied flame itself. Radon recalled a woman with such flaming locks. Rotted though he was, his body knew well the face of the one who had brought this blight upon him. Melenia, Blade of Miquela, Rotten, dishonorable witch who couldn't bear to take a loss. And now she was come again, come to mock him, taunt him, torment him. Her fault all her fault. He loosed the arrow with hate in his heart. Straight and true did it fly, crossing the distance in an instant before they could hope to react. A cry of pain reached his ears. One down. He could see dark shapes racing across the sands toward him now. Radon roared a challenge at them. Something roared back. R-A-D-A-H-N. A man's voice ripped through the wailing dunes, a shockwave of sound tearing across heaps of broken weapons and moldering bones to reach him. And for the first time since the rot had come upon him, Starscourge Radon quivered. But not in fear. Nay. He shuddered for an altogether different reason. T was a brief momentary thing, but it gave his prey time enough to speak again. I came here to face a champion his voice was fire and death, hope and light incarnate. I am still waiting come and get me unless you're afraid. Raiden's heart sang. Those words. A worthy foe. A good death. And end. At last. Long had he waited. The last broken scrap of his mind howled and as he did, he heard the challenger howl back. Something stirred in him as he spurred Leonard forward with all due speed. Stowing his bow, he drew his blades and howled at the sky. A glorious battle. An end. That was all he wanted. Finish me please. Zero zero zero. Oh oh oh. Naruto hissed furiously as he ripped the great arrow from his shoulder. It went unwillingly, worsening his wound, but he grit his teeth and forced it free fro his flesh. Blood spattered the sands, drawing a fair share of gasps fro his companions. He shut his ears to them. Not a small wound by any means or measure, but what choice did he have if he hadn't shoved Millicent aside at the last moment there? That would be her skewered in the sands. He could take a hit like this and laugh it off. She couldn't. What was one more scar by comparison had to be him. He could tank things like this. He could live. My lord that wound. At his flank, he was vaguely aware of Millicent fretting over him, his sword sword fingers running down the length of his arm. Bless her simple soul. He patted her shoulder with a smile and let her haul him upright. Truth be told her help wasn't needed, but it was pivotal that she felt useful. If even a single arrow struck Millicent, she would die. She didn't have Trisha's armor, nor did she possess Greyroll's draconic vitality. She couldn't vanish into the ether and hide like Melina, either. Him fine. Just give me a second. Forcing Chakra to the wound was easier than ever before. Almost effortless. Godric's rune had empowered every aspect of him, regeneration included. An injury like this would close in a few minutes. Hardly enough to slow him down even if it did enrage his companions. Trish took one look at his wood, snarled, and leaped onto her mount. Greyrol raced barefoot into the dunes beside her. Most of the others followed their lead and charged in, seeking strength in numbers. Naruto alone lingered. You cannot heal him as you did the others. Melina appeared at his side in a shower of blue light as the last of his wound stitched itself shut. He's rotted, inside and out, and for far longer. Hmm. She scowled at him. He was at the epicenter of the blast that ravaged Caled. Whatever you're plotting, it won't work. Naruto lifted his chin in mulish defiance. He was sure it was writ across his face. Won't work, she said wouldn't know until he tried. But first he needed Radon's attention on him. 
on him, and away from everyone else. There was only one way to do such. Time to put on an act to end all acts, something he hadn't done since he was a boy. Millicent saw the look in his eye and scowled. My lord, no. Don't you dare. Too late. Our ADH and Naruto stepped forward spread his arms wide, voice echoing across the wailing dunes. I came here to face a champion I am still waiting still grinning. He turned around, bent over, and slapped his flank. Come and get me unless you're afraid. A moment of awful silence followed. And then, the world shook with an answering roar. Someone whistled behind him. Big brass balls on this one. Naruto never saw who it was, he was already bounding forward, fixed on the melee in the distance. Milson pelted after him at his left, and a rustle of cloth told him Melina was hovering near his right. He knew better than to tell her to step aside this time. She had done that for him once. Never again. The first blow decided the course of the battle. It also nearly killed Millicent. Naruto moved to intercept the moment Radon closed with her, only to find that there was no need or time for him to do anything. Much to his surprise the redhead bounded forward and leaped into the air, leaving a giant blade to sweep harmlessly underfoot. The second came racing and hot on the heels of the first, only for her to kick off its edge with both feet, using the blackened blade as a springboard to further her leap. She hung in the air for a moment in blatant defiance of gravity. Parallel with his chest, her sword arm rose. Radon looked down. Millicent's blade swung up, sheathing Moonvale in an impossible arc and then. The blade flew free and so did she. Radon roared in surprise as Millicent's weapon upon him in a storm of glowing azure blades, whirling and flowing as he'd only ever seen once before. All combat ceased as she single-handedly forced him back. The ring on Naruto's finger sang in blissful harmony, bringing two words to the forefront of his mind. Waterfowl dance. Whatever it was, it put Radon on the back leg no, a quick glance confirmed didn't have feet. They'd long since rotted away at the ankles, leaving him to rely on his scrawny steed for locomotion. Locomotion he could not maintain as he staggered under the storm. Shoulders sagged, armor buckled beneath the onslaught of steel and blue light. Millicent didn't give him the chance to counter. She just kept moving, ripping into him as if she'd been born for this, created for nothing but this singular moment. But her stamina wasn't infinite. Radon was a demigod. She was not. Rumbling like thunder, he warded the blows away with one sword. The other rose. Naruto saw the counter coming in the same moment that Millicent finally faltered. Trish. The tree sentinel stepped in seamlessly as the redhead fell to a knee and brandished her golden shield. Naruto stepped in behind her, swept Millicent up, and darted back. Those star scourge greatswords descended and combat resumed. Trish ducked behind her shield, ready to weather the storm. And weather it she did. Her defenses held in the face of his fury, enduring not one, but three singular strikes that would have split a lesser warrior in half. Radon ignored those tearing at his flesh and raised both blades high, prepared to break her guard with an overhand smash only for both blades to smack into a pair of open palms. The mad demigod made a noise of confusion and glared down at the immutable barrier that had saved her life. Grayrol grinned up at him, exposing rows of razor-sharp teeth in a wild leer. Come, scales sprouted from her flesh. Face a dragon. She kicked outward, staggering him. From there it all dissolved into a mad melee of blows. Naruto made the mistake of parrying a greatsword. The impact alone nearly ripped his arm from its socket and forced him to punch up with the other. Clenched knuckles barreled into Radon's chin. His head snapped back but still, he remained seated atop his horse and came at him again. A racing input paid to that, warping his armor to tear at his flesh, but still he didn't go down. And was with that horse. The sight nearly brought the blonde up short. How on earth could a giant like Radon ride such a scrawny steed without crushing it? His hesitation nearly cost him an arm, even then he barely got his guard up time. The star scourge greatsword swept down, seeking his head. Giant golden palms rose to meet them, not to deflect this time, but rather to meet the blade's head on his grayroll hat. Unlike her, he caught the blades and yanked them down, wielder and all. Radon and his mount crashed into the sand. When they tried to rise, he raised his fists and brought all his strength down on the general's back, using Kurama's paws as battering rams. He could hardly use his full form here, doing so would harm his allies. And there were many of them now, more than he could count. Here he heard Blade howl then saw the half-wolf pounce onto the general's thigh, driving his frozen greatsword deep. Radon roared in pain, but even as he sought to rip him apart, Grayroll rent the giant's chest with her claws, causing yet further blood loss. Millicent crouched backwards, steadied herself, then flew into a fresh flurry of blows that hammered the general's wounded back. Melina landed atop his back and drove a dagger deep, only for the general to buck and hurtle her away. A certain jolly jar caught her, spun around, and flung the kindling maiden back into the fray with a mighty cry. Others joined in, raining down blows on the general from all sides, chipping away at his mighty vigor. They were wearing him down, slowly but surely. Now if they could just knock him down. And then the tempo changed. Radon shuddered to a stop atop his tiny, aging mount, gone still as stone. Naruto swore softly, not like the look of that one bit. What in the? A low growl seemed to rattle the dunes, no, the very air itself. Radon was still snarling when he leaped into the air. The world fell silent. Millicent looked left first. Naruto looked right, frowned, and then, he remembered to look up. 
All right, where did highs that a meteor? Hey, him? Fight continues and ends next chapter. Had to split this bad boy into halves. Will Raid on live? Will he die? Will he get a third phase? Well, you'll just have to read and see. Well, did you like this story? Yes, no, maybe speak out, make yourselves heard, your voice matters. Once more, we're sticking with the Ember's rule for this story. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs during the holidays so I barely have time to write. As such, I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up your voice matters, make yourself heard as ever. Reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. So in the immortal words of Atlas, review, wouldst thou kindly, and have some previews. Some are quite off, but still. Previews. Radon dragged himself upright and fell off his horse. The poor beast slumped with an exhausted whine. A giant hand descended, cradling its exhausted body. Set it aside in the sands. In his heart of hearts, Naruto heard a voice. The general spoke. Slowly, haltingly, but words emerged nevertheless. Are you were at my side all along. A shiver shot down his spine. What's he doing? The lean about her head. Brave tarnished, might I have ailment of your time. Lingrave and Lerna had problems of their own. Of course they did. It was too much to hope that they wouldn't. Naruto sighed, rolled his shoulders, and stalked down the hill at a sedate pace. Right, then. Time for work. I'm considering leaving. On a journey. I started to recall, however dimly me destiny. Not another warp gate. Who goes there a shadow stirred in dimly lit temple. Something someone inhaled deeply and made a snarling noise. You are no tarnished. Finally Naruto nearly hugged the beastman on the spot. Someone who understands you get me. Garank blinked beneath his hood. What? Fia patted the empty space beside her, pale fingers creasing the bed. Might I have a moment of your time, my dear? Saluria was a crucible night. She feared nothing. Hey. She feared something. Rani tapped her foot. Surely she'd not been forgotten. Surely. But how do I do it? He flung up his hands. I can't undo death if someone dies. That's on me. How do I prevent it? Take this opportunity to learn to master your emotions. The wise being before him intoned. Worry not, I take no offense at your outburst. But others are not always so forgiving. Some take to anger, other, sorrow. Bonds are fragile things, want to break under strain. And once they're broken, everything is lost, with not to gain. Do your best to protect them, safeguard them, strengthen them. In the end, that is all anyone can do. Those words punched hard, hit home in a way few add. Hey hey, you're a wise old turtle, you know. Muriel smiled. So I have been told. I've been thinking like a ninja. Time to start thinking like a tactician. Melina blinked. Was that a flicker of pride she felt just now? Nay, surely not she shoved it down. It lingered still, smoldering. And she listened to him. Let chaos take the world. Witless tarnished the lands between cannot be saved. Electo sneered behind her mask. Why have you come to my jail to mock me? I am imprisoned for eternity with naught but my door's ashes for company. Be gone. The blonde man crossed both arms before his chest. Not until you answer my questions. It was indeed a meteor. A meteor named Radon at my side. Get up. His ears were ringing. No, that wasn't it. Everything was ringing. He couldn't remember the last time someone hit him from orbit. It hurt like hell. Naruto touched one hand to the side of his head, grimacing in pain as the skin there regrew. Why were his ears ringing? Why was everything blurry? Why couldn't he think straight? He could feel someone shaking his right shoulder, hear them shouting while the earth trembled underfoot, but it all felt so distant somehow. One fist lay buried in the sand, his body down on a single knee. Even the singular act of raising his head made him feel violently ill. Had to move. Had to get up. Had taught be the log he was going to be sick. Breathe. Your eardrums were ruptured by the blast. Any chance you could fix that, Kurama? Just did. A clap of thunder rang in his head, taking the nausea with it. Dimly he became aware of the world again as he climbed to his feet. He immediately wished he hadn't. He could hear Grayrol growling and Radon raging across the next dune, which suggested at least a few combatants had survived his landing. But, then he saw them. He found Trish sprawled out in the dunes not a yard away, and her mangled shield not far from that. Her armor was caved in from a mighty blow and her helm knocked aside. By some miracle she still lived, but only just. Melina was crouched beside her with a ruined leg, forcing a flask of crimson tears to the larger woman's lips. Drink, blast you. The sentinel planted a trembling fist in the ground and punched it, but acquiesced. Maruto nearly gagged as beheld the mangled joint of the kindling Maiden's knee, the limb itself bent at an unnatural angle. How was she ignoring a wound like that would she heal from that could she heal not likely, not when she was using her flask on Trish. He stumbled her way and made to lay a hand on her knee, only for her to glare daggers at him. He still did despite her glare. He wouldn't forget the awful noise her leg made as it popped back into place. My injuries are of no concern she gasped out, batting his hand away. Tend to your sword. She is in more need of your strength than I. Sword the blonde paused as he realized they were missing someone. Wait, where was? Good to see you awake, a weak voice whispered behind him. My lord. He found their resident redhead propped against the very same mound of weapons he'd just risen from, clutching her right arm what remained of it. The very same limb he'd restored, now reduced once more to a ragged stump at the shoulder and an ugly tear in her collarbone. Blood flowed freely from the wound, forming a scarlet puddle beneath her. Memories rushed back. The meteor. Wrong. Radon had been the meteor. 
he'd crash down on them, a falling star, power bombing them from the upper atmosphere. She had shoved him aside at the last, saving his life. Incredulity dawned, rooting him where he stood. Why? A sword protects her lord. In any case, it's just a flesh wound. Her waxy complexion said otherwise. I vesifered worse. Her words untethered his legs, just like that found himself moving, slamming down onto his knees, pressing both hands to her gaping wound. Chakra surged out, wrapping the length of her shoulder. She didn't react to the mending energy in the least, she was just that far gone. He could feel her pulse fading, growing weaker. And with her weakness something deep inside her stirred, rising to the surface. The scarlet rut. He had suppressed it once before, but she'd not been this weak then. He could feel it in her now, an angry writhing tide, eager to bloom, to flower into new life. He shoved at it, and a ghastly, oily presence touched his mind. Why do you resist a low contralto a woman's voice whispered in his ear, sweeter than poison honey? She already belongs to me. She is mine, just as her sisters are mine, as Melania is mine, as this world will be mine. It reminded him of Kaguya, but worse. So much worse. Why struggle fruitlessly? He kept his eyes fixed on Millicent's slowly mending collarbone, watching the wound close to the exclusion of all else. A hand took him by the chin. Millicent's hand. He didn't want to look up, for fear of what he'd find there. He tried to resist and failed. She gazed back at him, her golden eyes a tainted pink on it, a coy smile tugging at her normally dour expression. It was a look he'd never seen her wear before, if anything it helped him distance himself from her. Something was controlling her body, no, speaking through her very soul. Something not of this world. Scram, whatever you are. Hirama rallied before he could. He's already got one passenger. Mine business is not with you, creature. Tis with him. We need not be enemies. Her voice dipped lower still, running silken fingers over his spine as she turned her tainted eyes back to him. Be my champion, mine dear consort. He shivered a little as her forehead kissed his, lips brushing his ear. Free me from mine lake of rot, and I shall usher in a new cycle of rebirth for this decayed world. Together, our children shall devour the very. The ring on Naruto's finger erupted into searing brilliance, warping her words into a wail of pain. Be gone. He is not yours to claim. Millicent withdrew with a start, her eyes gone gold once more. Hey, you forgive me, she rasped, leaning back against the rusted weapon. I don't know what came over me I was not myself. That's putting it lightly. Naruto had an awful inkling that she wasn't aware of it only confirmed his suspicions. That thing whatever was inside her couldn't be set free. Grayrol's scream echoed across the wailing dunes. Raid on Ward back. She fell silent. They need you. Millicent's head lolled to the side. Leave me. Dread dawned and he shouted her down. Quiet, you. In that moment, Naruto felt like screaming himself. He shoved more chakra into her, and this time, she gasped. The rod receded with a snarl. He took that as a good sign. He couldn't regrow her arm in time, in his current state. He was struggling just to stop the bleeding and close the gaping wound. Every second he wasted was another in which someone might die. Even now, their survival wasn't a sure thing. Radon howled and another cry of pain pierced the air. Panic clouded his mind, tangling his already tattered thoughts into ugly red knots. Maybe send a swarm of Shadow Clone but that would mean taking his hands off Millicent. And if he did that she'd keep losing blood and if she lost too much she'd. Allow me. Someone knelt beside him. A gentle golden glow suffused Millicent's body. Naruto's head snapped to the side, taking in the newcomer at a glance except she wasn't a newcomer at all. It was the woman from the plaza. The one in the robes who'd bowed to him back then. A faint golden sheen stemmed from her hands as she brought them forward against Millicent, brow writ with concentration. He felt something pushed against his chakra in that moment, strengthening his attempts at healing, doubling them up with a blessing. As he looked on, the wound finally closed, the blood within slowing to but a trickle. Well, well, seems someone has a gift. The stranger granted them a tiny, tremulous smile. He didn't even know her name. I'm no fighter, I'm lord, she warbled a little, flushing prettily under his gaze. But I can at least keep your companion stable while you fight. Hugh. Blade's body hurtled past them and crashed into Alexander, just now cresting the next rise. He heard the great jar crack as both brawlers went down. Credit where it was due, the half-wolf bounded upright and hurled himself back into the fray with nary a pause. His fellow did not. The jolly jar lay there, still as a stone, out cold. Warrior Grayrol belted out a yelp. A little help. Go. Millicent nudged him with her good arm. I'll live. Stop him. Naruto grimaced. He had to, didn't he one way or another, someone needed to put the general down. Grayrol and Blade might well be the ones to do end raid on if he let them but but who was he to leave them to their fight it hadn't been personal before. Now, after all the wounds his comrades had taken an ember of anger kindled in his chest, righteous and powerful. Wincing at his wounds, he climbed to his feet. I'll be right back. Millicent smiled at him, his heart skipped a beat, more so at her words. Be safe. Naruto ran then, from her as much as the strange feeling in his chest. He wasn't ashamed to admit it, his mind was already elsewhere, locking down, focusing on the fight ahead. Quickstep shot him over the dune, past a startled blade, followed by that fellow with the great hammer, then the masked madman with two swords. He saw Radon first, a strange series of what could only be described as boulders looming over his shoulders as he howled at. Grayrol. It had to be Grayrol. 
He scarcely recognized her covered in blood as she was, hair matted, dress in tatters. In her desperation she had nearly reverted to her draconic self, now she seemed some strange amalgamation caught between human and dragon. Even from here, the changes became apparent. Her human form stood proud and unbowed despite her wounds was it his imagination. Or had she grown? No, she looked to be a good head taller than he remembered, more than that. She was nearly half the general's size now, if not his equal in sheer tenacity. I won't die here she snarled, fangs flashing in the moonlight. Not yet not to you. In that split second of inattention, Naruto stepped in. He whistled sharply. Hey big guy. Radon heard his challenge and rounded on him with a roar, brandishing his blades. Naruto let him raise them. They swung down in an overhead smash on that became so much wind in his hair as he stepped into the good general's guard. Radon grunted in surprise, a grunt that became a snarl as he reached up and grabbed the man's wrists. The demigod tried to pull away of course. Tried. As in, he did not succeed. Sorry, Naruto apologized to him as much as the withered horse currently staring him the face. But this is the end for you. The beast gave a low whinny and slammed against him, to no avail. He didn't budge. It's all right. He whispered. I'll give you a long rest after this. Golden hands began to squeeze, buckling first Raiden's gauntlets and then the wrists beneath. He kept squeezing, hardening his heart to the cries of pain that followed. That plucky steed drove itself at him again and again in spite of it all, determined to protect its master. All for naught. Kirama. I've got him. A golden limb burst from his back and pinned the steed. It was the final straw. Radon's arm spasmed and lost hold of his greatswords at long last. They sheathed themselves in the sand at his feet, driven nearly to the hilts by their weight alone. How a man could carry those things, he'd no idea, let alone when they were enhanced with those rocky crag blades. Even then the general didn't give up. He reared back and brought his head smashing down in a vicious headbutt, all but flattening his poor mount against the sand to get at him. Stars flashed through his vision, but once more, he held firm. Placid red orbs gazed into eyes of maddened gold, the gaze of a starving lion longing for an end. Still he searched for some sign of sanity within, some semblance of serenity. And against all odds, the general spoke. Well, more roar really. M-A-L-E-N-I-A. Was it the eyes had to be the eyes? Sorry. Ain't her. You never asked for this, did you? He leaned his head against the general's and let his eyes drift shut. Maybe we could have been friends, before all this. Radon tried to headbutt him again for it. This time he was ready for it. Still gripping the general's wrists, he released his mount, leaped up and drove a golden knee into the man's midsection. Radon doubled over. He didn't stop there. Abandoning his hold on the man's fractured wrists, he let momentum have its day. It carried him up and over and away, but not before he got a hold of the general's crimson mane. From there, gravity did the rest. With a cry of triumph he slammed him down to the dunes, momentarily stunning him. From there he pressed his marked palm to the giant demigod's forehead and focused. Golden chakra flowed forth, lulling the. Distantly he became aware of Grayrol and the other combatants approaching. She was grinning at him, looking like a goddess of the battlefield. He waved her down with a smile and returned his attention back to his patient. Only had one shot at this. All right, big guy. If I heal the dragon, I can fix what in the blue hell is this. He nearly recoiled what he found there. Radon's insides were gone. His internals were a literal mass of rot soup. Nothing more, nothing less. Of his organs, precious little remained. He'd never regrown organs before. Eyes and arms, yes, hell, he'd brought Guy back from the very brink of death after using the eight gates, but even that was merely a matter of reversing the damage, spurring the body's natural defenses into overtime to heal great wounds and recover that which had been lost. How did you heal that which no longer existed without the rot would he even be alive? Radon had been feasting on the rotten corpses of former friends and foes for centuries now. The rot had a hold on him unlike any other. Of those who came before him, he had precious little of his wits left, let alone his sanity in any meaningful capacity. Millicent and Grayrol had been infected to be sure, but not even poor Xyx had fermented with this much poison. Radon had been at ground zero when Melenia unleashed the scarlet rot. Even boosted as he was by Godric's great rune, he didn't think he could fix this. Can I the realization rattled him. No, he rallied. I can fix this. I can do it this, I have to. He's not like Godric. He's a good guy he deserves to live. Dragging his chakra out, he flung it at the alien general in a web, wrapping him in golden light beneath his armor. The rot realized what he was doing at once and clung on tenaciously, refusing to give an inch. He had to batter it back bit by bit, a craftsman chipping away at obsidian with a chisel. It was slow, murderous going. Someone shouted at him and tugged on his shoulder. He ignored them, torn between two no, now three tasks at once. He wasn't simply trying to push out the infection, but heal Radon's body and mind simultaneously. Without his organs, the good general would fall apart the moment he ripped the rot out. It didn't help that the Star Scourge was fighting him every step of the way. He couldn't even blame Radon for that. In his heart of hearts, the general had nothing left to live for. As such, he longed only for an honorable death in battle. An end to his pain. This was not that. He was slow, agonizing. Probably felt like torture. Only natural he'd rail against it with every instinct he had. If only he could make him see he was just trying to help he didn't want to hurt him. Finish me. Please. The world went white. Naruto closed his eyes against it. Kirama's voice pierced the veil, returning him to reality. 
You need to stop this is beyond you he's breaking free. Sweat beaded down his brow as he grit his teeth. I can do still do this, damn it. Naruto, you may be able to heal his body, but you can't make a madman sane. I've almost got it just give me a few more minutes. And then Raid unbucked under his palm. Hirama yanked him back. It saved his life. A massive fist shot up and struck them in the chest, fracturing three ribs to launch him into a dune. He kicked upright in an instant, but it was too late. The moment Radon moved, everyone went mad and fell upon him en masse. In that madness, someone struck true. Naruto was never sure who, only that they did. Radon flailed about himself with grasping hands, but not enough. He took wounds, someone slashed out his right eye. An agonized cry pierced the air. The good general jerked upright, then stumbled on rotten legs. He fell forward, catching himself with both palms as his withered mount collapsed beneath him. Naruto swore in the same breath as Greyroll. Who did that, fool of a tarnished? Blade lowered his blade. They've done it now. Radon nudged his faithful steed once more, trying to spur him on. The poor beast slumped to the sands with an exhausted whine. A giant hand descended, cradling its exhausted body, nursing the grievous wound in its belly. Trembling fingers set it aside in the rotted sands. He gave it another desperate nudge, making a pitiful noise. The withered beast managed to raise its head a fraction of a foot, then fell still. It did not move again. He lowered his head and sniffed once. Sobbed, softly. Leonard. His horse didn't move. Not thee please, not you, too. The stars sang a mournful dirge overhead. I think we've just made a terrible mistake. Zero, zero, zero. Leonard wouldn't move. Radon's rotten mind struggled to make sense of it all, to no avail. It didn't make a lick of sense. How had this happened? Why wouldn't his beloved steed move? Radon didn't know what to do. Not without his horse without Leonard. What was he to do now he wanted to die? He needed to die. A worthy death was all he sought. And yet, these monsters shed slain his horse. All that he had left of his family. An answer came to him then. Kill them. Kill them all. Okay. Zero, zero, zero. Radon dragged himself upright and fell off his steed. On ruined legs did he right himself. Why? His neck craned back, a single golden eye gazing at the moon high above. Heavy hands reached up for it as though to grasp it, and failed. A mournful howl escaped him then, a wail of grief and despair, of a good man who had tried to do right and failed, a tortured wretch who had finally lost one too many. In his heart of hearts, Naruto heard his voice then. You were at my sight all along all this time. And so the general spoke, slowly, haltingly, but words emerged nevertheless. My oldest friend me dearest companion. A shiver shot down their spines, taken from me. His head bent low as his helm fell away, leaving the flowing crimson mane of his hair to tumble down his back. Oh, Leonard. He rumbled, jaws parting, setting teeth to flesh. Lend me thy strength once more. Naruto turned his head away as Radon fed upon his horse like a starving dog. Devoured its corpse, marrow and flesh and bone, all. And as he fed, he healed. Radon pushed himself upright on rotting legs. Gravity magic flared beneath them, forming boots of hardened stone around his ankles. He stood tall, wounds closing, spears falling out his ruined back. His hands snapped open. Once more did the star-scourge greatswords fly into his waiting palms, bathed in baleful light. Yet now there was a hint of a hint of something else to them. Darker, tainted, rotten, he took last off my family. Uncaring of his bloody visage, he rose. The only thing that still mattered to me. His voice gained strength as he spoke, spurred on by the pain of loss. You wretched tarnished. When the star scourge raised his gaze, there was a frightful glimmer in his eye. Rotten his body may well be, but a shard of his self remained awakened now, spurred on by the pain of loss. His ruined eye wept rot, trailing crimson tears as he raised his blades high. Star scourge Radon died in that instant. In his place, Radon the Rotten was born. Let it all rot. He rumbled. I care not anymore. Let the heavens quake, let the stars cry. Let this wretched world die. Lionel and Akina never saw the blow that slew them. One minute they stood there balking at the reinvigorated general. In the next, a star smashed down upon them, hurtling them back to their respective worlds in a shower of golden light. Trajoth survived by dint of his superior armor alone, yet even he found himself hammered down, unable to rise. Radon took full advantage and brought his blades crashing down. The severed halves of the Horn Knight's spirit crumbled into dust. With his passing, so too were their numbers cut in half. And then he turned to them. It will have each and every one off your heads. Now you've done it. Blade hefted his greatsword with a forlorn sigh. There's no reasoning with him now. Negreirol hissed back at the wolf. Tiwa's not my blade that slew his steed blamed the bloody swordsman for the deed. Radon chose his target and lunged with a bestial howl. Greyroll backpedaled. Naruto leaped forward himself, knowing he'd be too late. Radon struck. Blood spattered the sands. Those deadly star scourge greatswords bit deep into the dirt as Greyroll flitted out of harm's way. She took flight, borne aloft now by a pair of towering wings. Black viscera spattered the sands, her shoulders even now bleeding from their sudden emergence. Silhouetted against the moon, she held up a clawed hand to beseech the heavens. Sparks danced at her fingertips scarlet sparks. Enough there was something off to her voice now as well, as if another, far greater presence were speaking through her. You dare make me exert myself, you mongrel. His sixth sense shrieked a warning well before Kirama balked. Back now. I am Greyroll mother of dragons child of the great lord Placidus X do you hear eyes wild? She cast her arm forward, a bolt of purest light manifesting in her off hand. 
you are beneath me. I am a dragon, you dull creature he made a blind swipe for her ankle, which only earned him her scorn. And I will suffer your insolence no more. In a shower of purple gravity magic, Radon took flight actual flight to meet her challenge. Flight does not make thee a dragon. A wordless roar was his answer. Grayrol scoffed and cast the bolt down with a contemptible flick of her wrist. It skewered the berry of Berserker in the chest, aborting his short-lived charge. Momentum speared him down to the dunes. She landed atop him not a heartbeat later, teeth gone sharp, gaze ablaze. A hand reared back smashed down atop her crimson spear. The world boiled red. Baruto flung up an arm against it, even then the resultant eruption of heat and light nearly blinded him for a moment. Since when can she do that? That's not her strength. Kurama jabbed him with a paw. Can't you feel it? She's channeling it from something else so me own else. Maybe so, but it didn't change what he'd just seen. Whoever was empowering her was strong, but not strong enough. He glimpsed the two titans in the smoke. A tail had bloomed from Greyroll's back to ensnare Radon by the waist, reeling him as one might a fish. As he looked on she grabbed the general, all but mounting him in her fury to get at him. Mine is the true strength of dragons. Flame flickered behind her teeth and she leaned in, as though to kiss him. Care for a taste. Full lips parted in a scream, one that sounded more beast than woman. From her cry, golden fire was born. There was no chance to evade. No time to dodge. Greyrol all but embraced Radon and breathed naked napalm into his face, scalding his visage, his being, his very soul. Radon roared into it and lashed out with both feet, catching her center mass. Naruto heard the awful crack of bone. The startled dragoness hurtled away with a yelp. She was only just rising when a star fell from the sky and smote her into the sands. Well, she's out. Blade set his great sword in the sand. Finish him, won't you? He's suffered enough. Naruto stepped forth only to dither at the last second. He'd gone into this battle intending to save Radon. To help him, as he had so many others. Now their forces were down to two, and the general was getting back up. Slowly to be sure, but the burn hulk was still very much alive. Any moment now, and he'd be upon them. His hands clenched into fists at his sides, fingernails biting down until they drew blood. How had it come to this in another life, another story, he could have saved him. He knew it. He should have saved him. But if he made one slip here, one mistake, it was over. There was no one left to fight. Fate had conspired against him, and for once, he didn't know how to turn the tables. They'd simply run out of time. Even if he managed to save him, Radon wouldn't thank him for it as he was now. He'd hate him for it, curse him, try to kill him. But still, not everyone can be saved, Naruto. They should be that was why he'd chosen to stay here. Angry tears stung at his eyes. Why does it have to be me? Blade heaved a sigh and touched a hand to his chest, his palm came away soaked with blood. Because I can't fight that thing. I can't kill Lady Rani's brother. Naruto felt his hackles rise. Wasn't she that witch who met him at the fire Rani I know that name. Slip of the tongue, mate. The half-wolf looked away with a wince. Don't dwell on it. The hand clasped his shoulder. He's right, young chum. The deed needs to be done. Naruto nearly slapped his forehead. At this point, he didn't know if he wanted to laugh or cry. Why had the bloody castle and joined the battle? No, of course he had. Life just loved its little surprises. Of course Jaren would be here to see it all end. He shouldn't have expected any less of the odd duck. He's fought long and hard, he has. The man's mask betrayed nothing when he looked to him, but his emotions shone through it all the same, ringing true. If there was any way to save him, we would have found it by now. Send him to his rest. It had to be him, didn't it? I was supposed to save him. He croaked out. I still want to. He tried lad. Jaren clapped him on the back. That's what matters. Ask yourself this. If the general was in his right mind, would he be happy with what he's become? Naruto knew the answer. He stepped forward with a heavy heart. Radon rounded on him, brandishing his blades with a braying roar. An impossibly fast fist snapped into his chin and sent him sprawling onto his back. Credit where it was due, it didn't stop him. He lumbered upward. A rousing roundhouse smashed him down. His sword swept forth in a black blue and were summarily ripped from his grasp. Bones broke. Blood and fingers flew through the air. He didn't use Godric's axe, not once, he beat Radon the Rotten down with his fists alone and nothing else. Blade whistled behind him. So that's what it looks like. A fight between two demigods. He still didn't consider himself a demigod. No matter what they said, Naruto stalked after the day's general, trying to steal himself. He'd already made the mistake of underestimating Radon once and his allies had paid dearly for his arrogance. That wouldn't happen again. No, never again. Mercy meant nothing here. Whatever state Radon was in, he'd gone well beyond help. There was only one course left to him. I can't do it. The words escaped him a low rasp as the wind keened anew. I don't think I can save you. Don't you want me to save you? Radon only roared at the moon. Give him peace. Naruto's palm snapped out as he snarled, racing and spiraling in hand. Hirama's cloak blazed about him and fed still more energy to the maelstrom. It grew large within his grasp. Larger now. Largest, until it loomed over the general himself. Impossible to miss. Even if he dodged the first strike, the follow-up would surely finish him off. Even now he hoped against hope. Last chance his voice cracked. Stand down don't make me do this. Perhaps Radon knew that, because he didn't bring the stars crashing down upon him as he had the others. As he looked on, the general's shoulders slumped, his very being sagging in exhaustion, bone deep. But only for a moment. 
Then he threw himself forward, barreling down at him in one last wild, suicidal charge. Naruto's arm fell with a thunderclap and a cry. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Let there be light. Zero, zero, zero. Rani woke from her deep slumber with a frightful start. She felt it, then, his spirit passing in the night. A tear ran down her cheek. Great on. Zero, zero, zero. Melina felt the battle end. It came not with a whisper, but a roar. She heard the keening of the wind and saw what followed. Stars raced by, freed at last from the general's grasp. One hurtled into the distance and rent a mighty explosion upon the lands between. A kindling maiden fought down a wince. She knew full where it had fallen, such was the knowledge granted to her by her mother. Such were the trappings of fate, and likewise, they were well known to her. With this, Rani's schemes would begin to move once more. But now was not the time for such thoughts, because she saw him. Naruto crested the dune, Grero leaning heavily against him, with Blade in that foolish castle and not far behind. She paid the latter little mind. Because you see, she saw them. Radon's greatswords, shrunken to fit the blonde's back. Likewise, she beheld the general's great rune etched into the blonde's right arm. Full of lively vigor it was, burning a bright baleful amber over his armor. Orange. A sight drew a bitter laugh from her. It would be orange. Of all the colors. The irony wasn't lost on her. Radon had ever loved the sight of a sunset, that great big oaf. Mastering her emotions, she wiped a lone tear from her eye and forced herself to rise on trembling legs. The battle is over, then. Naruto laid Greyroll down, ignoring the latter's angry growl. Blade plonked down beside her with a wary sigh. Still he said said not a word. Blank blue eyes met hers. It was as if he didn't see her. No, he did see her. He simply stared right through her. He looked tired. Hollowed out from the inside. Dread dawned. Had the ruinous rot and Radon taken hold of him as well nay, she didn't sense such. He must be tired. Surely that was a lunless. Realization struck like a thunderclap. Naruto had failed to save Radon. He'd been so confident, so certain, so sure that he would. And in the end he was left with no choice but to slay the madman. For once, she'd been right. She had proven him wrong. It should have been a pleasant feeling but it wasn't. Where was the pride she'd expected it tasted like ashes in her mouth. No, no, this wouldn't do. Victory might yet defeat him. Break him. This could not pass. He had two great runes in his. The damage he could cause with such was unimaginable. Only once before had a tarnished accomplished such and never in such a short time. Like had languished for years to reach this point. Naruto had done all this in less than a month. If he broke now, if he went mad, all her efforts would be for naught or so she told herself. Something else nagged at Melina. She refused to acknowledge it. Are you happy now? A little voice cooed in her ear. She wasn't. Not at all. Melina stepped to him quickly, took a handkerchief from her pocket, and used it wiped a bit of blood from his face. You fought well. It could not have ended any other way. It was the wrong thing to say, she regretted it at once. Something hot and angry burned in his eyes. Yet for all his ire, he said not a word. For a moment, just a moment, she felt the icy touch of fear. He looked well and truly furious with her. Indeed he did Jaren bowled between them with a merry laugh and slung an arm around them both in a hearty embrace, shattering the impasse. A finer fight I've never seen in all my days those burly limbs drew them closer than she would have liked, leaving their faces nearly parallel with one another as he squeezed them senseless. Come, let us tend to our wounded then we shall make merry. Blade thumped the ground with the flat of his sword. A banquet, then suits me just fine. Grayrell raised a trembling fist from where she lay. Will there be wine? As much as you can drink, my lady dragon he dipped a hand to the flask at his belt, and the moment Melina took her chance to squirm free. It shall be a feast unlike any other as she looked on, he poured it out on the sands. A toast for our new general. Trish and Blade barked a pained laugh where they lay. Naruto's head whipped around with an audible creak as he tore himself free of Jaren. Excuse you. You got blood in your ears, led the castle and chortled behind his mask. You slew a demigod in honorable combat. There's no one better to take his place. Melina noted the curious look of panic in the blonde's eyes just then. So too did Jaren, because he barreled onward before he could recover. If you truly wish to set things right with the rot, then the lads and I would be happy to have you. Still chuckling, he buckled the flask back to his belt and clapped him on the arm once more. Give it some thought. Much to Melina's relief, Naruto only made an irritated noise. I'll think about it. That's all I ask. As peace said, the castellan sauntered away, waving as he did. It will take some time to prepare another festival, of course. I'll send word when we're ready. Feel free to stay at the castle for as long you please in the meantime. Grayrol tried to rise. Naruto yanked her back down. Her legs flailed in the air as she whined. But wait, Iain, you're already punch drunk as is. Blue eyes rolled in mild exasperation. Take a nap. She rolled over to glare golden daggers at him. Who are you to command me? A blonde brow arched her way. She quivered under his stoic stare. Irk. Very well. I shall eyes. I'll just rest, shall I? That's what I thought. When his gaze swung back to her, Melina couldn't help but squirm. He looked at her for a long moment, letting her shrivel under his sight like a naughty child. She forced herself to meet his stare. Pa, if he thought she'd roll over like that dragon woman he had another thing coming. She would not be cowed by strength alone. I've been thinking like a ninja. He said at last. Time to start thinking like a tactician. Everyone almost died today because I rushed in. She felt the estranged need to comfort him. They didn't, but they almost did. He clicked his tongue. That's on me. I need to take responsibility for that. 
Melina blinked. Was that a flicker of pride she felt just now? No, nay, surely not. She shoved it down. It lingered still, smoldering as Naruto walked away. Exasperated and exhausted, she slumped back to the sand. Where was he off to now? Zero, zero, zero. Numb and drained, Naruto finally traipsed back to Millicent. He found her slumbering peacefully, mangled arm bound by a crimson tourniquet as the nameless maiden fussed over her. It was a far cry from the state he'd left her in. When he touched two fingers to her throat, he felt her pulse come through, steady and strong. Shame about her arm, though. He'd have to see his way to healing it again or maybe finding her a prosthetic. Thoughts for later. Right now, her health mattered more. How was she? Stable. The nameless maiden bowed her head as he knelt beside her. That was a very brave thing she did. Yeah. Unbidden, he found himself reaching out, pushing a strand of red hair from Millicent's eyes. She's a stubborn one. Her nose wrinkled in sleep and he released a breath he hadn't realized he'd been holding. Let her sleep. She's earned her rest. If she'd died because of him, no, he didn't want to think about that. There had been enough death this day. Beside him, the maiden took a breath, wriggled a little, then looked to him. Brave tarnished, might I have a moment of your time. Naruto looked away and bristled when he saw Radon looming over her. His shoulders tensed. How? A blink, and the general was gone. He scrubbed. Of this eyes. Seeing things. Had to be. If it's a reward you're after, I don't have much on me. Tis not a reward I seek. When he looked back the maiden was in the process of removing her bloodied mantle. Rich dark hair spilled out, complementing pale golden eyes. He'd never seen a more striking combination. It helped distract him from what he'd just seen. Right, don't think about it. Focus on her. That'll help. My name is Thralina. She stood and introduced herself properly with a polite bow. I believe you are the one that I have been searching for. He blinked, not quite comprehending. For me what for? She dipped another skittish curtsy. Why, to be your maiden, of course. Hey, Blade howled out a laugh where he lay. Naruto could feel Melina glaring a hole between his shoulders, waiting for his answer. You want to be my maiden? A touch of disbelief must have bled through his words, because she seemed to shrink at his remark. You must be joking. Oh, Thralina hung her head. Gravity itself seemed to suck her down. I see. Yes, of course. It was foolish of me to say such a thing. Her shoulders shook and her chest convulsed once. I suppose you're right. After all who would want a useless wretch like me bitter laughter tumbled past her lips. I'm no warrior. I can't even swing a sword. All I can do is heal. She looked so small and lost in that instant. Damn it. Don't you do it. He just couldn't help himself. Hey. Hey he waved his right hand furiously. I didn't say no. I just we me. Thurlina's head snapped up red rimmed eyes regarded him, wet with unshed tears. You're having me on, aren't you? Not about this. You're the strongest warrior I've ever met. She sniffled a little, somewhat chagrined by his remark. Yet you lack the arrogance that often heralds such strength. Her hands came up, wringing themselves against one another as she rambled on. Not only that, you're the first tarnished to hold two great runes since Vike himself. You seem fair without being foolish, kind without the naivete that plagues the most gentle souls. And, she looked away, wrinkling her little button nose in naked embarrassment. You care for your companions. Her gaze raved over the motley crew of his allies, acknowledging them each in turn. Even a wretch like me can see that. You'd gladly give your life for them. Any of them. Well, I would, but I'm pretty sure there are plenty of other fish in the sea. You're the one I want she clasped her hands before her face. It has to be you no one else will do. No one else how in blazes did you argue with a remark like that you didn't. Naruto looked left. Naruto looked right. No one came to his aid. Melina's gonna kill me. When he turned to look her way, he thought she just might. Her good eye met his in silent judgment. Her mouth opened, closed now, as she saw the resolve in his gaze. Rather than protest, she huffed and vanished in a swirl of blue mist. Her presence lingered nearby, a silent and sullen shadow, sulking at his decision. There would be hell to pay for this later. He just knew it. And yet, all right, it was almost painful to see the Alina jump at that. If you want to follow me. Yes. He was still speaking when the Alina hit his chest, an arrow loosed from a bow. Her arms locked tight around him and held on for dear life. He could have pried her off, shoved her away in an instant, he knew he could have, but it would have been like kicking a puppy. Couldn't do it. I finally have a purpose. Thank you. A thousand thank yous, my lord. Bright, golden eyes shone up at him, framed by a cherubic smile. You'll not regret this, I swear by the fingers. I'm sure we'll get along splendidly. Well, at least she had spirit. Still, for better or worse, Radon was gone. Which left him with another matter to deal with, one yet unresolved. Now where in blazes had his clones gotten off to in Caled? Zero, zero, zero. A shadow clone had wandered too far. He knew he had, just as he knew the boss was going to be all sorts of angry once he finally dispelled himself. He'd seen a lot, done a lot, too. In all likelihood his memories were going to give the original a mighty migraine he'd not soon forget. It wasn't his fault. He'd been following orders, him and his brothers, trying to clean up Caleb as best they could with their limited resources. The boss had put him in charge of a sizable squad, even reinforced him with extra chakra to make sure he wouldn't pop in one hit like the rest of the lads. Not much, but enough. As a result of that generous patronage, it was smooth sailing for a while there. They'd torn through a great many beasties, nabbed a bit of loot, even managed to rescue the odd soldier here and there. Yes sir, it was smooth sailing indeed, until they blundered into that rotten dragon. Things went downhill after that. 
They'd sent a runner back to the boss, of course, only for said dragon to take notice. He'd taken a hit covering for him. Instinct, really. They were just clones. Doppelgangers. Pale imitations of the genuine article. They didn't matter. He'd fully expected to pop like a balloon when all ugly swatted him with his tail. But he hadn't now, had he? Instead he'd, awoken in some god-forsaken rainy peninsula, with nothing but a trail of bodies to follow. With a long-suffering sigh he continued down the road. The boss is gonna kill me for this. Zero, zero, zero. Arena waited for her death. She knew it was coming, could feel it in her bones. How long had she been sitting here by the wayside, waiting for an end minutes, hours, days? Now her stomach was twisting something terrible, but she had exhausted her meager, meager rations long ago. Her poor eyesight availed her not, her sense, even less so. The night was dark and cold, and the rain did precious little for the thin shift she wore. Yet where could she go? Fear held her in thrall. If she were to stand up and walk, she might well blunder into more trouble than she could handle. Without her guards to protect her, she would surely be slain. Yes, better to sit here where it was safe. All she could do was sit and wait for her end. Wait for father to come. Even if that too, terrified her. Wait was that sound like footsteps. Hello, she called out feebly into the rain. Is somebody there? The shuffling footsteps stopped. Oh, she hoped it wasn't another misbegotten. If so, she'd sealed her fate. No, wait. Now they were coming closer. Her heart skipped a single, frantic beat. This was it, then. The end. She would die here, alone and forgotten, and father would need Arno. Thankfully, the voice that answered was delightedly. Human. What are you doing way out here? You'll catch a cold. Oh, oh, my, my, my. His hands were so very warm. She felt like as if she were melting away in his palms. No, nay, focus, Irina. Never mind, that might I bend your ear for a moment. Please, she stumbled over the words hastily before her composure could forsake her further. My name is Irina. I've escaped from Castle Morn to the south. That servants there have rebelled, you see. She felt his hands tighten around hers, but still, he didn't speak. That was good, wasn't it? He'd given her a chance to continue. I can't be sure what it is. Exactly, my eyesight's been weak since birth, you see. In her hysteria, she almost giggled at the poor choice of words. But I swear, I heard frightful howling from all over. How did you get away? His voice was low, soothing even. I saw the dead guards. By dint of luck and little else, she wanted to say it, she stilled her tongue. My good father secreted me out of the castle, but decided himself to stay. He says, she swallowed once to master the surge off ear that followed, it's his duty to stay as commander. That he couldn't come with me just yet. Her visitor made a noise of anger. Duty over his daughter that ain't right. He agreed thank goodness. This might make things a bit easier, given what she was building up to. I fear it's not any different at Castle Morn. Arena dared to thread her fingers through his, improper though such a thing might be. Please, I implore you, would you do me a service? Pretty sure I know what it is. I implore you, take this letter to my father. Taking one hand from his, she retrieved her handkerchief and the words written within, then presented it to him. Let him know that my sole wish is that he escape from that wretched place, even if his honor is the price. Please, here at last, her courage faltered, and her voice with it. I just want him to be safe. A weighty pause followed. Slowly, tenderly, he took the handkerchief with her. I'll do it. But I ain't leaving you here. You're coming with me. Whatever did he mean by that she would be useless in a fight and oh good she was scaring her like a princess. Zero, zero, zero. Good sir, where are you taking me? Someplace safe. No taking it back now. Shut up and accept my generosity. The clone stomped down the road with sound and aplomb, carrying his charge, face carved from granite. First things first. That castle could wait a while longer. Irina's health mattered more. Best get her out of the rain. And after that, he had to let the boss know what was happening here. Surely he was having an easier time of things, wherever he was. Right, surely he must be. Zero, zero, zero. Have you come to visit again, my dear? Fia patted the empty space beside her, pale fingers creasing the bed in tender invitation. She removed her hood and revealed her face to him. Warm firelight from the hearth danced across her lovely visage, casting it molten shades of amber and golden, seeming to set her very body aflame. For some reason, that last thought terrified him. The idea of someone burning alive Yui was he even thinking about that. And so he watched her like a hawk from the doorway, unwilling to approach any further than he already had. I don't think that's a good idea. Why ever not her smile was guileless as the grave. I mean you no harm. No harm, she said. That was precisely what worried him. This was not what he'd expected to find upon returning to the round table. He'd made the rounds upon his arrival, just to let everyone know he was still alive, to help the girls settle in and convalesce from their wounds. He wasn't sure what drew him here, not when he still needed to call on Rodrika and Hugh. But he'd been drawn here nonetheless. Now he found himself hesitating like some skittish fox. Upon further reflection, he found an inkling why. I will take you in my arms as often as you need. Was that what had urged him here a need for comfort someone to talk to? There's nothing wrong with that. You're human. Ain't wrong to seek a little solace. It was weak of him, gushing to a perfect strange. He walked Fia's way on leaden legs anyway. Sat beside her. Leaned in. His head touched her shoulder. He called someone today. The words tumbled out of him and once he started, he couldn't top. Someone who didn't deserve it. Someone who should have lived. It's my fault. She touched a hand to his head. Did you try to save him? 
Not hard enough. Maruto looked up and saw Radon again, smaller perhaps, but still every bit the great general he'd face. The man Spectre could only assume it was such smiled at him. Why wasn't he angry he should hate him? And yet his Spectre only smiled. He looked calm, happy, at peace, despite all the suffering he'd endured. Hale and healthy, he gazed upon him without so much as an ounce of hate in his heart. His lips moved in his open helm, but no sound emerged. What was he saying? What was he trying to tell him? It was too much, the shame and the deed alike. Naruto couldn't bear it and averted his eyes. I surmised as much. Fia's gaze traveled to Radon's rune, even now pulsing painlessly in his right arm. This act pained you, did it not? You are a gentle soul. You do not enjoy hurting others, nor do you kill for the sake of killing. True words, more than he dared admit. He bobbed his head, not trusting himself to speak. Just a moment, Fia waved her hand. The doors to her chamber eased shut, sealing off all sounds. Ordinarily, Naruto would have taken issue with that. But he was just so terribly weary. There is nothing wrong with kindness, my dear. When she turned, taking his face in her hands, he couldn't bring himself to resist. Empathy is what makes our kind strong. Her forehead touched his, imparting yet more words with her meager blessing. Never forget that. I am sure that you did all you could. If there had been a way to save him, surely you would have found it. There should have been a way. He glared down into her lap. If I just had more time. Time is something everyone craves, even we tarnished. Again with that moniker. It was the final straw. Naruto surged upright. I I and a tarnished his fist flashed back, obliterating a nearby bookshelf. I ain't a demigod. Either he brought his arms crashing down again, splintering the floor. Fia didn't flinch, even then. I'm trying so hard to fix things, and I thought I was doing a good job. But a good man died today because I wasn't strong enough when he looked at his hands now. He couldn't help but see blood on them. So much blood. I almost lost Millicent and everyone I can't. I understand. He rounded on her with wild eyes. How? I know what it is to lack strength when needed most. Fia met his gaze evenly, a hint of pain still burning through her bright eyes. I know what it means to fail. Just as I know you aren't tarnished. Fia rose to meet him. As I have known from the moment I first embraced you. She met him halfway, took him by the hands, and tugged him back to her bed despite his outburst. Even so, I will hold you as long as need be. With that simple act of kindness, the dam broke. Naruto buckled against her with a sob. Fia's slim arms enfolded him, holding him close. And he wept. It's not fair. Hey, hen, poor Naruto. And so ends Radon. Had to be this way. In this story, the general really had nothing left to live for, Leonard's death and the rod only made it worse. He wanted to die. And he got his wish. Naruto rarely fails to save someone and this size is going to impact him, going forward. Worry not, he's not about to go full edgelord. He just needs time to cope. Well did you like this story? Yes, no, maybe speak out, make yourselves heard, your voice matters. Once more, we're sticking with the Ember's rule for this story. If folks don't like this, it won't be continued. Meaning that if the story itself ain't popular, poof gone. Completely. I'm working two jobs during the holidays so I barely have time to write. As such, I cannot afford to write something folks don't enjoy. So by all means, speak up your voice matters, make yourself heard as ever. Reviews are the fuel that sustain me. Without them I cannot write a single word. Simple as that. So in the immortal words of Atlas. Review, wouldst thou kindly. And have some previews. Some are quite off, but still. Previews. My love. Could you stop sulking she needed a place to belong. How kind. Melina rounded on him, eerily calm. And how many more misfits will you take in? As many as it takes to fix this world. Naruto palmed his face and exhaled in a sullen sigh. You're going to be difficult about this, aren't you? Difficult he knew it was the wrong thing to say, because the moment he dd, the kindling maiden stomped over and glared up at him. Considering you've taken a second maiden into your service, yes, I think I'm going to be difficult about this. He stood his ground. So did she. Something had to give. Eventually, one of them did. Leitna could feel herself slipping. See, she heard a voice. Told you there was an exit there. Oh, mate with me. Naruto's jaw clicked open. Hey, Enia was but a humble finger reader. It was her task. Her purpose. And yet she knew the fingers had begun to fear this man. She could see why. This warrior would be the one. Ah, if she were only a few centuries younger. I want to break Hugh out of his chains. Roderica nearly spat out her tea. Is that even possible he was cursed by Queen Merica herself? He had that look in his eye, the one that made the impossible quite possible. Lanya, pa you worry too much, Dilos I'm fine, see the grinning redhead slung an arm around Naruto's shoulder. Right as rain, thanks to this one. Speaking of which, I quit. The knight of Hoslo twitched. I beg your pardon. Did I stutter I'm Rick sick of your waffling about. You got a problem with me leaving. Well, yes of course I do. Her smile said he'd fallen right into her trap. Then prove it. Naruto rolled his eyes and disentangled himself from the pair. Get a room. Raya blinked. Why are you patting my head? Dunno. Can't help myself. Could you continue? Tanith tilted her head. Then tilted it some more. He couldn't see her face behind the mask, but he felt the weight of intent all the same. My, my, aren't you a stubborn one? 